Hi guys, this is Twist from FaZe Clan and I'm playing Counter Sketch. I never draw anything, so yeah, probably no one will notice how this is going to look like. I need to expand the knife. That's terrible. I just made it too too thick. T-knife is skinny as f like. This is not good. People don't even know what the T-knife like looks like anymore. Because people have so like everyone in pro scene has knife, so. You're done? Yeah, I'm done. I actually think he'll say uh initial diffuse. <laughs> okay, okay. That's all I'm doing. If he has CS on his mind when doing the interview, then then yeah, I would say he's gonna guess that. I feel like I got the ones that were difficult, and I got the easy one. Well, in here we're gonna do it a bit exciting, I think. Okay. This is from Counter Strike. This is from Counter Strike. Yes. I have no idea what this is. Um, a knife. A knife out of coming out of the pocket. It looks like a default knife. It's just like, but I know this guy is, has no imagination who drew this. You the back? I think around the players the boom blast. Either planting the bomb or just diffusing the bomb. The timer went out and the bomb exploded. Um, Unfortunately, it's a, not. It's a ninja diffuse. But the problem for me, if this is a ninja diffuse. Why is it made like a bomb radius and a rip? Okay, yeah, okay, I see, I see now. Okay, there's apparently a smoke up there. <laughs> this makes sense somehow. That is a, like eco round, uh, take nine by, and you're like maybe a reset round or eco round. And um, the arrows, I don't know, it's like 360 no scope, I don't know. <laughs> or you are switching sides. My guess is that it's the uh, second pistol round of the game. Uh, spin bar. Okay, of course, of course. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like a cheater, that's my problem. I think this doesn't reflect our communication in phase. I hope not, because I don't know how we won tournaments then. For sure not Brokey. For sure not Rain. So there's two options, either Trist or Robin. I would go with Trist. Now that's impressive. I know which teammate could uh, actually do this. This means I know the persons in my team. So maybe the communication is good. Speaking a lot, this guy. That's pretty cool. If I had to guess, hi, I'm Tobias, and I'm analyzing just one round. Okay, okay, okay. Starting with a good knife and skin combo. Good early peek. He's playing A with AWP. I think he threw a decoy in mid, maybe to make an AWP sound. I'm not too sure if that works out so well. Peeking behind the smokes, probably got a kill. Yeah, he did. Oh, I can't see actually if he got a kill. Peeking a lot here, which is a good thing. Bye. The T's are throwing the smoke, he got a kill with the name. It's pretty good. It's peeking a lot, this guy. A lot of confidence, which is good. Another kill, I'm pretty sure. A wall bang from when he's throwing the retake flash, so he probably knows that they're gonna retake. So you're gonna peek it again? Yeah, he is. Peeking backline. They are in a four versus three right now. They're throwing a smoke, and he keeps playing for the control. I think it's a one-way smoke, so he knows he has to go up and look at it. Yep. Yeah, just peeking a lot. A lot of peaks, I would say, um, but I think it was an ace, and that was pretty good. If I had to guess, I would probably think that he knows that uh, terrorists don't have an AWP, so he knows that he can just like bully, 
I think that's a really smart idea to do. So it's also a bit YOLO, but uh, I think that like a lot of confidence and uh, a lot of peaks, I think it's, it's just good and it's, yeah, no fancy nades or anything like that. It's just uh, good gameplay. Take a guess on who's playing. It's hard to say. I would say Saiwu. If I had to guess, like he really likes to play A with AWP and peek a lot. Uh, my guess would be Saiwu, but I know it's not him because he doesn't use those skins. Okay. Is it Dane? Okay. Dane, maybe it's me then, I don't know. It's probably me then. It's you. Okay. But it's an old clip, right? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. I was very YOLO at that time, but uh, apparently it worked. Hello guys, this is the Priest tier list. I've never actually done a tier list in my life, so this is going to be the first. And it's also kind of interesting. I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, of Nuke, so I'm actually going to put that up there. Yeah, and Nuke for me is just like it's always been a good map for me, and it's been a map that I've always enjoyed playing with my teams. Um, I, my, I actually also really like Anubis. I think uh, the reason why I like Anubis is like it's it's super simple. Um, I don't know, I'm just like a big fan when it comes to like uh, ancient Egypt, so I don't know. The theme is just really cool. I don't know why. I think. Um, I'm gonna be, go with Vertigo on A. I think Vertigo is pretty cool. I know a lot of people doesn't like it because it's kind of kind of weird, especially in the new version. But I know I, the same thing is kind of simple. I like I like simple maps. Overpass goes on the B one. Can be very nice. Can be very hectic to play on both sides. Mirage goes definitely on C. I really think Mirage is like a super super annoying and really not one of my favorite ones. I think it's a puck map that I've never really enjoyed playing. So it goes on that one. And then of course I, go, I put Engine on as D one because I think it just absolutely sucks. Uh, and then I have Inferno, it goes D as well because it sucks in C2. <laughs> so teams for this one, in this tournament specifically, um, I think people would kill me if I didn't put FaZe Clan on S tier right now because they won three tournaments in a row and whoever doesn't put them up there, they are lying to themselves. Okay, then I'm gonna put Complexity as A because they are probably the teams out of the rest of them here that has actually proven something in the new game, so they will go on A1. Then the hard part comes because I'm gonna go Vitality B because I have expectations for them, but at the same time, I don't know how they will perform. They just made some master changes. Then I'm going to be putting NIP and Navi and Heroic and Cloud9 and Astralis on the C1 because I have absolutely no idea where to put them. <laughs> Camera Strike list. Obviously, I will put Global Offensive as S tier because that is where like I had like the best uh, time of my career and, you know, yeah, it's just been the best game for me. I'm going to put Counter-Strike Source and 1.6 as A. That was what brought me into Counter-Strike. First it was 1.6, playing it with my brother at home, and then of course Source was the one that I picked up with my friends and put in a lot of hours and slowly realized that you can complete like you can compete in Counter-Strike. So it's given me a lot of good friends and a lot of good opportunities and also made me transition into the person and the career that I have today. So I guess that deserves a second place. Ah, but of course, I mean Counter-Strike 2 is like so similar, but Right now, I'll put it as a, as a B, because I don't know what's going to happen with Counter-Strike 2. I think it's a really great game. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but of course, the game still has some flaws. It has to be uh, optimized a little bit. But at the same time, I still want it to succeed. So eventually, I think it'll go by very high. And then, I don't know, Condition Zero goes on D, because I've barely played it. I've played the single player version of Condition Zero. and playing like you could play really weird offline missions in, in Condition Zero, which I think was fun. But it was, like, it was like a game that had no soul, in my opinion. So. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my tier list. I hope you will agree with some of my decisions. If not, that's too bad. This place has been home to moments of elation, passion, and heartbreak. From Dupree's moments of wonder, silenced by the librarian, to the rock star entrances in front of a sold out crowd. Tens of thousands have gathered through the years to witness the show. History can be seen and heard wherever you look. This stage has been graced by legends of Counter-Strike history, but only a handful have been crowned champions of the Royal Arena. Hey guys, it's JT, and today I'm be playing Counter Sketch, and I'll be drawing for Elise. I'm not a very good drawer. I was really bad at that kind of stuff in school. I think Elise will be able to guess. I think he you got the same mind. He'll he'll guess. I'm drawing a case. Okay. 
I don't know what else to throw in this. I don't even know what a case looks like in here. It's my case. <laughs> I have to draw a zoo skill. I guess a dead man. Another guy. With a Zeus. I mean, how does he know it's a Zeus? Do you want to see? I mean, this one's good. I think I'm going to guess this one. Rage quit. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I got an idea. <laughs> I don't know if he can read that. Oh, I'm done. If you can see it's F10, you'll know he's rage quitting because people use that to quit. Well, some people do. I don't use it, but. <laughs> I think I did terribly. I don't think he's going He probably won't guess any of them. If he guesses one, I'll be. I think that's a. I guess an achievement if he guesses one. Uh, I'll just ask you a question, so you just respond to me. So here we got a director's board where you do like the next take. Surely, I actually have no idea what this could even be. It is a lock and a boomerang. I mean, I would just guess a bomb. Yeah. Just the bomb. <laughs> is that what it is? It is not. It's a case. Oh, oh, it's a case. Oh, that makes sense. I probably could have got that last one, honestly. I, I probably could have got that one. All right, so we got a guy that's shooting another guy, and he's dead. Aw. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to say, like, P250. It's a Zeus kill. Zeus kill. Zeus kill. Oh, when he dies, he makes the sound. Ah, yeah, yeah. I could have got that one. That, that could have been possible. I could have got that one. All right. So guy is not happy. F-I-O. F-10. Oh, F-10. Okay, so he's pressing F-10. I don't know what F10 does. I actually have no idea. I would say that he's just rage quitting. Is that it? Yeah, it is. Yes! I should have been able to get the other ones, honestly. Like the case, the lock. Oh, I should have got that one. The Zeus. I should have got that one too. I mean, he, he got the point across. Like, you could tell what he was going for. So, I'd give it a six. That's JT. That's JT for sure. How do you know? <laughs> Well, I know that he went in for an interview and then when he was done with it and I was waiting, he just said only I'm sorry. Hey, I'm Kerrigan and welcome to Kerrigan's tier list. So we are doing a tier list about maps. Damn, Nuke, Earth Tire. Yeah, I like it. I think it's uh, up and down sounds. A lot about communication and, and rotation. So I think it's very challenging on both sides. Vertical, I still think it's like a C tire map. Pretty fun to play on CT side. Short rotations, you always stand time. Um, but on T side, I feel like can't do so many cool things. Uh, a lot of spray through smokes. That's great. Then uh, we have Anubis A tire map. This is the first map where Valve really hit the nail um, in the beginning. You haven't seen big updates. Inferno has always been an S tire map for me, but with the new update in CS2, I still need to have the feeling of the map. It's still um, very strange and it's gonna be bound up to ST if small updates uh, are coming. I think Mirage B tire, I'll put it as an S tire. I love the map as a player, but um, as a caller and a leader, I think it's a harder map to play. Then Ancient. For me, that's an A time app as well. For it to be S tire, I think they should remove those shadows on A. I think it destroys a lot of tactics. Overpass, I'll put that on a B. It's very hard on T side and overpass, so yeah. For sure, Counter Strike 1.6, S tire, banging game, the game I grew up with. Source, that's a D tire, trying to make the game better. Uh, Come play Source, no chance. Condition Zero. You know, I'll bomb a C-Tide just because it's better than Source. Everything else is better than Source. We have a Counter-Strike 2. I'll put that on a B-Tire. And then I'll put CSGO on an A-Tire. CSGO was a D-Tire when it started out. It got really good with updates, uh, went to an A-Tire. And I know CS2 is going to be an a A-Tire at some point. If we're going to touch Counter-Strike, no chance. This is the tire maker for the Team Seed Blast. Face Clan, S tire, 15 win streak. I think for sure we are making a statement the last few tournaments. Oh, this is hard. A lot of new teams here. I think complexity deserves an A tire for the result in Sydney. They haven't been good online, but a team that surprised me a, a lot uh, in uh, one of the online tournaments was Cloud9. So I'll put them on a B tire. Then we have Vitality, they have a new player, but I still think they have so much quality in the lineup. Let's put them on an A tire together with uh, complexity. Then we have um, a lot of question marks. I uh, think I'll put uh, Navi on a B tire together with Cloud9. They can fight each other. Whoever wins uh, that game will stay B, and the rest of the guy losing going to C. 
Astralis, uh, I'll put them on a C tier. I think they will come back at some point. Uh, Heroic here with a stand in as well. And then NIP with a new IGL. I will put them on a C tier as well. So we have this um, Face Clan. Let's keep that. Remember that we have to uh, step up here. Complexity, uh, Vitality A tier. Cloud9, Navi, B tier. And uh, the rest of the guys at the C tier. Hope you enjoyed this because I did. Okay, that play was not bad. I'm not sure, but maybe it's even me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Monesi. I am analyzing just one round. So he's gonna play B. They're starting 3B. He's flashing really deep. Speaking the dog. That's the thing I'm, I'm doing as well. So he's getting the frag. I've, I'm not sure, but maybe it's even me. <laughs> Peeking because, who knows, right? So he's picking banana with the first spawn. They're starting 3B. Op is picking banana, flashing deep for the upper. Because usually, like, when Oper is on T side, he's holding the banana, like this flash which he's throwing now, like he's, uh, uh, like, flashing the guy who's staying with Op and holding car with Op. So that's good pick, I would say. And I'm usually, like, if I have good spawn, I can call it. Uh, and I'm picking banana. And you should do it only with the, with the good spawn, like with the first spawn towards B. Uh, and uh, third guy should smoke for you, like they did. Uh, they should smoke your car, so you will get, like, I would say like not one way, but uh, the smoke will extinguish the Molotov, so it's good. And the second guy just throwing some Molotov for Bell or like in just the banana. So yeah, it's a good pick. So now he's maybe, well, yeah, he's leaving the smoke on City. Honestly, like, okay, they're playing 3A, okay. Okay, that play was not, not bad, I would say. Like maybe they, like T side maybe expected that Ope will fall back towards A and he will not stay. And they just like bought a little bit, a little bit of time on banana, and they just flash pick with fallen flash. Now he's just leaving the smoke for banana and just leaving towards A, I guess. I, the guy on banana is getting a lot of frags, so it's not bad. Yeah, he's holding the good angle with up from Arch. I remember I was holding here with them for I missed two people, and we lost the uh, anti force round. Now he's leaving towards B. Maybe it's already like uh, I don't know. Less than 40 seconds on the, on the time. They want to create some setup on Banana. Like Sandbox plus corner, it's good. Ope is getting first contact, the guy on Sandbox is dodging the flash. Also he has a molly, he's killing the guy. Ah, that's me, that's me. That's me. We were playing here with Nico together, I remember. Because uh, like I insta analyzed, no, like I insta realized when uh, this guy, me, uh, flick shot at the guy on, on the broken wall, and uh, yeah, after it, just traded Nico on banana. I mean, definitely he played really good CS in this round. <laughs> Hello, I am I am, and I will do the counter sketch uh, challenge for Jill. If it's something easy, you'll get it, because I don't think I'm that bad, but we'll see soon. I mean, this is easy. It should be easy. It's a big gun. Which one? It has, like, a lot of tries. You'll say Deagle at one point. You only have one try. Only one try? He'll never get it. Rush B non-stop. I tried to, to do the dust to thing. Then it's five stack, then it's five stack. Okay. Full troll only plus W. Every time whenever I'm getting against a five stack Danish, bro, they are only rushing everything. Everything. It doesn't matter the map. Oba. Yeah, three, two, one. So, what we have here is a pistol, for sure. We can also see some stars here. I'm not sure what they represent. Maybe I'm missing a key feature. I, I think it's a Glock, but it looks a little big. It could be the Deagle as well. Okay, I'm guessing the Desert Eagle. I got it? That was correct. See! Nice, you can just put it down. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. So, uh, we have three guys rushing towards B. 
There's a car. <gasps> this is the activity spawn towards A. It's gonna be long. Here is peeking down middle. So it's like the, they're called the suicide back in the days. So it's dust two, T spawn, rush B. So this is the rush B drawing. That's yes. Correct, good job. <laughs> Last one. Okay. Uh, and we have five players. So that's the full stack, full troll. Bad news eagles. No? I have no idea then. It's a Danish five stack. A Danish five stack full troll? No. Danish five stacks are full try hard. There is no full troll. Full try hard. They misspelled try hard. So I got two out of three. But I think the drawings are nice. They're well done. And it was really hard to explain this drawing. A Danish uh, stack, for sure. No one could be able to guess. But the other two, the dust two, and what was this? The eagle. I think they were quite self explanatory. I think it's either Ime or Bit. But I know that Bit is a fan of five stacks. So I guess it's going to be Bit. No, it was Ime. No! God damn! I had a 50-50 and I missed. I ain't missing on the server though. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? This is Leaf from Complexity and I'm going to be doing a tier list. So for me right now, I think Vertigo is D tier. It doesn't really feel good. The sound also makes it less optimal. There's a lot of things I don't really like about the map right now. Mirage, I actually have no idea because I haven't really played it or watched it. <laughs> Safe B because I've always liked it. I've always liked Mirage, but I don't know CST specifically. S tiers for me is Anubis. It has good vibes. It's sunny. I think the strats are fun too. Overpass, I'm going to do S tier. Actually, I'll do... I'll do A tier just because pressing or like hitting like the molly at ramp just knocks it down a peg for me because it's so hard to hit now. But overall, it's really fun. I like the design on the map as well. I like the art style that they did with it. I like Inferno overall right now. I think I'll just put it to like a high B. Ancient, I'm going to go with A. It's interesting, I think. I think there's a lot of new stuff. And then Nuke, I'm not going to put it down with Vertigo, but I'm going to put it to C. I mean, there's a lot of new stuff that you can do on it, but just the sound and the verticality of it just automatically just makes me not like it so much right now. And that's it. All right, here we go. So for S tier, I think CSGO is definitely S tier. Played it like my entire like adult life, essentially. Counter-Strike 2, I think overall we're pretty close, but we're missing a lot of features. But overall, it's not bad. I think I'll put it to like B for now. Condition Zero, I actually haven't really played that much. Um, I just know that it's just very similar to 1.6. I played like the campaigns in it. I think I'll put just C. I can't put it above CS2. It doesn't feel right for me. 1.6 is going to be A tier for me. I played 1.6 a ton when I was growing up. Great game. Lots of fun stuff to do on community servers. Just a lot of good memories. And then Source is D tier. So I have a perfect top to bottom. Source at the bottom where it should be. CZ even on top of it. Looks good. This is clean. And now we got the tier list for everyone here. I'm automatically gonna put my team here because you have to put your own team as S. Just makes sense. And then FaZe is probably the best team in the world right now. So FaZe is S tier. Maybe we'll put Vitality as A right now just because I think they're probably gonna be good. And then I'll probably, I think C9 looks a lot better now actually. A with them. I'll probably put Navi B for now just Sydney, they didn't really get to play with their five. Heroic is playing with stand-ins and stuff. I feel like I'm just gonna put them C just for that. Nip is also like a new team. I'm just gonna put C just because I don't know how they're gonna do. And then Astralis so I'll put as B. I haven't really like seen like a ton of like their games recently since it was pretty much just like the CAC that they played. And yeah, I think just overall, there's just a lot of new stuff that we're not, we're not really sure. We haven't really seen a lot of teams play. And that's my tier list.
It's Championship Sunday here outside the Royal Arena. It's been the Blast Premier Full Finals, and while it is damn cold outside, it is going to be heating up when it comes to these games and the action you're about to have. Later on, we've got a grand final, but how did we get there? What teams did we see go through? Well, let's go on a little bit of walk and talk on this one, because one thing we saw at the beginning of the event, eight teams come in, so many changes, so many differences that could be had here, because lineups were changing, there was obviously the undisputed best in the world when we look at FaZe Clan, but for FaZe Clan, they now sit in the grand final once again. Vitality, they make a change that shocked people, they were confused about, they were unsure if this was going to be a good move for them. They find themselves in the grand final at the same time. And how they got there yesterday, well, both teams, it could have gone either way. Complexity continued to fight so hard, and certainly an NA team you can be very proud of, but it wasn't enough this time around, and again, they fall to FaZe. Where you look at the other side of things, Vitality versus Cloud9, some people would say Cloud9 had that game. It was supposed to be theirs, but it didn't work out. Boomish may be back, but he's not quite ready for a grand final just yet. It's all set right now, and we're in this beautiful arena. It's been six years inside the Royal Arena, feel of non-stop Counter-Strike action that we've enjoyed from start to finish, and I've had many great moments here, because just look at that. Look at this crowd. Look what we've got. Royal Arena! It is Championship Sunday. And I know you're ready for a hell of a lot of fun. So let's get things started. It's time for our show match. CB. He wanted to add some Finnish power to this very Danish arena. Hedrick! He only agreed to play the show match if he was reunited with Alexi B. JL! Honestly, he's just happy to be here. He's always loving life. Hobbit! He isn't going to Isengard, but he is coming to dominate this show match. A liege! Some say he is the best rifler in CS2. Now we get to see it one last time today. Give it up for the Dream Team! known as Bensky. Maybe next up, Adelisky after the show match. We'll have to see how he does. Magis, flying for the Falcons now, maybe, is what they're all saying. Everyone's looking at it, seeing what his next step would be. Well, he's an icon of Danish CS, and we know he can deliver. Marie, entry fragger on her way to her first ever show match. Can she impress around these legends? Esatag, sounds like an American, plays like a Dane, with some of the best hair in the game. Let me hear it for Team Denmark! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Championship Sunday. But first, Anders, of course, it's time for the moment you've been waiting for all week. It's the show match. Team Denmark taking on the Dream Team. Now, I have to say, on paper, the Dream Team looks like they're quite hard to handle. Oh, yeah, they're going to be easy to take down for sure. But we do have some legends of Danish Counter-Strike, some rare names out there that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, I'm excited. Did they introduced Bobski on, on a bench. bench? 
That's, Unbelievable stuff. That, I'm not sure that's BM or absolutely legendary. I guess it's more of the latter. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Team Denmark's pretty stacked as well. Some iconic names there. It's good to see Bubsky back on the server. Yeah. And some players in the tournament as well. S-Tag, Magisk coming out uh, in a oh. Vitality jersey as well. I know. know that kind of interesting. That's exp yeah, very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, you, you know, Kev, you haven't seen him for a long time. Either. There's some, some names out there that have almost passed into history, but um, you know, they're still out there. Yeah, Kiabi seems to be uh, transitioning into our sort of role. I've heard he's going to be a commentator next. He's doing oh. some analyst stuff. So okay. yeah, yeah, he's been trying absolutely everything. So uh, whether he's still got that shaky aim, whether it transitions into CS2 is yet to be seen. Ooh. Now, Anders, this is no ordinary show match. We all know that. There are some in-game events and out-of-server situations as well. Uh, I think you last time you saw this, like monitors were being turned off with the gravity adjustments, and we've got some surprises coming up as well. So it's going to be uh, a lot for our players to deal with. It's not your regular show match. It's not what you're used to. Uh, and obviously, you guys can join in. You can actually affect when these things happen. True. You go on Blast.TV, you actually have a say in what is going on inside the server, maybe inside of the booth as well. Um, that's uh, you know a little bit of carrot there for you. Um, I think it's really fun. It's really exciting. There's always some of, some of these players, I don't even know if they've actually tried it before, so they might get caught completely off guard. They might do. And bear in mind, we're going to be playing new kid today as well. So uh, it's going to be, that's a bit of a Danish special, to be honest with you. Like, it is. Uh, we talk over the years, some of the big streaks that have uh, Astralis gathered is always on Nuke. So uh, we'll see whether it's going to be lending to their favor. But bear in mind, there's going to be a lot of different variables here. Like we said, if, uh, if the, the guns might change, the gravity could shift. And I think we have some in booth uh, situations going on as well. We've got coaches as well, Anders. Uh, what have you made of the coach cam so far? Actually getting like the, the cameras on the headsets. I think it's so sick when you see them running over to, you know, to like do the high, the fist bumps. Like it just gives like a little bit of more energy. So I'm hugely for it. I think it's it's, it's fantastic. Got Banks. Just inspecting the hardware. Yeah. Making sure it's all above board. As a coach should, you know, that's his, <laughs> that's his job. Just make sure. It yells like, why are you, why are you touching my mouse? <laughs> can you Can you not do that? But, so, um, we should go over the rules as well, Anders. It is obviously ML12. There yes. will be no overtime. No so overtime. So, you have to get it done in regulation. And uh, S-Tag, he played in the show match last time. I remember he had some shotgun action in the anti-gravity round. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, uh, that's going to be fun to see. Kiabi, he's in the phase jersey. Yeah, he I was wondering about that. Today. Is, he, is, is he shopping himself out? We've got Marie as well, of course, from Astralis Female. She'll be uh, representing Denmark today, of course. This is an intro. I mean... How would you come into a show match like this? Are you, would you be here to have fun, or would you be here to put your name on I a mean, list like people say, hold on, I think they're actually like, playing really well. Players like Bubsky wants to get his name out there, you know? She's yeah. still got it, so uh, <laughs> maybe that's going to be the case. Get him off the bench. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, show matches are always a little bit weird, because you want to have fun, Anders, and bear in mind, I've played a lot of them, but you want to showcase yourself. You don't want to go in there with the guy who gets zero frags, right? You yeah. Make sure you get a few, get comfortable, then start having some fun once you've maybe got like three or four kills built up. You're going to see some Zeus's, you're going to see some P90s, or at least we can hope so. Maybe the Auto Sniper will make an appearance. The rare, especially the T-Side Auto Sniper, the, the GS3, no one, no one ever picks that one up, but um, maybe we could see a little bit of a... I, I always find that if all it takes is one or two people to play a little bit seriously, and it, it's infectious, like, it, you know, people are like, oh, hold on, he's actually trying to play, let me, I have to, I have to match that energy a little bit, so... I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a, a, a one or two people in here that maybe would try to uh, yeah, try and see if they can flex a little bit in front of the crowd. Well, like I said, Anders, like Team Denmark, they've got their work cut out for them. Sure, they're going to have the Hell synergy, yeah. they're going to have the chemistry working in their favor, but the international dream team here, you've got a Liege, who's been one of the absolute best performers at the tournament so far. True. That's going to be difficult to deal with. Then you've got JL as well, a mad fragger, Alexi B, his in-game leader. And bear in mind, you've got Hedrick as well as well. He used to play with Alexi B. He used to be his sniper. That's so, true. So uh, there is something to be said. that It'll be a massive upset. You never want to see Team Denmark go down, but they're going to have to turn up today. I don't think it can all be about fun. They need to make sure they win still. If I'm the dream team, that's that's what I'm here for. I am here to to beat up Team Denmark, try to see if I can take the victory in the big stage, you know, really get the crowd against me. I'd find that accelerating. So that, that's what I'd be playing for 100%. But yeah, new what a great place to have a you know, a, sh a show match. It's everyone's favorite map now, and I can't really blame them for it. So um, we'll see. We'll see how ready they're gonna be. Haven't seen Magus play much CS2 at all, so I'll be very curious to see so what his feelings are. We can give a little bit of insight to some of the in-game events we'll be seeing. I've I've got them here. We, we've been told we can say maybe a couple. We've all right. Got to give some insight. Give us a taste. That's what could be happening. Um, okay, blind fire battle. 
So that means uh, both teams will play with the monitors turned off. That How was that round the wildest works? one. I will never know. But it looks like we're almost ready to get going. And this is going to be Nuke, your favorite map. You've said it many times. It I'm going to have to push you for a prediction, though. For a prediction, Fair, Henry. With... All things considered, who's going to be handling the in-game events, the chaos, who will be thriving here? Like you said, you made a good case for the Dream Team, so it might be, but I'm going to have to go with Team Denmark! <laughs> all right. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's, they seem to be the more popular I'm team. I'm farming those parts. points. Easy, yeah. Henry. They seem to be quite popular. Uh, the arena is starting to fill up right now. Team Denmark will be up against the Dream Team. You're just joining us. I'll be Head Trick, Alexi B, Hobbit, Alige, and JL. And for Team Denmark as well. It's a star studded roster, Anders. You've got to say some household names within this lineup. Magius, Esatag, Bubski, Kiabi, and Marie as well. So this is actually, I don't know, this, this is actually starting to build up. You can feel that there's a chance it can't go to overtime, I, I guess, suppose. It has to be done in regulation. Yeah, if you've got that lead, you've got to win. You've got to, you've got to close it out before you end up drawing the game. Nobody wants a draw, no, you know, show match. So exactly, just, you know, power on through. I, I guess we won't be seeing many ecos. I think we're going to see four spies pretty much oh, every yeah. round. One hundred. I think we're going to see the fun guns come through. Um, just, what, what's the weapon you hope to see? I personally, I'm a big fan of the R8. Like I just okay, think it's such a ridiculous enough. weapon that yeah. I just really enjoy it. I've run in every once in a while. I'll run into an R8 specialist on like uh, you know in, in matchmaking, especially if we're playing the odd maps. I know you like <laughs> you play a lot of Office, Henry. I play I've a heard. lot of Office. Yeah. Um, was much criticized. Scrawny was after you, asking if you were okay, like you were solo queuing Office. He is all up in my business about that stuff because I play Office so much. Yeah, he thinks I'm. Uh, Maybe not well. Maybe I need help. He's like reaching out. Um, uh, but no, I, I would like to see the R8 as well. Uh, maybe some of the, the heavier weapons. Maybe get them to get out or the M249. I've always personally had a bit of a dream that you would buy five from us and all of them on burst fire. All right, I'd actually That's don't mind 15 that. bullets every time, you know, everyone clicks. It's just like, even if you don't have the accuracy, surely you hit something eventually, you know? Just a, a barrage of bullets, like. So Banks is trying to rile up the crowd here. He's got a lot on his play. He's actually the coach of the Dream Team, yeah, he is. And he's trying to get the crowd on his side. Do you think he'll stay the coach? Do you think he'll try and take over somebody's game at one point? I've got a feeling there'll be some uh, wacky business going on here. I'm not sure. He What's didn't play by the rules. I mean, when we were in uh, in, in Washington, he was uh, he was he was definitely there was a lot of a lot of chaos happening. Moses was out there. He was cheating the the yeah, no screen kind, round. He was running expect, up on the stage. Kind of expect it from Jason, though, don't you? You kind of have to make sure you bring your own bending the rules in. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, like he just seemed so ready to cheat at a drop of a hat, like which is interesting, <laughs> I think. But uh, then, no, good for him. He managed to win that round, and that was when the screens are turned off. Like he actually somehow managed to bring his setup over towards the casting setup. Yes. And still play the round. And still play the round. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see if there's going to be any kind of shenanigans like that. Let's see, Lexi, do you do you even have, do you need an in-game leader in a show match, or is it just you know? Um, I need you need someone to say up a rush. All right. You need someone to say up at the very least ramp rush, up a rush. For, well, he's set up in the middle, you know, he's in that position. When was the last time you played a show match, Anders? When was the last I think time I've that seen I... You, I've seen you in a CS2, and I remember a Deagle clip. I did one for... Yeah, I did one. It was against Banks. And actually, I think Banks is undefeated in show matches, if I'm being honest. I don't think that he's ever lost me. one. Uh, but yeah, I did play one. Well, let's, let's listen to what James is saying. I am five for five in show matches at the moment. <laughs> you are? Five out of five. I have never lost wrong. a show match, so you boys need to... Need it's your first time. You're, you're in pressure on us right now. <laughs> we won't lose, James. Trust okay, me. Okay, Well, that confirms it, Anders. Show you match you, champion. You weren't lying. So is he claiming the victory as coach or as player, sorry? I think either one. I think it okay, all counts, so if, right? if he's involved, there's a win. Yeah. So right now, this team wins. If the Dream Team takes it, James Banks goes six for six. That's, that's what we're saying. That's it. He's got a streak. It's not quite the phase streak at the moment, but he is, you know, show matcher a bit more rare, I suppose. So it's still pretty impressive, you know. But yeah, I did play him in Romania in, in the city of Yash. Uh, cool it was place. Inferno, right? We played on Inferno. Yes, yeah, first time we played it. And I did I did have a, an insane clutch. There was a Deagle the moment. I remember through yeah, the smoke. Through the the smoke. Shot. Yeah, I clocked Banks. That, that kind of made, that was the highlight for me. I was, I was so happy when I was like, that's all I need, really. You know, just a, like you said, nobody wants to finish on zero kills. So just getting just getting something on the board in a show match. You yeah, like, I'm no stranger to the show match myself. Like I know what it's all about. You want to go out there, you want to put on a show, you want to have fun, but of course you don't want to be the guys at the bottom of the scoreboard. Like I you think... go like zero six, and all of a sudden you're just like, okay, maybe this isn't as fun anymore. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
I think we're ready. Make some noise for the Dream Team taking on Team Denmark. Here we go, Henry. We're setting it up. We're ready. It's going to be on Nuke. It's a show match. So once again, welcome. It is Championship Sunday. And we are ready with a show match coming live to you. It'll be Team Denmark. Looks like they're going to be starting on the T side. And the Dream Team is starting on that CT. Oh, it's the other way. It's T the other side way. for the Dream the Team. There we go. Here it is then. Oh, we've got we've got orbs already, Anders. There's no pistol around here. That's so no one quick. warned us about this. I guess that's great. You can tell you can vote there. What do we want? Short fuse or low gravity? The low gravity one is wild. They're perfectly accurate in the air. Of course, the short fuse one, you're gonna have very limited bomb time. So if one goes down and you're probably screwed. Alexi, gonna get dropped at the beginning. Hometown here of Kiev, getting the kill. Oh, Hobbit, sneaky. Okay. That's Marie, she's gone down. Hobbit, he's not playing any games right now. He's playing to win this. Yeah, there, there's no fun being had out right now. This is uh, brutal from the Dream Team. They win five orbs, I think, Anders, on the T side of Nuke. We've never seen anything like it. And for now, it's a three versus two. You can see there's been a tone shift on the server. All of a sudden, yeah. they're trying their hardest. They want to make sure they close this round out. Team Denmark, Kiabi and Pupski hard. remaining here on the retake. They've got M4s, no funny, funny weapons here as uh, Alige will be blowing up in the smoke. Spots one! Nails the shot, takes down Bubski. They're, they're throwing smokes, they're clearing the bomb site. Even with five AWPs, they still make it kind of a serious round. So, yeah. you know, um, a bit of a, a bit of a wake-up call to Team Denmark that the Dream Team are here to play. Yeah, it seems that way. Like, they're, they're having fun. We're seeing the knife being brought out here, but it'll be JL to close things with a lovely little no-scope there. Yeah, golf clap. I like that. You're good sportsman in here. Like, uh, I want to make sure everyone's having a good time. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the first round for the Dream Team. Yeah, they pick it up. So, they're, they're, so all bets are off. There's no pistol round. There's no economy to track your actors. Oh. We're going to the moon, I assume. This is where the gravity must get affected. Yes, it will be, Henry. Now, in the past, it's turned out that jumping in this format is super dangerous. Like, sure, you might be accurate in the air, but the problem is so, you're so open. Like, you, you're gonna be the best, from everywhere. What's going to be the best weapon here? Um, the Mac 10, the P90. I think a something like that. Yeah, there it is. So auto shotgun, P90. Yeah, they, yeah, they auto it shotguns out. are good. So bet. We've got P90, auto shotguns here, and we're getting straight into the action. Ali, double kill to open things up. It's a disaster. Team Denmark oh, are getting oh. absolutely ravished mid air. They just get dropped as well. Marie struggling to get out of harm's way here. So many players, so much damage being inflicted, and just poor old Bubski, the P90. The backstab, he's got a chance at this one, Anders. A 1v5 has already happened in this arena. He won't be pulling one off today, though, as the auto <laughs> shotguns prevail. Listen, he made a classic mistake in the two to moon round. He was looking down on the ground for the rest of the enemies, but they were all above him. P90 is a good bet, though, but Bobski unable to finish the round. Look at this madness that you're seeing. <laughs> auto shotguns, some of them knew, some of them had an idea, but... So that was definitely the best approach. The auto shotgun. It's been confirmed. Fast speed in the air, and uh, there it is. The scouts from the ground providing the covering fire as well. And I think we've got a, no a normal round here, quite a good normal round. Here. So as we see, it looks like a, a Venn dive's coming through. They've got the shotguns. bomb in the back as well. You can vote for the next one. We have a super speed or slow mode. Get on Blast on TV to get your vote in now. We've got a nice plan coming through, Anders. The retake will begin. The Molotov is very, very potent indeed. And JL, he's pushing through. The auto shotgun started to absolutely tear apart Team Denmark here. As Kiabi's left in a 1v4. This is not looking good for the home team. It's really not. The Dream Team, they're just, uh, they might be picking up wacky weapons, but they're powering through. The four auto shotgun, one P90 round. No one's ever seen that before. Oh, Kiabi, he's... We need a timeout. <laughs> Did you need a tactical timeout? Who's the coach of Team Denmark? The Dream Team's got banks. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, he's going straight for the defuse, isn't he? They're right on top, but Alexi gets the two skill. Oh no! <laughs> he's stuck by. Unbelievable. All right, Denmark, you need to start oh. posing some rounds here. It's getting a little bit awkward. Yeah, we want them to do more. We don't, don't have we? much Danish representation today. We've got Carrigan in the final, of course. But this That's... is where Denmark can really shine in this particular match. Hyper speed. I assume things will be getting faster rather than slower. 
Much faster, Henry. Oh, much, yes. Much faster. Indeed. As you get ready for what could be the fastest round of Counter-Strike ever recorded here. We're going to be going into all the round where we're going to see the Femme 3 90s taking everyone down. It's an absolute brutal round here. Just one player remaining. And how is he still making his way down towards lower? He's trying to knife him from behind. That's what he wants to do with the P90. Oh, my God. Look at how quick the time is running out as well. 40 seconds, Henry. We've got to be going about 10 times the speed here. There it is, really close. Things out, it's going to be the first round for Team Denmark. Blink and you miss it. The P90 rush, it makes sense, and in that sort of round... It does. You want to go as fast as possible, create chaos, but it doesn't really work out for the Dream Team this time. Shut down, it's Marie with that P90, trading frags where everyone picking up the same weapon there, realizing the P90 was the weapon for the job. Yeah, she, she was murdering everybody. She, I think she shot Bubsy in the back of the head too in the middle of all the chaos, but I guess that's, that's what happens. <laughs> oh no. But it's something. It's something to work with. Yeah, the first round on the board. Looks like we've got a little time out as well just to discuss the options. What's going to be coming in next? I think this will be a, a normal round once again with all the money you could ask for. Heavy air quotes on that normal. And we've got the AWP set up once more for the Dream Team. Five orbs. On the T side of Nuke, Mage is operating with the, the Mag 7 instead. So no funny business round, we've got the Zeus. Well, I guess Alexi B wants to keep it a little bit silly, and he <laughs> might get a chance to open things up. Marie, be careful. Don't do it. Don't go around that corner. Yeah, send S-Tag. That's the right move. Send S-Tag in oh, first. Oh, no. Oh, my God. He's patient, isn't he? Here we go. Ready? There's one no-scope. He's got the Zeus out, but so does S-Tag! <laughs> he was ready to play that game, and I think he picked up Alexei's Zeus so he could actually do it again. He's got the, the, the rare double Zeus. So, four orbs in the four and four post plant scenario. Jay out to be tested first here. Team Denmark need to start stringing some rounds together. They'll burn Jay out of the back of the ramp room. This retake is on. They've got kits available. Flashbang from Mages here. Looking to show us some of the CS2 form. Elise, though, starting to mow them down. The AWP might be the perfect weapon for the job, but Elise has been dropped. Orbit back here. Oh, he actually gets the run. He shot at Trick. Man, they've got the power to do this. Five AWPs. Yeah, it seems to be a very viable strategy. Why has no one done this before? Yeah, maybe, maybe this will be the, the, the eye-opening moment where people really start to notice that this can, this can work. Look at the timing here. The Zeus. A lot more popular, this tournament, I have to say. Banks is loving it, isn't he? You see that coach Cam, he's... Oh, they're absolutely <laughs> loving it down there. JL can't believe it. 4-1 in favor of the Dream Team here. Team Denmark. At least they don't have to worry about the finances, Anders. They're always going to have money. Let's see what this round has got in store for us. I feel like it's not going to be quite as it seems. Well, I saw that Elish had the R8. Oh, now, he also really? has an AK, but... I want to see that in play. That's, the, that's my real wish for this. Get, get a couple of R8s out there. See, he's flexing it right now. Oh, you can hear it, it coming. Dangerous. It's going to be the Wild West out there soon. Oh, we've got enough rush here, I think. Opening flashes. Good spray down from Kiabi. That shaky aim is coming back through with a full spray down. And it's just to open things up. They've got that man advantage now. They're throwing flashes and setting up executes in the show match. It's actually so BM, isn't it? Oh, here we go. JL, though, swapping places. A little bit of a no-scope in there. That's too much. There we go. A Bobski from the bench getting a kill anyway. Yes, I think about it. It's Elise. The R8's right, out of the round. I think he had a Nick Gev as well. Hedrick, the last one left there. They're trying to hunt him down. He's on for the ace with the AWP, but they pretty much got him boxed in here. Not sure what, which oh. weapon to use. He's trying a little bit of everything. Oh my. Yeah, we will take him down. All right, Team Denmark, <laughs> pick it up around. Hedrick almost gets it done there with the Tech 9. A couple of dinks. Already had a couple of kills under his belt. That ace was possible. It's the ramp push that's shut down by S Tag. Zeus in hand. Marie joins in with a, a flash orb shot as well. It's enough. Team Denmark will be posting their second round at the very least, here, Anders. One of every grenade. One of every grenade. That was. <laughs> every grenade. What does he mean by that? 
I don't know. He's not. He's not ordering that mean, pizza. Like, just get, get me one with everything. Is that <laughs> is that a sign of things to come? Oh, okay then, Anders. It's oh, about the round. Right. It's raining nades, you and I can you. tell you exactly what that is. Nades only, with infinite utility, including mollies, flashes, smokes, and HEs. So it means there's no guns, My there's no Zeus's, God. there's wow. only utility. You know, this know. is going to be wild. We haven't seen this in CS2 with the smokes up. If, it, if, if anyone throws a smoke, there's going to be infinite HEs just so raining through. They could just do like a whole wall of smokes outside by times 10. They could just keep pumping them out there. Let's see how this Why works. This? I can see an AK. I assume everyone's got grenades there. You have grenades. I think you're just supposed to use the grenades, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, he's got the knife out. He's running for it. He's hunting it down. JL, he's hot on your heels. Keep running, son. He's coming for you. Oh, yeah, there we go. Grenades back out. He can't find him. He can't stop him either. I think that's a friendly HE that's landing on that oh, it's Denmark side. Fancy footwork from JL. He's got the whole team behind him. He's locked him in the vents here. Start chucking those grenades down. Lock him in. Keep him down there. I think there it is. I think the nades might have bugged Henry, so now they're just using the knives instead. We've run out of grenades? I think they've run out of grenades. The knives are coming out instead. As Tag will get the first one. It's a wild stabbing happening on Nuke here. Okay, so it's just going to be a knife round instead. Yeah. Oh, there's another Molotov. It's a good one. Could deny the defuse here. Who's going to come out on top? Marie starting to stab him up. Two players remaining here, need to start the defuse as well. Alige starts bringing it back. It's unclear as to who's winning. The defuse is coming in. Two seconds left, one second. Oh, he's done it! Team Denmark with the full defuse! Just when it looked like there was nothing left to be done, Anders, they couldn't find the bomb. They'd run out of the grenades. Magus takes it upon himself to bring the round successfully back in favor of Team Denmark. How did nobody stop him? Look I at don't how know. they're swinging. The, they're actually knifing each other at the end. That's what happened. They heard the stab and then they ran and knifed each other instead. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the full defuse, Team Denmark. That's a way to get started, isn't it? Right back in this game now. Well, that's the best round yet. Banks is looking unhappy. He's not, he, he wanted to win that round. Oh, Remember, he's, he's got a streak to protect. He's won the last five show true. matches. That's true. He that's, can't afford a loss here. It's in jeopardy now. Closing the gap. Just one round in it. Team Denmark coming back to life here. Looking for their third round in a row. We'll tie things up here. And it looks to be a pretty traditional round under. I'm seeing AKs and Kriegs. So no five orbs this time. Dropping the meta smokes. It's going to be a liege. Hungry for blood here as he does go down. S tag drops, head trick as well, the AWP. The frag is coming in thick and fast, but it's a two on two for now. We talked about this quite a bit. That we haven't really seen the Kriegs in regular play at all, so good to see them. Not that they're doing a lot in this one. Hobbit is cleaning it up. It's four kills for him. S tag's up here on its own, trying to prevent the Hobbit ace. He is lucky to still be alive. That could have been the end right there. Makes the jump down. Don't die to the gravity. Minute and 10 seconds, Henry. This is for the country, you know. Yeah. Can he pull this one out the hat? It's going to be a difficult round if he can take down Hobbit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is the international sign that I'm challenging you to a knife duel. Why would you do that with six health left? They're Does accepting make any sense? the duel. They, they want to take him on. Yeah, they're ready, but... He's made it clear as to what's happening It's a here. trick. Oh, my God! He saw it coming! They were, lured, they were going to backstab him. Oh, now he's got the Seuss out running for it. All right, go for the defuse instead. A little bit of a smoke. He's setting it up. Trying to get close now. Oh, oh! Missed. His chance might be gone. There's another Seuss that also misses. The bomb is going to take both of them down, but S time trying his very best. That's, that's one hell of an attempt there. Yeah. What more can you ask for? He knew he couldn't win the round, Anders. He wanted to go down with some dignity at the very least. And I think he can give him that. He went down with the ship. Challenge them with the knife. They accept it. Alexi B comes out on top. And we will see Team Denmark trading by two rounds now. On their CT campaign as well, the nade was a thing of beauty, Anders. That's maybe, so sick. Maybe BM, considering you offered up a knife duel. Yeah, but he was in a one versus two. Like, we're giving him a little bit of leverage, you know, a little bit of leeway. Okay. That's okay. It's very generous of you. Oh, I, I try. This is, uh, this is concerning for Denmark a little bit. They are falling too far behind for my taste. Yeah. I want to see them start to pick it up again. Yeah, stop having fun, I would say. 
Is it smoky in here? And there's now what could that possibly mean? Well, I think this one is going to be self-explanatory, hopefully in a couple of seconds. So setting up for this one, you see Hattrick getting a bit nervous. Hang on. His chair's getting consumed in the smoke Oh, dear. Here. We can see Banks for maybe another second or How two. How are they going to play under gonna... these conditions, Anders? <laughs> well, they're... How is JL going to play like that? Probably not that well, to be honest. It's... And it's quite smoky in there. It's getting worse and worse all the time. And again, this is voted... Over on Blaster TV, the viewers get to vote which side. Of course, they went for this. They did win for. They need it too. You know, the Dream Teams. You know, they're they're pulling ahead. So we need Team Denmark with a little bit of a little bit of a bonus on their side. They can still see their monitors. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everything's okay down there. And yeah, we get it, you vape, bro. Like <laughs> we got the message. All right then. So, will it affect the Dream Team? Time will tell. Death tag. With that <laughs> Zeus in hand, they're going to trade blows. And XCB continues to find frag after frag. They've got the man advantage here, even while they're smoked out. Oh, and XCB wants a knife kill as well, Anders. He's they're not just, done yet. No, they're just... I want to bait them in. He's trying to push them into the knife with the Molotov, but it's not happening. Go for a late defuse here, Team Denmark. Shorty just wait out the clock, come running down with three people. They need the rounds. Alexi's playing such a dangerous game. It's Marie going down next. He's hiding inside. The R8s have come out, but they're not doing oh anything. Dear. Just Hobbit left. They are defusing. He's walked out. He's trying to see if he can stop. Oh! One second left. He hits the headshot inside. No one's defusing now. Hobbit. The stick in the wheel that they were not expecting. It's going to be another round for the Dream Team. I can't believe it, Anders. That full defuse looks locked in. The dual elites to save the day. An amazing retake, <laughs> but completely denied once again. Oh my That's days. That's the coach cam. You can see even with the smoke, Anders, Hobbit still wins the round. What does that say about Team Denmark at this point? I don't know, they need even more help, don't they? they they're, in a, they're in a rough spot at the moment. They got some legends on the Amagus. What's happening? What are you, well, you know, uh, yeah, I step think it up. We need to, they need to win this game, right? I think this is important. Sure, in front like, of home crowd. Home crowd? Oh, he's got the technique down. Yeah, he, knows. he knows the tricks. This you wanted up. to see it, Anders. It's going to be the Wild West out there soon. Shotgun to kick things off straight into the flames. Hobbit hoping to find a CT on that side. And this time... We've got Nova shotguns, Negevs, an org for Kiabi as well. And it's all slowed down. They're going to pop the smoke open. Look at that Deagle headshot. Takes a lot of damage. That's, that's probably too excessive, you know? Blowing yeah. the smoke open is fine. That's not the tech we're looking for. He's flanking with the shotgun at this range. And surprisingly, he's going to find nobody in the bomb site. That's a bit, it's a bit weird. The R8, unfortunately, out of the round here now. Oh, he saw him, I think. Oh, there we go, Marie. <laughs> she actually stabbed JL and Kirby shoots her afterwards. There's oh. mutiny happening on the Danish <laughs> side. Why? <laughs> a lot of confusion in the round here. No one seems to know what's going on. The CTs are making a lot of noise. And XTB sets up the Zeus trap once again. He's had about three kills with the weapon so far. Bubski making his way through secret. 30 seconds remaining. Needs to get that bomb planted if possible. Smoke off towards main. And this is the auto shotgun. Alexi B just with the Zeus in hand. He's waiting down towards those vents. What a shotgun to join him. Oh, the timing perfect, Anders. Such a long delay. Bubski just... A little bit of heart attack moment for him. Nice attempt there. The Seuss is right oh! in. Alexi. How many Seuss kills has he got this show match? He's actually... He's too good. He's got it again. Well, there's still Look. a chance. A sly one. Major school. He doesn't want to be the next victim. Does he? he doesn't. He really doesn't want to get Zeus. Oh, we're running up close. Come on, we need right into it. Yeah! And a shot mid -air. There's that mega steagle that we all know and love. It's been a while since we've seen it, Anders, but there it is. Majisk stepping up at Team Denmark. Just when it looked like they were down and out, when things were unraveling, he wins a massive clutch. The Desert Eagle with pinpoint accuracy. You'd love to see that. You don't see anyone, bro? No! One more door. JL getting knifed in the process as well. Stabbed in the bank. <laughs> Wicked smile from Marie as well. She's loving it. 
That's something you can you can screenshot, you know, put on your Steam profile or something. It's like the time you stab Jail in a, you know, on a big stage in front of the crowd. I definitely do that. Bragging rights right there. What have we got here, Anders? Auto shotguns again. Scouts. Kiabi. Currently got eight kills. Looking to find a liege out here. Couple of players in front of him. The flashbangs are deployed. He finds a first. He's not messing around now. Doing it for Denmark. Getting it done. Finding the double kill. Oh, they're not done yet, though. We are going to see Marie with the Zeus in the back. So that's a knife into a Zeus. Playing with some style out there today. And JL, the victim once again. <laughs> She's got his number at the moment. Alexi. Could he do it on his own, though? They are coming for him. He's got the Zeus out. He's getting another kill. How has he done it? Oh, there we go. They're challenging him a little bit. They want to see if they can find him. Ready with the oh! knife. Oh! Marie's had a round energy. How do you like them apples? Two knife kills back to back. And Zeus, Zeus in there as well. Unbelievable scenes. Oh, Red so faces sick. all round. Team Denmark pick up another. Yeah, they might not be leading in rounds, but you know, they're getting some of the really stylish kills in here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Anders is the most infamous one of them all. It's the crowd favorite. We're turning the screens off. It's a blackout. They will not be able oh, to see anything. On. They're going to have to use their sixth sense here. What's Jimmy doing? Headset off. Headset off. Headset off. Oh, he, he knows the tactics. He knows you have to communicate. He's going to be trying to coordinate them. How is this going to work a, out? Captain Banks. Yeah. Oh, he's going to try and call. Oh, wow. The crowd He's going next him. level. He's going to try and do it from the he big knows. screen. Is this cheating, Anders? Is I this know. allowed? I don't think there is a rule book here, Henry. I guess he can do whatever he wants, but... Because Team Denmark haven't got a coach. They can't have anyone to help them. They're running in this the dark. This doesn't seem fair. They're playing without monitors, trying to Where's see if Banks they can going? even make their way out of spawn at the moment. Where's Banks going? He's going into the Team Denmark booth. I think he's going to look at the strategy, see where they're positioned. He's going to bring that information back. Yeah, he's, he, and did, try and he guide. did take a step definitely against the rules, that one. Guys, the referees have a notice. Make some noise for James Banks here. Are you happy with this? <laughs> like he's, I think this is cheating against Team Denmark. Oh, but they can still... Oh, I guess if they're taking the headsets off, they can't even hear anything. So, yeah, maybe? No, but he wants so he can tell them. So he shouts yeah. like a conductor. But Team Denmark can at least hear if people are shooting in the area. Like, maybe you can try to do something. It's getting kind of close here. They're all in the right area outside. Oh, is he going to be able to guide them? Isn't he? And he worked. S-Tag. Knife out. He's looking for it. Just guided by the audio. He's blind as a bat right now. Has there been any kills yet? There's the first. <laughs> oh, no. Giavi. He's taking himself down. He's fallen on his sword. Oh, no. A grenade in front. Bob Skinny to blows himself up. <laughs> What's happening? James oh. Bang's trying to guide them. He's doing a terrible the job, Henry. The blind, leading the blind, comes to mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is exactly it. We are going to see the P2000, the Deagle. They've just given up at this stage. Plus, no one knows what's going on. They're so discombobulated. I think they've lost track of where they are on the map. Is he not going to be playing basically inverse? Like, is, is it, are they, does it you left even left when this he's like calling Twitch it out? This is like chat trying to play CS2. <laughs> yeah. like this left, right, forward, back, shoots. Oh, they're trying to get the bomb down. There's only five seconds left. He's trying to go. Oh, but no, he can't. no, there's no oh. time. The lead is just marking down. down. Even in the face of uh, just outright cheating, Anders. They managed to win it by virtue of no plants. They couldn't even cheat their way to victory. That is embarrassing. Oh, this is when the nade came through. Respect, a pretty stylish finish. If you're going to go out, might as well make it classy. Hell yeah. Okay. So, do the screens go back on? Uh, do we yes. have the technology to turn them back on? <laughs> well, it's going to be the halftime break. What more have we got in store? Time will tell. Currently, we split things right down the middle. We'll see if Team Denmark can bring it back against the Dream Team. This message is brought to you by Blast. London, the jewel of England. At last, we're bringing a distinctly London feel to Counter-Strike. The sights. The sounds. We go bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. And the pageantry. Nah.
Here we go! The chickens have made their way into the Royal Arena. Henry, have you ever seen anything like it? What does it all mean? Well, A what? chicken has entered! Oh, we got... We got the chicken voiceover. <laughs> this is horrifying! What an entrance! The chicken has been roaming the halls the last few days. He's finally entered the arena now. They're gonna cause chaos on the server. And he's entering the booth of Team Denmark. <laughs> Yabi's not happy, trying to deal with him. He's throwing stuff at the chicken, trying to make it go away. Listen, they've been needing a coach. They haven't had one yet. Maybe the chicken's it. Is he a friend or a foe, though? Is it a friendly chicken? I doubt it's friendly. That intro made me made me second guess that. Oh, oh what's happened? No, what's this? Anders, we've gone clucking mad on the server here. There's millions <laughs> of chickens everywhere. Or at least there were. <laughs> They're slowly disappearing. All right, they are a distraction. Bubski, he can't believe what he's come back to. He's been on the bench How for How many chickens are there? An infinite amount. I don't think that they're, they're not going to be able to get rid of all of them. Leige, ignoring the chickens for now. Bubski, he was distracted earlier. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> oh, we were warned at the beginning that it's possible the server would just outright crash from the amount of chickens. Nobody really knew for sure, but... Um, Finally, we have the technology, <laughs> the thousands of chickens. What's happening? On the server. Oh, oh my god, they're, they're, they're multiplying. We found the nest, the, the spawn portal <laughs> yeah. from which they join our realm. The hive of chickens. From the chicken Oh, universe. you can see the server's not enjoying it now, Anders. You did warn us it could get a little oh, bit no. dicey out there. It's getting choppy. The chickens are making things complicated, but Kiabi fighting back here. Bear in mind, it is 6 6. There's a chance he can still win this round. He's doing it for Team Denmark, but it won't be enough. We survive. Do we? <laughs> I, think, I, think that's, I think that's the server dying on us. Oh my god, it was close. You actually saw the lags coming in. I think the, <laughs> the strategy has to be to kill the chickens before they crash the server. That's basically it. So to answer your question, Henry, they were evil. They, they were trying were. to stop the show match. They did not come in peace whatsoever. They almost <laughs> took down the whole thing, but maybe Team Denmark needed them. They still lost the round. And now they're down seven to six here. Oh. Slow motion, Anders. We went super fast before. I imagine we're going to be going at more of a leisurely pace at this point. Wow, Henry. Oh dear, what's happened? Well, you've got that Riz voice that you've always wanted, finally. <laughs> I sound like a real man. This is actually how I want to sound all the time. <laughs> well, okay, it's, so uh, the chickens remain. The chickens remain? We get to enjoy them for a little bit longer here. I feel like that's for sure going to crash the server, isn't it? With all of this tech combined, slow motion chickens, slow motion voices. Who knows what's going to happen here, Anders? All we do know is, Marie, Making our way up towards the top of the silo here, the AWP. It's like a frag movie at this point. Super slow motion, lining them all up. Chickens everywhere. The first kill comes through. It's Kiabi. He'll be dropped as Team Denmark scramble back into position, hoping they can find this round in their favor. Will the chickens be their good luck charm? <laughs> Alex, he's still trying with the with the Zeus Henry, the Zeus. Here we go. Slowly does it. Closer and closer. The smoke deployed. I'll be down for about three minutes. And this we're at one minute twenty-five. Here is S tag. Starting to open things up for Team Denmark. This round is still possible. It's head trick answering back with the AWP towards outside. There's still got plenty of time on the clock. One minute twenty here. The auto sniper can't connect for S tag. It's Hobbit who brings us back into the four on two. On. Go for the max pain. Peak. Bubsky. Goes find a kill on the T side. The AWP can you find the majority of the kills. The RA revolver though. Coming around the corner. Can't connect. Beautiful shots from Bubsky. All of a sudden there's a two versus one and there's a real chance to release. What a peak. No, I he's really trying to get away. It just feels like he's stuck in the top hit. There's still so much time on the clock. <laughs> yeah, we've still got maybe slow. 10 minutes of play here. If they don't find each other soon, we could be here for a while. Bubski, though, giving up the sound cue. Team Denmark need this one. Bubski. 
The nation on his shoulders right here. Dropsy and Sendry making his way down towards Lower. Oh. Slowly but surely, but the smoke will extinguish the flames and the vents. Elise can hear the bomb planted. Bubsky right by the door. It could all come crashing down right here, right now, Anders. Elise, Zeus in hand, he gets stuck in the door! The Zeus prevails and comes out on top! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You, uh... <laughs> You won't know it, but for a minute there, it did sound like, uh, you know, Galadriel in, in that one Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> That's an exciting one. Someone, someone made that clip. Someone clipped that for me and do the do the comparison. I'm pretty sure that was close by. The chicken actually also, you know, blocking in Bobski in the corner. The chickens are against Team Denmark. What's going on? Yeah, they, they have not been enjoying the presence of the chickens whatsoever. It seemed to be their downfall. Can't get going here. Alij once again steals yet another clutch away. The crowd can't believe it. Even in slow motion, they can't get the job done. It's eight to six now. The dream team walking away with a victory in front of the home crowd here. Team Denmark, what have they got to answer back with? Oh my God, it's a stack in the round. <laughs> they're all here. And Team Denmark, they're eating it up. They run in. Blind fire, Seuss coming out from Hetrick as he tries to get the kill, but the bomb has been oh. lost. It's right there, Henry. Oh, you're right. They have to commit. They have to keep going here. A five-man stacking towards the ramp room through the smoke. Elise finds yet another kill here. The perfect strategy. What a call. And now just Bubsky and Marie remain, and uh, they're going to boost up and towards heaven. How has Alexi B got there? He is. Uh, there's no He's way. He's going to hear one coming. Is. Yeah. He's already laughing. Oh, they're going to see him. Alexi. How did he get up there? I don't know. Someone's going to find out real soon. Presumably you can jump off the ladder and try to land up there. Hey, he was just chilling. What an absolute nerd. Well, the ramp rush is met with the ramp stack. One player remains and Marie surrounded. I actually think that's a mercy killing from Hetrick. He's like, they're going to knife her. I'm going to make, I'm going to just yeah. take her out. Like, just avoid that. Banks is on. He's on track for the sixth show match that he's going to be winning. No one can stop this well, man. Maybe he made this call. It's this possible. could be all Team Banks. Like, uh, a five-man ramp stack. You don't see it too often. Yeah, apparently chickens are not allowed in the facility. We broke that rule. Not anymore. Not after what happened earlier. Yeah. <laughs> They're still here. <laughs> still causing carnage. Nine to six, the dream team. Looking to become the champions here of the show match. Looks to be more of a subdued round, Anders. No funny business this time. Magus are going to open things up, and unfortunately, it's a no scope. Alexi B will take him down. Four and four. He's having fun out there. He's had a lot of knife kills. He's had three or four Zeus's. Now got the AWP. Babski looking for those one taps. Has he still got it in him? That's a beautiful shot, but the Negev in the corner making things a little bit more complicated. A lead three versus one. Oh, we could spray them both down if he kept going. Does he have it in him, Anders? Denmark need this more than anything. And it will be Kiabi to find the round. They're back. That's huge. It was slipping out of their hands, but that makes a difference right there. Yeah, the Negev, it was close. He could have got the double kill through. It looked like it was meant to be. Nice little no scope here to begin with. Oh, poor old chicken. What's going on there? Didn't know where he was. Couldn't find his home. It's a lead to that. Crumbles in the one versus three. Didn't have the weapon of choice. All right, some insight here from Banks. He's a very active coach, Anders. Hands on. Yeah, he is. Upside down. Oh, no. Playing with an inverted mouse. There's nothing worse than this. Is There are a couple of freaky players out there, notoriously, that do play with inverted mice from the beginning, but it's so hard. Like The best thing to do in this one is, is to get the auto sniper and just position yourself somewhere, look straight ahead, and wait for people to run into it. So you'd only have to do sort of left to right. So this is like you're on like a flight simulator. It's you like a the flight simulator. Down, the cross leg goes up. Yeah, you, you're right. There are some freaks that do enjoy this setup. Yeah. They exist, but uh, it's a rare sight. If you're not used to it, it's miserable. So let's just see. <laughs> yeah, just don't try <laughs> even throwing anything. It's not easy. Okay. JL, just, he's right in it. He's having a great time. Not so much for Kiabi. He's got taken down already. <laughs> Not so much over that. He's <laughs> died straight away. Yeah, just they're just trying not to look up or down. Like, if you're in a position where you have to sort of like 
Get a bit of a flick in. It's just so hard to do. I can't believe they're playing so well. This is... They've improved since the last show match somehow. <laughs> you do see it there. Looking into the sky. Just absolutely no idea what's going on. Marie is on her own. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. See, the temptation. Like, you're so... You're, the muscle memory kicks in. And you're like, I'm, I have to flick up to hit the shot. And you're just looking straight down to the ground. Amazing stuff. But again, it's Team Denmark coming out on the short end of the stick here. This is... This is getting a bit rough. Yeah, they're starting to run out of time. The upside down round doesn't do them any favors. Things starting to spiral a little bit here in terms of the scoreline. It was Kiavi that went down early through the smoke. The Shokan dropped him. You can see that they're struggling to hold it together. Alexi B mastering the up and down technique with that auto shotgun. Gets the job done. He's enjoying himself out there. And rightly so. And so we've got a bit of a timeout here just to allow Denmark to compose himself. They need a win here. They can't allow Banks to keep the streak going. I, I promise nobody else has the kind of experience that he has in show matches. Like, no one's ever done this before. He's, he's the veteran in the show match format, so... I don't know. They don't have a coach either behind them. It's not easy out there. 10 to 7, the scoreline. Three rounds away from victory are the dream team. They could take it away. Team Denmark. I don't oh, know the bomb's down the low, back. Randers. This is actually kind of massive. Magius can maybe can steal this round away. The plan will come in quickly. The defuse should, should be quick as well. You've got to send your vote in. Should we smoke Team Denmark now? I think what? we have to, right? We've got to smoke them out as well. Yeah? I mean, fair I'll... is fair. Like they, they kind of need all the rounds they can get right now. But if they win this one, I think it's fair enough. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, get a little bit of a taste of it. We'll see how they manage. The Dream Team managed to win in spite of the smoke. So, speaking of smokes, there's Hobbit smoking off the no, bomb. 10 second defuse. That's what he's going for. But needs are raining in. Hobbit's off the defuse. That T side there we go. coming in. And it's Team Denmark really stepping it up. Needed that one. They felt like they had nothing left. They weren't posting any rounds on their T side. But Mage is dropping down towards lower, getting that bomb planted. And all of a sudden, they could win the round, but it was close. The <laughs> Hobbit defuse there could There's have so been disastrous, and there's a lot of chickens down and towards lower. Look at him spinning around <laughs> on the silo as well. It's madness. Absolute madness. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, Team Denmark, it's your turn. After yeah. winning that previous round, it's the least we could do. The crowd voted for it. It was on Blasted TV, and, and yeah, they give it to Team Denmark, so... We'll see if they're going to be ready or not. <laughs> this is the smoke cannon in the back. Admin's getting destroyed as well in the meantime. I feel like they're getting maybe a little bit less smoke though, Henry. There could be some favoritism going on here. Maybe you're onto something there. I didn't want to mention it, but it does. Okay, they're getting them a second dousing. Nice. That's more like it. That will do. Bobski's thinking, get me back on the bench. This is too much. <laughs> like, I do. <laughs> Bear least, in mind. At least I was sitting down and the bench was comfortable, you know? They are behind now as well. There's quite a lot of smoke. They're actually giving them maybe too much here, Anders. I don't think there's such a thing as too much in this <laughs> round. Like, just keep it going. It's hot boxing the booth. <laughs> Hold it. Just keep it going forever. <laughs> Look at this ridiculous shot. Bobski's return to Counter-Strike. It's not what he was expecting, you know? <laughs> wow. We'll see if it affects their play. They're actually down 10 to 8 right now. Need all the rounds they can get. This certainly doesn't help things out whatsoever. Completely smoked off in the booth. AK versus Auto Shotgun. JL on top of the booth. Good entry for Kirby. Smoke or not, he's not that affected by it. Oh, and JL, what a jump down. This is a oh, slaughter. No. They picked it up, Henry. 11 to 8. Banks is fired up. Oh, it's the smoke, I think. They would have had that round. Upon review, it doesn't seem fair. That was theirs. They had the right positions. They had the right weapons. They just couldn't see who they were shooting at. Team Denmark. As they come out of the hug, it completely wrecked by the JL shotgun. You can see visibility is low. The coach cam gives us nothing to work with. Oh, well, we've got the Christmas hats coming out as well. Team Denmark, they're getting embarrassed on that stage right now. The crowd is falling a bit silent as the Dream Team are looking way too good. What's going on? God, Zeus only? An agreement? They're trying to Zeus it. That's a chicken. That's not the it, Hobbit. That's what are looking well. for. 
the chicken gave its life to save one of the Danish players, I believe. Oh, the server's not liking it, Anders. <laughs> the server's not liking it whatsoever. We it's need to download more RAM on this one. The chickens are causing chaos once again. As you see JL coming on top of the knife duel. This is for Matt Point as well. Great movement here. <laughs> Makes the jump down again. Oh no! Oh, God, Marie didn't work out. And now Team Denmark, they had the man advantage. But now it's definitely two versus one. But Kiabi's got 100 HP, Anders. And this sort of set up in a knife round, he might even have the advantage. He got the bomb. That's what he was looking for. He's playing for the... Can he even make the bomb site before the server crashes is kind of the, the question here. A little bit of a smoke going up. He sees them. Gonna try and see if he can do it anyway. Yeah, let's see. They are low on health here. This is a risk. He could win the two versus one. Oh, 40 seconds. off we go. He has a Molotov. He can Molotov behind him. They're never gonna be able to catch him. Oh, he's thinking about it. Yeah, if he drops a Molotov, Molotov behind. Yeah. At the top of heaven, they can't come up. He's not gonna throw it. Fascinating. Oh, he, made, he, he faked the drop down. That little jump was him trying to pretend that he had already dropped down. Now he's gone for it. He's put some distance in. He's putting in the digits. They're right on top. Hunting him. Good. Oh! Oh! With the one versus two in the night. <laughs> it's an absolute fumble for the dream team. Kiabi. Oh, this steps could be the big. And saves the bacon of Denmark. It was looking like that round was done, Anders. I didn't think he stood a chance. But he plays it to perfection. He didn't even need the Molotov. He only just managed to look at this chicken here. It saved them. The chicken took the Zeus hit instead. I've never seen anything like it. This Beautiful. could be the beginning of the comeback here for Team Denmark. Well, Lord knows they need a... Yeah, you're right, the chicken. <laughs> Protecting <laughs> Denmark at that point. Yeah, Banks can't believe it. The wheels are starting to fall off here. That was their round. He's under pressure now, Banks. Maybe for the Dream Team players, it's just another day in the office, but for Banks, it's a legacy. Yeah, this is everything for him. He's been back and forth. Dream Team are just one round away, though, from that point. Remember, no overtime here. It can be a draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Can't have killed the chickens. Oh, fast. no. Get him out. Oh, there we go. I think the grenade landed and blew some of them up, and now it's back. Again. They're spawning again. They're multiplying. <laughs> Oh, presumably a player kill will also help quite a bit because that's one less player that has to send updates to the server. So, oh, oh JL, that is quite the crisp deagle, isn't it? Oh, this is a problematic situation. Mages can spawn, low HP, now zero HP. Buffs one versus bomb. five. Chickens making things a bit more complicated as he goes through the door there. He did suit him, but he lived. Oh, the nade! <laughs> Welcome back, Bobski. Oh, yeah, hate to see <laughs> Eat that. Eat this need. Now the best result Team Denmark can hope for, Anders, is a draw. They're fighting for the draw. Nobody it's not that. a great sign of things to come here because their track record on the sea side is not looking too great. JL absolutely destroys them here with the Desert Eagle. That's so sick. They're going to need a divine intervention. Something that works in their favor. Can we smoke out the Dream Team? Triple smoke the dream to do whatever you can here at this point. They, you know, they need it maybe inverse, but only on their side. Like, they need something here to make this work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me the final round here. Team Denmark need you. Kiabi answering back. Is there a chance? Multiple kills required here towards upper. They've got the man advantage for now. The Zeus, it doesn't connect. Alexi B, he might be going down here. Kiabi trying to line them up. Oh, we might be done. Three versus two, Estag and Magisk. With the pride of a nation on their shoulders. They need to deliver here, Anders. Oh, it's been a rough game, hasn't it? The chickens have been against them. Banks has been masterfully coaching the Dream Team into what looks like yet another victory. And Team Denmark on the edge, being pushed over the cliff even as we speak. But the bomb, the bomb has been planted. Magis still has a Molotov. Let's see if he can time it right. Oh, it's gonna go down towards Toxic. That's a really great grenade. Is it going to be enough? The bomb ticking at some pace right now. This becomes a very real clutch as S-Tag hits the first headshot. Thrown into the two versus one. They know exactly where he is. Drops the flash pack. This needs to stop the defuse if possible. The flash is absolutely perfect. I think he might have done enough here, Anders. The defuse comes in. Has he kept the dream alive? Oh, no! Dream team have done it. They are your winners.
of the show match here at the full finals is not the result they were looking for. A team Denmark put up one hell of a showing. The Banks show match streak continues, is still going now, six in a row for him as he takes down Team Denmark. What a victory for the Dream Team. Unbelievable scenes. Man, Danes everywhere in absolute shambles as it's the Dream Team and most importantly Banks to take the W here in the show match. But it is time to get down to some very serious business indeed. As guys, we have a grand final for the ages on our hands. We're talking FaZe Clan versus Vitality. By the end of this evening, one of those two teams will be lifting the trophy. We're going to be back with everything you need to know about this iconic matchup, including some very special guests courtesy of Maui Snake after this break. Who, in your eyes, was the CSGO greatest of all time? I mean, I your eyes. One. What did you say? Device. Device? I, I like that. Who are we going with? Simple. God, I like this. This is actually some considered answers here. Yeah, I mean, if there's a f little bit longer in CSGO, I'll go for Zawi, of course. Yeah, it's a bit no, it's fair enough. Time, I like but... that. It's, it's some good, honest answers there. You considered them. For me, I would say uh, Saibu. Okay, fair enough. I just think he's really great at everything. Yeah, best all rounder. Yeah. Of all time? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Of all time, the last yeah, like, years? Yeah, like peak, like peak, peak. <laughs> like if you go back in all of three years, you have him, have him in every single team. Why is he wrong? Except, but if you except say, that he didn't play the first yeah, years but, of the game. But if you say like CS at I think, overall, it's I think I know who he's going to say. He's number two for me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Same as number three for you? Yeah. Damn. Well, for me, the vice, the goat. That's my number one too. Because that, I, think that's that's, I think that... I also agree that Saibu is insane, though. Yeah, but I would say that the way that the device plays is like he's he's not trying to be the best player in the world. I think that's it for me. Like I think that if he wanted to prove himself more individually, he could have done that. From what I've played with him, I think he could easily play more selfish if he wanted to. Cesar, but he doesn't want to do that. He's a humble goat. I would probably say uh, a symbol. Yeah. I think he's okay. both great individually and also. I mean, he, he, he won a major as well, so... It's fair enough, he, you don't he have fought, to justify he, he too fought much. hard for that one. I think it's a totally fair, yeah. <laughs> fair name to throw into the, the goat. ring. Um, but what about you? Yeah, I would say, <clears throat> I would say the same. Uh, simple for me as well. I sure. think, you know, he... The other one is obviously Sai Vu, I, I would say, but Simple, I think, takes the cake, because, yeah, he started quite early as well in CSGO. Sure. He, was, he was there from the beginning. I don't think I could give it to anyone else than Simple, yeah. honestly. And I got some experience playing with him. But just the fact that uh, he was dominating a lot of years, sure. a lot of events, mm -hmm. like sometimes in a lesser team, like bringing the, those teams uh, sure. to the top, like kind of like not not to say alone, but like huge individual performances, right? Yeah. Honestly, like all time, yeah, it's an easy answer for me. Fair enough. What about you, Bumic? Um, also played with, with Simple? Uh, yeah, of course. It's a great time with Simple and he's legendary. But uh, for me, if you s I, I will say Dupree. Because, okay. you know, yeah, in my top three... A rare answer, but one I like a lot. Can yeah, you please my, keep my, going? my best players for me, it's uh, Forrest, Dupree, Fair and Edward. So wow, it's you like, got like the old yeah, school... Yeah, then I was like, starting uh, place, yes, these four players uh, yeah. I was like looking for. And Dupree, because he, he won a lot of tournaments, a lot of majors in two different teams. So I think this guy is legendary as well. And st he's still playing, you know, in Geroik on this tournament. So we will see. I think he will do the great work in this team. Championship Sunday has certainly arrived, and by the end of the day, a new monarch will take reign over the Royal Arena. In one corner of the ring, we have Vitality never tasting glory on this specific ground. In the other, we have FaZe going from strength to strength, beginning off CS2. But for Carrigan, there is one glaring hole in that stuffed full trophy cabinet. Of course, we have so much goodness coming your way, so we welcome you to the Blast Premier Full Finals 2023. By we, I mean myself, for Spears, a very groovy Zaiwu, alongside my buddies Matthew and Jacob. Guys, I am so excited to be diving into this one. I cannot wait to get stuck into this grand final. Yeah, I think the stories line up perfectly for, uh, for spectacle today here in Copenhagen. No matter who win it, we're going to have some great narratives, some great stories to follow, some great destinies for players as well. It is going to be amazing. If Zaiwu is grooving, I'm grooving. 
It was like a dream scenario coming into the tournament, right? You're looking at the groups, you're looking at the brackets, you are kind of imagining, hmm, what if face take on Vitality <laughs> in a grand final? That'd all right, be, all right. That'd be kind of nice, right? And here, five days after the tournament starts, we're standing with that exact final. So, yes, I'm very excited for it, and I'm very, very happy we get to see two of the best teams in the world duke it out. I'm loving that we're getting to start off here in the lobby again as well, because we've got so many more fans as well yeah. actually joining us around, uh, and they're going to be getting super hyped as we move on into the arena. But as we take a look at the bracket as well, obviously, this is what's been going on for the past few days as we moved on into playoffs. Um, I think it's uh, apt that we talk a little bit about the teams that have departed us, uh, because I think it's fair to say both for Cloud9 and Complexity, um, they put up one hell of a fight. We start off with Cloud9 and they were literally a couple rounds away from completely changing this narrative and being the ones in this grand final. It's a very deserving run for Cloud9. I think they surprised everybody by the quality of Counter-Strike they were able to put forth. We've kind of anticipated the lack of Shiro, the lack of a strong AWP. Yep. It turns out it was much enough to be lethal, to be problematic. Boomich, the one we have on the camera, a couple of moments in the game with the sniper made life hard for Vitality. Electronic had a couple of moments, and let's be real, Vitality punched their ticket on a couple of rounds, on a couple of clutches. I was at the edge of my seat the entire game. If I had to pick one team that's exceeded my expectations coming into this tournament, it would be Cloud9. I did not anticipate them to play so good. I did not anticipate them to be able to, you know, play Counter-Strike at a level without Shiro being the deciding factor in their lineup. They were they good. Were, they were good. They were so close, as you said, to book a spot inside the final. And honestly speaking, I wouldn't have been mad if they did. I think they showed enough quality throughout this tournament to not only be excited for the future, but also even to book a spot in this final. It was the small, small marginals that made sure that they wouldn't be here. I'm loving the quote from Boomish coming out of this as well, saying, I can't believe how many fans were cheering my yeah. name in the arena. Like, dude, you, you know you have fans, right? Why People are watching you. He's been yeah. um, he Moving to on well. to complexity, obviously, as well. Um, again, slow start versus phase they did manage to push us to that third and final decider ancient wasn't necessarily you know as epic as last time we saw it go down but fair enough for complexity right beginning cs2 they're looking pretty strong yeah i feel a little bit sad because i do believe that most people will remember the clutches lost on sure. that last sure, match sure, sure, and sure. they will remember complexity turning into sort of a shell of themselves mm. shadow of themselves as these rounds were progressing and i think we should make an effort to remember more than just these clutches okay. sure they folded at the end they broke down there's nothing i I can do to save them. But again, the level of Counter-Strike they've played, and I think they have instilled themselves as a mainstay for playoff when it comes to CS2, and that we cannot take away from them. As a team, they've now established themselves as a top team. We can't take that away from them. As you said, Sydney was a very, very positive surprise. This tournament again, making it into the semi-final and taking a map off Face Clan in that semi-final, not too shabby. Another thing I want to point out is Elise. He's making a great case for himself to be back at his absolute best. We're talking one of the NA GOATs in CSGO. We're talking one of the best rifles we've ever seen in the game, he's now back in the conversation about being up there with the best of the best, top, and I love it. Top 10 in CS2? Top 10 in CS2 for now? Eh, uh, for now. For I now. think for now, for we, now. Could, we could for have now. that conversation. Yeah, we can have that conversation. Of course, the team that did, uh, you know, new to them in that semi-final game, uh, it was FaZe Clan. Yet again, we see them making it to a grand final, Jacob. Uh, and basically, any time they could put their hands on a trophy, they have done so. Maybe they could do it again today. Yeah, I think there's a good chance of, of FaZe, you know, bringing the fight tonight, let's put it that way. Whether or not they're going to win, we'll see. But I think FaZe Clan right now are playing some freedom Counter-Strike, some fun Counter-Strike, and it looks like, we know the rumors surrounding this lineup, it looks like it's not affecting them whatsoever. They're joining the server, they're doing the job, and they're having fun while doing so, and I absolutely love to see it. Still relying on an incredible death individually. This is what we're talking about for FaZe Clan. I don't think it is nearly a perfect Counter-Strike. That's not what they're playing, and nope. even the second map is a harsh reminder of that, but when you get to map number three, and then you have people back-to-back -back capable of capturing these clutches, hell, Counter-Strike is played in a few rounds here and there, and they have what it takes for these. Of course, their opponents laying in wait are, of course, Vitality. And it was a, a bit of a complicated situation yesterday because we waited quite a long time for Sphinx to actually warm up in that game. It took Apex and, of course, Zywe really standing tall on that first map. So uh, they're going to have a run for their money today, aren't they, Matthew? I'm interested to see if the individuals are going to be informed. I'll, I'll just put it bluntly. They have nothing to lose. They have goddamn nothing to lose. The test of characters and determination have been passed. You're looking yeah. at the way they've made it to the grand final. Harsh games, three mappers, disappointments here and there, losing their own map picks back to back. But they have shown that they're not willing to give up and they will try with whatever they have. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it flawless? Hell no. But they're ready to fight every single round. I think Apex said it pretty well in one of the interviews after the group stage that we're playing at 70, 80% and we're trying to make it work at this tournament. I think they're getting better every time we 
seen them play. But when you say there's nothing to lose, sure, from a team standpoint, I agree with you. But when you field Saivu, when you have the best player in CSGO, and arguably a guy that's going to be the best player in CS2 as well, joining up in a final, you can allow yourself to have expectations to a team like this. Yes, it took Spinks three maps to wake up yesterday, but hopefully he's going to be there from the beginning today. Because if so, I think they can match face clan on the individual yeah. output. And uh, absolutely no bias from me, but 100% pure British beef <laughs> joining the side of Vitality in Messi. Uh, we want to see more from him. He has big shoes to fill, though, because uh, he's replacing Majesk in this roster. Well, you know what? I hope it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, because I don't think he's earned the term beast quite yet. It's been very tamed for Messi. I think we're all yeah. hoping you included <laughs> to see a little bit more from him. It's been quiet, but his team has been able to carry him through to that point. I want to see some more from our CS Money play of the day. Of course, you guys voted on the Blast Premier Instagram to crown our best plays of the semi-finals here in Copenhagen. So, uh, Jacob, take it away. What's the third best one? Well, the third best one is uh, a bit of a clutch coming out of Boki. We saw a lot of good clutches yesterday. This 1v4 essentially killed complexity. We spoke about it. Third map engine wasn't that close, thanks to Boki pulling off a majestic 1v4. He did it perfectly well, forced Elisa off the bomb, but there was absolutely nothing he could do to win this one. Second is Axile, a man that I believe has been under a whole lot of scrutiny. And honestly, his addition here in Copenhagen has been better than what I expected. He kickstarted his playoff stint here in the semi-final with an ace, one versus five against Vitality. And this is the absolute best scenario for a player who's coming up on a stage like this. The fact that he can put himself on such a good position just wasn't enough even for his team. It's crazy a 1v5 is not enough to win player of the day, but that's because of Sairu <laughs> doing this lovely play with the nade, coming out there, getting a double kill, and then going back in for it. When Sairu is feeling it, when he's in his flow state, he is dangerous to play. This little flash coming in as well, well, guess what, Sairu, if you play like this today, it's going to be a hell of a grand final. And that's what I'm so excited to see, because, you know, it's been a question of Sairu warming up into CS2, and I think, you know, that's probably a little bit that he can give more, but we're getting close to that peak Sairu form, right? Is, that, I mean, is it a 1.38 rating, and we're still asking for a little bit more, Sairu? Come on, let's give us a little bit more, right? He's on 136, but listen, I think the criticism were warranted. I, the first few maps, and this is actually five maps, by the way, I can count it on my hands. The first five maps were not great, not to his standards, but here the reaction in Copenhagen, I think he's been straight back up into the category that is his own self. Well, we're going to see if it is enough to be bringing it to phase today. Of course, we can look at the schedule on the cards. One match and one matchup only to determine who will be taking this trophy. It's either going to be FaZe or Vitality. Now we go back to Sydney and uh, that's where FaZe kind of uh, started off Vitality's journey in CS2 very, very slowly. So of course some revenge on the cards for that, but not before we head to a quick break. But make sure you stay tuned with us because uh, Maui Snake has some very, very special guests over in his jungle. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, gentlemen. We've gathered you here today because you are the best of the best. We've assembled you to play a little bit of laser tag. We know you guys are skilled inside the server, but we need to find out if those skills transfer here to in real life. It's a simple team deathmatch, first of 50 eliminations. Gentlemen, best of luck out there. Locked and loaded. Move, move, move! Oh. Angle down. Oh, I died. Well, I killed you, Dad! Move back! Good to go. Watch his left flank! Left flank! Move, move! Double kill. Double kill! Go down. Go <laughs> Move back! Right <laughs> side! Go down. Nice. How do you reload? <laughs> Stop spawn camping! Got what? <laughs> this guy. Bro, I can't see my closer. Locked in loaded. Oh. He's a good <laughs> What? Triple kill! I have to tie my shoe! Guys, no way! We're getting pushed! Oh, oh, he's move up, move up! Oh, yeah. Everywhere. Tangle down. Ah. Ah. Oh, what the f***, man? You f***! Ah. Ah. Cool. No! Let's push him, there's two dead! Ah. Double kill. Triple kill. What? Triple kill! kill. <laughs> yeah. 
Just, just anchor. One dead. Locked in. The pressure glass. Pressure glass. Locked in. I died. Fox. I think we suck, guys. Oh, we both died. <laughs> Mission complete. We won, what? We won! Yeah! How many kills did we get? I don't know how. I got nine. Good nine. Nice. Let's go, cheers. Good job, guys. Yes, Thanks sir. for the carry. All right, gentlemen, so we're wrapped up. I, I take full responsibility for our failures, gentlemen. And thank you, Elgin Gonson, as well, for sponsoring this and making it possible. All right, I am with <clears throat> Lars Robola, the sports psychologist and director of performance for Falcons. You have worked with Olympic athletes. You have worked with a top 10 tennis player in the world. But in the Counter-Strike realm, you are a four-time major champion with Astralis and Vitality. And the first thing I want you to do, Lars, is talk to me about what your position entails and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Mm. Well, to cut it to the bone, it's about getting the full potential released on the individual and on the team when it matters. That's to cut it to the bone. But I think what's really interesting in 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 in, in CS or esports is is that it's a new sport, and by working in this for five years, and 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 compared to um, to traditional sports, when you're playing at that level where they're playing now, it's exactly as demanding as in any traditional sport on that level, on the Olympic level. The thing is that it's a new sport and what I'm working with is trying to get to, 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 to get the, the, the athletes, we, I call them athletes, the athletes to see themselves as athletes and not as gamers because if you create that identity within the, the individuals and the team, then they start being curio uh, curious on the small percentage to gain uh, to increase performance, sleep, nutrition, and, and all that. And by doing that, you suddenly have a 5% a, a percentage in advance of the other teams. So that's that's a curiosity. So that's a change I'm trying to implement. Okay, that uh, seems very comprehensive in terms of your responsibilities. I wanted to know, given that you've worked with two rosters that have really drawn the public's attention, both Astralis and mm -hmm. Vitality, how would you compare and contrast the groups in those teams? I mean, the um, uh, Astralis was a, a pure national uh, roster, whereas Vitality was a, a international roster. So there was this cultural dim dimension that has to be addressed. Uh, and they are both advantages and disadvantages in, in, in that. But I mean, also my method of, of working had also increased over time. So it's not that easy. But I think if I, if I compare the two teams, I mean, Vitality got further in being a team than Astralis was. Wow. And that was, I mean, and I think that was made us able to win the major and yeah. win Gamers 8 after uh, after after having uh, Shaha uh, on, on board. So, so it's it and and it's very much about creating that 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 uh, team uh, cohesion and and it's all about daring to be vulnerable trust and, and things like that and i must say vitality we, we made it a step further than than astronomers okay okay i actually have to dive into that <laughs> just a little bit because okay. that seems to outsiders to be such a ridiculous statement that mm -hmm. the the era defining Astralis mm -hmm. in total. Yeah, you were you were with them for three of their majors. They mm -hmm. went four in total, mm -hmm. and you're saying Vitality is a mm -hmm. better team. Like, what what does that mean? No, I, I think they were uh, they were uh, they went f uh, further with uh, enabling the t uh, team dynamics. That's what I'm saying. Because and, and it was a little bit more difficult because it was an international roster. So there were. There were the cultural uh, dimensions, the language and all that, that when things get heated up can create problems. But they had that bond, uh, that honesty and that transparency that whenever things rose up and before they got to, to be a problem, then we deflated it. Wow, okay. So now, of course, you've shifted over to the Falcons project. Mm -hmm. You and Zonic have both moved away from Vitality and are now there. What drew you to this project? Mm -hmm. I think the, 
the, the, the, the, the major reason for going into Falcons was the possibility to create something from the ground. And, and from the ground, I mean performance-wise. I mean, when, I, when I entered Astralis, I mean, there was a system that I had to adapt into and, 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 and shape or, or address. And the same with Vitality. But here, it's like, okay, we want that. We trust you. We trust your ideas. We trust your way of doing things. Make it work. So it's my responsibility to create a performance culture, uh, organization, procedures, and structure. So, I, and that's, I mean, that's, who wouldn't, who wouldn't say yes to that? Right, having that much onus in terms of the construction of a team yeah. that should have championship aspirations definitely should be Absolutely. a draw for Absolutely. quite a few people. So I've talked to quite a few sports psychologists, uh, performance coaches, I know that's mm -hmm. not exactly your role, or just kind of uh, people that are in this vein of work. Mm -hmm. And I think the, that still it's a somewhat nebulous concept in mm -hmm. terms of what are you actually doing mm -hmm. with a player? Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do with you is simulate a situation mm -hmm. where I'm gonna pretend to be a player and ask you a question in an emergency situation, and I wanna see how mm -hmm. you would handle this. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so let's say day of semifinals, I say, Lars, my girlfriend just texted me. She said she's leaving me. She's getting back with her mm -hmm. ex. I can't focus on the game at all. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My question to you will be: Have we talked to the team? Does the team know? I, I talked to the I talked to uh, my best friend, who's uh, the side anchor that I play with. But I haven't told the IGL or the coach. But you know, you know the um, the culture of the team is that we share everything, eh? Because we, we we need to have that openness in order to for the other players to have your back. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, and and yeah. with the, with the of course it's 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 a matter of having the focus. But as we've talked about so many times, when we go into the zone, there are things we can control, there are things we can't control. Eh? So now we're gonna what we have trained, what we have practiced. It's about for the next three four hours to have the focus on what you can control and the situation back home you can't control. So draw to that again that we have talked about and practiced, and you're pretty good at. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. Um, what, what do you think you would also prescribe for me in this case to do in those three to four hours? How do I get my mind off of it? Mm -hmm. If I'm just on my phone, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's about get, getting getting the phone away. The first thing would be to, to, to have a talk with the team. I mean, if the team doesn't know, okay. it's about because otherwise it will create a lot of fantasies because you're not, you're not 100%. Eh? And, and also what we would have talked about was, okay, it's absolutely acceptable that you are not 100% of your performance. You are perhaps 70% of your performance, your normally full performance. Eh? So the mindset that we have, that that's a culture of the team, is that that you can always you can always make 100% or add 100% of the 70% you have and that's enough as long as the teammates know Okay, well, thank you. That's incredibly practical advice. Uh, I'm now able to see a little bit more into how you would approach those kinds of emergency situations and I again want to thank you for your time Lars No problem. It was a pleasure. All right, I'm gonna send it back to Freya and the rest of the guys at the arena Thank you very much, Mario. Man, I love how he's just bringing the drama straight ahead of this grand final. Role Yo, play immediately. My, my, my girlfriend's broken up with me, Lars. What do I do? But he actually offers some like <laughs> sage advice because I think we overlook it, right? The fact that these guys are on the road basically, you know, over 200 days a year for the most part. They need to have that support network around them. And, you know, Lars is obviously offering that. Yeah, and the, I think the key word for me was vulnerability. And it's something he sure. put for very quickly saying, listen, you have to be able to share with the team and trust that people will have your back mm. in the good and the bad moments, right? And it's something that maybe, I guess our society, our culture doesn't really allow in general. You always have to be strong, you know, always have to give your best and you yep. never have to show any weakness. And I think he's got the experience enough to say, well, actually, no, you know, you can be vulnerable. You can share with your teammates and it's fine if you're not 100%. I, I like the words that I've heard from, from Lars here. I think it's quite interesting. I'll let you in on a little secret. During COVID, Lars was reaching out to a lot of people within esports as well, one, me being me, including, and he wanted a private conversation with me. And we had a talk, you know, where he actually you know, went through the same thing as he just did with Mario Snake out of his own free will, didn't pay him, no money involved whatsoever. Yeah. His sheer passion for just helping people and getting a feeling for what esports is like. He then used that, you know, all these interviews with me and everyone else to then form his career within esports. What Lars has done with Astralis, what I what he's most likely going to do with Falcons as well. That's something that he worked incredible hard for, and he did it out of his own free will and passion for it as well.
well, which is why I respect that man a lot. Can you imagine the notes he's got out of the pimp case? <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to see those afterwards. Lars, if you could share those with me, that would be amazing. Uh, you mentioned sure. Astralis there, though, and I want to go back to something yeah. that Lars said there. Uh, Vitality was a better team unit, I guess was his way of putting it, mm -hmm. than the peak form Astralis were, the Astralis that he was with when they won five majors. Obviously, he put some context to that and saying, hey, they were, you know, maybe had a better system, better support network behind them, but that's very interesting, Jacob. It is interesting, but hardly surprising for people anymore. You remember what happened when Device left Astralis as well, went into NIP. We heard some of the voice comms and Device said after two weeks of practice with NIP that they were already a better team and a more or better unit than Astralis ever were. Maybe Astralis were incredible good at producing results on the server. Obviously winning four majors is fantastic, but apart from that, it's never really been this glamorous house that everyone thought mm. outside. I mean, it's, it's about making the most out of what you have. And he said, national team Astralis with Vitality, you had an international team, you had a whole lot of obstacles to overcome as well from a cultural uh, standpoint. So yeah, he said they've made a longer way, they've progressed a longer way than the Astralis did, which is kind of a good shout out for the boys out there in Vitality. Yeah, some really great insight coming from Lars. And yeah, great to get Maui uh, getting some very special names under the microscope. And that will be continuing after this break because he does indeed have former player of Vitality Magis, also joined by Kirby down in the snake pit after this break. Hi, I'm Messi and I'm doing a tier list. Okay, so we've got maps up first. Nuke is S tier. So many different variations, so many different ideas on the maps and it's pretty balanced. And I'll go the opposite side, Vertigo, D tier. I think it's so bad. I quite like Ancient, I think it's got a lot of creativity. So I think A, uh, a tier for Ancient. Overpass as well. Always liked Overpass and think it's a, a strong map for me. So. I'd have to put it up there. Anubis, I'm gonna have to put in C. Pretty like one-sided with the T side. For me, I would put Inferno and Mirage in B tier. Nothing too exciting in both the maps. I think they're kind of the middle of the pack and yeah, I would uh, keep those there. Okay, so now we're moving on to the CS games. Source, I'm gonna put it S tier. So my dad used to play CS Source, so that's when I was a kid watching him play, kind of got into it as well. And it was so fun. I think even in like previous teams, I tried to play it in CSK, like the zombie mode, I think just in Source, just the memories and having fun like on the community server was just like a whole nother level to what we have in CS like now. Um, CSGO, I've got to put A tier as well. If I put it any lower, then I'd have to question what I've been, <laughs> why I've been playing it for so long. I guess that's 1.6. I really didn't like 1.6, to be honest. I guess when you're trying it years, years after, it kind of doesn't have the same feeling. But I put um, 1.6 in the C tier. I can't put it too low, otherwise I'll uh, probably get a bit of hate from everyone. So uh, I'll keep it there. Condition zero, D tier. There's no words for condition zero, but then CS2, I can't put it, I'm gonna put it in A tier for now. Got a lot of stuff to fix, but I think the potential on CS2 is like, a lot bigger than what CSGO was in terms of like the mechanics and how the game's updated and yeah, I think it's going to be by far the, the best game they've, they've brought out. Finally, we'll, we'll go to the, the team tier list course, first one, Vitality, S tier, nothing else to say. Phase, I'm putting them A, We've got to uh, keep our confidence for the, for the tournament and Phase have got to lose at some point, the streak can't continue. And, Heroic D tier because we're playing them first, so we're gonna have to have to beat them. Maybe the Danish fans won't be too happy about it, but gotta do what we gotta do. Complexity A tier as well. I think they've always been a team in like even CS:GO that were qu quite like creative and strategic. Navi, I'll put C. They have individuals that can really do well, but at the moment for me they're just like uh, still growing as a team. Astralis B tier. I think they've got Device who's goat contender for CS, so it's hard to know where to put them. And I think the same with this, the next team, which is Cloud9. I would have to put the same. Yeah, it's hard to say how they're going to perform without the AWPA. And they've also got like really strong individuals and it's hard to say for them. And then Nip, put them as C. I think they've made so many changes. Um, still trying to find their identity. That's it for my tier list. All right, we are here with Magisk and Kirby. You guys just came off of playing the show match, but I'm sure that's not the biggest stage you guys have been on, of course. Multi-time major winner, major winner yourself, KRB. <laughs> There's a few things that I want to address here. But first things first, we're in Copenhagen. You guys are Danish players. Mm. Looking at the state right now of Danish CS, do you think that it is better or worse than it was in, say, 2019? 
yeah, so I could say uh, when Mad Magis replaced me on Astralis, they kind of uh, won a few tournaments and a few majors, right? So all the way from uh, 2018 and until the pandemic, they won, what, three majors? Yeah, four, yep, yeah, three majors. So obviously the best, uh, like, iteration of Danny CS in terms of team was back then in Astralis, but nowadays we have maybe a bigger player of good players in Denmark who's playing internationally. Um, the problem, however, for me, I think is that like these big contracts, the salaries and these kind of things is making it hard maybe to make the, the all-star Danish team. So the good players are kind of split around. Yeah, I mean, it makes good sense. I think if you look in terms of results, obviously we had a lot, um, a lot uh, more results back in the days, but as Kevy also mentioned, it, <coughs> you know, it's different now because you have bigger contracts, you have people being locked in contracts and it makes it difficult to make the perfect team. And that's also why I think the Danish scene has been struggling a little bit um, in the terms of not having like two or three good teams, but maybe only like Heroic in the past few years, who's been really consistently good. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's quite difficult nowadays because people are getting, you know, they're behind the contracts and can't really get out of them, which is obviously fair. Mm. Okay. I wanted to also talk about another thing, which is that you guys have played under some legendary storied IGLs. Both of you have played under Glaive, for example. Uh, there's some differing members beyond that, like you played under Kerrigan, you played under Apex now. Uh, but you've both also played under MSL. So I wanted to talk about first the difference between Glaive and MSL, because I mean, a lot of people have a lot of assumptions, but only you guys really have the experience with them. So let's start with uh, MSL first. How would you describe MSL as a leader? Um, I mean, I'll be honest, it's been a long time since I played with him, um, but I remember it as a lot of structure and a lot of um, him controlling the game and, and telling everyone what to do all the time. And obviously that has its strengths and Obviously, also it's you know bad things, but I remember it as being really strict, and actually you have to like really follow his systems to be able to to perform as a team. That's how I remember remember it. But for me, Glaive, he's a bit different. He's a really good captain and he's a good leader, but he was a little bit more free in the sense that he gave a lot of space to the players to make decisions, and he also expected me and obviously also Device to take control and and help him in the sense that he wanted people to come with input all the time. And I think that's that was the big difference for me in the sense that I felt like I could be part of the, the whole plan and, and how I wanted to play as a, as a player, but also how I wanted to rotate around the map. But, but also on the T side, I had a lot more freedom to do whatever I felt like. So yeah, I think Glaive is a lot more um, in the sense that he, he lets players make their own decisions, but Obviously, to some degree, that if it's too much, then he tells people to calm down and and he tells them to take a step back and and still controlling the game in that sense. But it was a little bit more free for the players who had the the power, if you can say so. Could you? How would you? Uh, um, on him? Yeah, I would say they had both their strengths. Um, MSL was obviously more structured, as you said, uh, but he was also really hard working, uh, working a lot of hours like dedicating uh, a lot of his life into CS day and night. Uh, so if you were willing to sacrifice the same as him, the same amount of hours and dedication to the game, I think it was really uh, like very much possible to perform under his system. But he is like known for always having like one star player at a time, you know, it was Config, it was AC, then it was me, it was Magis, you know. He sort of uh, got one of like these young talents under his wings and made them ready for the next step, which I think where Glaive really thrived was uh, in, this, in the sense that he believed more in his players. He was less structured, uh, but his leadership skills outside and inside the server is just phenomenal, phenomenal in, in my opinion. It's just like he was born to be a, a leader, uh, whereas MSL was it also, but more in the sense of his hard work. Okay, cool. Mm. And what's really cool about this grand final that's coming up here at the Fall Finals is that you've played under Kerrigan at some point and you've played under Apex and they're about to clash in the server. So yeah, let's start with what do you? What was it like playing under Kerrigan now that we have this foundation for the other couple IGLs? Um, so I actually played with Kerrigan in uh, 2016 <laughs> when I joined Astralis. Mm -hmm. um, and back then it was not a good match. Uh, our players wanted a different play style because Denmark was known for having this very tactical and structured style from MSL, from Glaive. And Kerrigan is the straight opposite to MSL. There's no structure. You need to dedicate 100% your trust in his, his uh, calls 
Like I remember going into games and he would call strats we had never tried before. Oh my god. And this was so nerve-wracking for us. But if you know, like if you have the individual players as they have in face now, to do these kind of things. And also international players are more raised to like this sort of play style. But us like Danish players coming from MSL, we were just like sitting here and like, is this guy calling something we've never tried before in this important game? Um, so that was very difficult for us. And back then in Australis, it was not a match. And I think it has been really good for his career that he has come uh, internationally. Yeah. Okay, and, and how would you, yeah. I mean, obviously even, even for Kerrigan, I think um, from the outside, I think he's the master of controlling the chaos. And I think that's also the play style you see in face with all these individual players is that whenever they are playing good, they're really, really dangerous because they are really good at being in chaotic situations. And, you know, one guy roaming here and one guy lurking here and one guy taking duels on the other side of the map. and. And that is his, you know, playstyle and the way he's calling because that is what he loves. He loves the chaos, and you can definitely see that's also what the face players are. Um, you know, that's what they like. You have Brogy, you have Robs, you have all these individual players as Twist as well. That's like really, really good at taking duels and also are really smart in the game. So I think that's you know the benefit of having Kevin again uh, in face right now is that he is just really good at controlling the the chaos, but also making sure that his superstars are put into good positions. And I think, you know, with, with Apex, I think he's a little bit similar to, to MSL in some way because he loves structure, he loves knowing now we're going to do this and now we're going to do that. And um, I think the difference with him is that he, you know, when I joined the team, he wanted me to be more active in the team. He wanted me to speak like I did in Astralis and take a lot of initiative. And, you know, after one year, I kind of figured out that I mean, he didn't really want that for me. He wanted to control the game and he was really good at that. And that is his really good strengths is that he, he's good at like moving players around, uh, taking initiative and telling people now we need to move. You need to uh, get out of your comfort zone. We need to act, uh, be active. And that is what he's really good at. And also outside of the server, he is a really good captain. He's really good at taking care of people. Um, he's obviously also a really good human being. So I think he has a lot of strengths and I, you know, he gets a lot of hate on the uh, on the internet, and you know, being and having played with him for so long now, it obviously is it's tough to see that because from the inside we know how valuable he was to our success in Vitality. So yeah, yeah. Okay, one word answer before I throw this back to the desk. Who do you think is going to win today? Well, I'll be honest. I think Vitality is going to beat uh, Face today, wow. and I base that on the fact that. In previous history, I think uh, also when I was uh, with the roster, we always kind of had a good chance of beating them. And most of the times we felt in control of the game. And um, <laughs> got that right yeah. there. One okay. word, one yeah. word. One <laughs> word. All right, there we go. I can't say one word when it's, <laughs> no, yeah. when it's such a good matchup. Yeah, it it's really, it really, matchup. it really is. But we got to yeah. throw this back to the desk. I'm so, sorry. <laughs> so Freya, Pimp, Maniac, who do you guys got? I got FaZe. I got FaZe personally. Man, we need to get Majisk up here on the desk with us first. Some more. more of that juicy, juicy One insight. Word. Yeah, he's, he's got a he's got a future in, in this line of work. Once once he's done winning all the trophies, if he can turn one word into three sentences, perfect. You made for the job. But for Majisk, right? This is such an interesting position that we find him in because yeah, his ex team now up on that stage, potentially going to be lifting the trophy here. So what lays in wait for him, Jacob? Why did he decide to depart a team which has been looking pretty damn strong? Yeah, why, Jacob? Why? Yeah. That's, that's a Tell very me, good Dame. question. Maybe you should ask him when he was. There. <laughs> I think I think Majisk is looking for a new challenge, and and I respect that a lot. If if that's the motivation, if if you know going out there saying you did it with Astralis, you did it with Vitality, let's see if we can do it one more time with a third iteration in a new team. I think that in itself that's a a true test of character. Now is that you know feasible? Is that something that's realistic to have happen within the next six months? I don't think so. I think the quality of Counter-Strike, I think Face, I think Vitality, I think all these teams right now, even Astralis for that matter, with their roster changes, it's going to be incredible, incredible tough to come in there and build up a project from the ground and up. He yeah. said no to guaranteed success with Vitality to build a new roster. That I, deserves respect. I can't help but think that the relationship with Zonic is something that plays in here surely, as well. They, they, they have a bond. They've been winning together. They know each other. They want to work together. They probably share a vision as well. And it has to be played a huge role in this decision making. Well, we will be seeing exactly where Majisk is ending up very, very soon indeed. And we're also looking forward to the next season of Blast in 2024, where some changes are afoot. But don't worry, we've got an explainer to dive into all the details. The Blast premiere 2024 schedule is split into spring and fall seasons and culminates with the World Final. 
Here's how it works. 12 Blast Premier teams will begin their quest for victory in groups. Teams are seated, creating three groups of four. These teams play out a double elimination, best of three group stage. The three group winners go straight to the season final. The remaining nine teams will fight it out for three season final spots in the cross group gauntlet. The six teams that fail to qualify from the gauntlet will be cast into the showdown. There, they must fight to survive in a merciless single elimination format. They will compete against three invited teams and seven teams from Globe qualifiers. This year, each showdown is no longer split into regions, but is a single tournament played in Europe. Two teams from the showdown will secure their place in the season final to join the six teams from the groups. At each season final, the eight teams will face off in a GSL format, leading into a single elimination playoff bracket with quarters, semifinals, and grand final. The champions of the season finals will be joined by teams who qualify based on their performance in tournaments throughout the year, including the winners of the Copenhagen Major, ESL Pro League, and top-ranking teams on the leaderboard. These eight champion teams will come together for one last clash as they battle it out for a prize pool of $1 million. our last year here in the Royal Arena. But fear not, we're still going to be returning to Copenhagen next fall, just in a slightly different home. And you guys can get your tickets for that now if you want to be an early bird. Make sure you've got the best seats in the house because there's going to be some banging Counter-Strike going down. But that's making me a little bit emotional, Matthew. We're yeah, talking about yeah. six years being here. What's your favorite moment from, you know, the past years that you've been here? You've been here all but one, right? Yeah, it's been uh, six, six iterations as far as I'm concerned here in a uh, blast in Royal Arena. Wow, uh, it's kind of a news to be dropped out there. I mean, I know we got to be open to new experiences. I'm sure the forum will provide with great moments as well. Sure. But Gold Arena has always been a, a key moment in the calendar and not only in Counter-Strike, but in my heart as well. You mentioned favorite moment. I personally thought that seeing Heroic here win against all odds, yeah. against the crowd, trying to win the admirations of the fans. And there was something to it that I could relate to, that I could empathize with. So this was a great moment for me personally. Um, yeah, there was there were a lot of great matchups in Roll Arena. Yeah, I think you stole my moment as well. And then <laughs> I came to the realization that I quickly understand why Danish people hate me. Because I think one of my favorite moments was when Fallen silenced the entire arena against Astralis in that final. I think that was such a <laughs> deep moment, fun moment, and you know, out of body experience that he was able to do that in such a wild game so yeah sorry Astralis but that game that would always be imprinted in my mind yeah I think my moment has to be heroic as well and Kadian joining us up on the desk Do you remember for that winner's interview he's crying his mum joins us we as well cry. like Good. the emotionals yeah I'm crying I'm you're crying like, everybody is crying I have a tear jumping down my eye I'm trying yeah, yeah, for you, that was great oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ that was a really emotional moment well I'm sure the emotions are going to be running high in the arena today as of course we have a grand final another chance for a team to be lifting what will be the final trophy here in the Royal Arena in the blast side of things and it does fall to the hands of either Vital or phase. Now, let's start off big picture, gentlemen, because I think we're looking at two teams that are kind of coming in in a slightly different arc to CS2. We're talking about Vitality, you know, slowly building up into it. I don't think there was any lead up time at all for phase. They've been hot from the very first moment. They have, you know, Vitality, they finished CSGO by being the best team in the world. They won the, the Major in Paris, they were dominating, they were great, they were up there. Whereas for FaZe Clan, we said it and we've been talking about them many times, Matthew. It felt like a, I wouldn't say a dead roster, but a roster with no energy. And Tired. it took Counter-Strike 2 to come out for, you know, for them to feel that energy again. For them to enable Rups, Twist, all these individuals to once again play great Counter-Strike. So we have two teams, as we said, who definitely came into CSGO in different directions. Yeah, and I mean, FaZe have racked a bunch of maps in officials in CSGO. 
So they're one of the teams out there who have played the game the most, whereas Vitality, prior to showing up in Copenhagen, were boasting a measly five maps played in official. So I really thought that differential of experience would be a problem. Props to Vitality to be able to fight back and still, nevertheless, be in the grand final. What we're looking for free as well is for people to finally put their hands on a title yeah. here in Copenhagen, because it's only rain, it's only Broki in a different year, in a different roster that have been able to boast that feat, whereas Vitality or Kerrigan, for that matter, none of them will touch it. Uh, looking at the route that these two teams, you know, got here through, which one fills you with more confidence, Jacob? Is it the phase route of getting to this grand final, or is it the way Vitality did it? I slightly edged it towards phase. I think facing Cloud9 in a tough game, you know, facing complexity in a tough game as well, getting a, a win in those are, are very impressive. You can argue the same is the case for Vitality right here, but that, you know, free win against Heroic, against the dead roster, I don't really take much into account for that. And they came very, very close, losing to both Complexity and Cloud9. So yeah. if I have to give an edge, I'd give it to a face. I mean, face still have the fear factor, and I think you can feel it in the consequences of some of the rounds they win against their opponent. It's almost as if you're walking in a forest and then you just lock eye with a grizzly, and you're just like, damn, like that's it. Guess I'm dead now. Like, I guess I'm, I'm, guess I'm dead. I guess <laughs> I better get my affairs in order. It's not going to get any better. So face truly strike fear in opponents. Vitality had to fight all the way through. They had to show passion and heart, and they were in weaker positions in the past, but I have loved what I have seen from them. They're not moving into this game as favorites, but I know that deep within them is a champion somewhere behind you. Look at the route we are taking, beautiful. Jacob. I am getting goosebumps just thinking about the energy that is awaiting us in this beautiful Danish arena. I have no doubt that everyone inside that arena is ready to give it up for face, give it up for Kerrigan. They're well aware, we said it a couple of times, that he's never won inside the Royal Arena. That's one of the few trophies he's missing. He's won Cologne, he's won Katowice, he's won a couple of majors. He's never been able to lift the trophy inside that arena. Last year, Kadian took it away from him. This time, it could be Saibu. So many incredible legacies forged right here in the Royal Arena. We're talking SK way back in 2017, going back to Heroic 365 days ago. So now, it is time to find one more champion here at the Blast Premier Full Finals. Awaiting this grand final matchup. And just the first one here in the Royal Arena for Counter Strike 2. We got some FaZe fans in the house. And what about Vitality? It's always a little bit more for FaZe when it comes to this. But these teams, they fought hard to get here. FaZe trying to keep that streak alive and well, they did it just about once again. If they can go a step further, this could be the first time inside the Royal Arena that Carrigan can lift the trophy. You guys want to see that, right, for your Dane? But the most important thing is that we get some epic action. We get some close games. We get some overtime that could last for as long as FaZe wanted to last. But Vitality right now, with a new player on their side, has a chance to find glory straight away, bounce back and hit hard. Are you guys ready? 
No, no, no. Royal Arena, you can do better than that. Let me hear you! <laughs> Welcome to the Royal Arena. Welcome to Championship Sunday at the Blast Premier Full Finals. Vitality versus FaZe, a grand final for the ages, and one team will be lifting that majestic trophy in this spectacular arena. Jacob, I cannot wait to get the action underway, particularly as uh, we have quite a popular Dane, I think, who's going to be up here on this stage. Yeah, I see a bit of bias towards Kerrigan. You know, he has a lot of fans in here. Unfortunately, he's never been able to win the trophy, but I am damn sure he's going to do everything in his power in order to make sure. It's the beautiful grand final, honestly. You, of course, let's go, Finn. I'll say that's for you, actually. That's for you. Apparently, 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 ap
But if I'm Kerrigan, I'm pushing Vitality away from the comfort zone. You think you're going to play Inferno? Snap, I'm going to step on it immediately. That's what I'm expecting. He's a mind game boss, and we have the veto right here beginning. We're not sure who's going to start. Vitality, remove Ancient. And look at this Inferno ban coming immediately from FaZe. You ain't playing Inferno, not in my house. And a Vertigo oh. pick. That's the first time we're ever going to see Vertigo being played by this iteration of Vitality. Messi has never played that map oh, with that group man. of players. That's a big risk. It is a big risk phase. They go from what they know. Nuke has been their go-to. They've trialed in the error. No problem about it. And we just have a last map to find this Mirage. We got the maps. Man, that Vertigo pick. Holy hell. Uh, that could be a risk of Vitality. Magic. I don't know how I, I, I feel about this. Eh, they used I to be good on sweaty. it. They used to be good on it. With oh, Dupree man. back in the day. With Matrix. With Dupree. With Matrix. With yeah, Dupree, with so Sonic. almost half the team is now yeah. gone, Jacob. Well, uh, what a way to pull it out in a final. Yeah, well, maybe they've got some things cooking. I hope they've been cooking something. Uh, let's start off big picture for Vitality as well, because, you know, we end CSGO with them being the best team in the yes. world. They lift the last major trophy. Then we move on to CS2, and obviously it's been of a bit of an adjustment period for Vitality, right? I mean, listen, the first event has been cut short. It was also a, a bit of a complicated situation. Sure. Yeah. Majeska, a bit uncertain with the future at the time. They trip in the first game, and then they play phase. And they start the streak for FaZe. They lose in three maps in Sydney, and then we don't get to see them. They disappear under the radar. So a little bit underrated, underestimated, probably. And now they have an opportunity to strike back in CS2. Yeah, and if there's anything Apex would like to, it is striking back. That's a guy who live and breathe for playing on these stages. A lot of people inside this arena probably have a love-hate relationship to Apex, because he's easy to like, but also easy to hate. He's very, very motivating to sit around. You see his reactions every single time. He's winning around, losing around. He's one of the most animated players we have in Counter-Strike. He's from my money, one of the most entertaining players as well. But trust me, when you're sitting next to Apex on a stage like this, he's gonna make damn sure that you're motivated to win. We got to see so many emotions coming out of Apex yesterday, and it's obviously an emotional uh, adjustment period for them, right? You're losing Magis, yes. and Mezzi is taking his place. What's been your take on Mezzi Ooh. so far? I know it's a small sample. It's been complicated, let's be real. I think Apex said you don't replace Magis, and Mezzi hasn't. He hasn't replaced Magis. That's not what I expected from him either, but we're talking about 15 frags maximum in any map played in Copenhagen. It's been complicated for him, but what a beautiful stage to maybe just push that limit, that upwards barrier that we've seen so far in the full final. All the players on the server have won tier one trophies. Every single player on the server has been here before apart from Messi. This is by far the biggest tournament he's ever been in. It's by far the biggest game he's ever played, so the pressure is definitely on Messi right now. We're going to be putting the pressure on the shoulders of Zaiwu undoubtedly as well. He has been hella warming up coming into this tournament, and uh, yeah, we were just chatting about it. I think there's still a couple of percent left to give in that tank, Matudo? Uh, we would like to hope that there is a little bit more in the tank for Zywo. We're so greedy. It was very tempered in Sydney. I think he didn't really like the first touch in that cold water of CS2, but now we are right back to what we see and what we love from him. It was a beautiful game that he had in the semi-final. He had a couple of moments. We've already marked the spirits in CS2, and I guarantee you the Woo is ready for this game. Whether you're a Zywo fan or not, you got to respect what he's been able to accomplish. The past two years, there's no doubt he's been the best player in the world. Now, Counter-Strike 2, sure, in at I am Sydney. We weren't really sure what we would get from him. It was a bit of a lukewarm start, but the way he's been playing so far at this finals, it's been absolutely insane. Hey, yo, we got any Zywoo fans in the house? Yeah. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. How about any Carrigan fans out there? There we go, that's what we like to hear. Jacob, it means so much to this man. So many trophies in his cabinet, but this is the one on home soil that's evaded him, right? Listen, we said it before. Kerrigan have never won inside this arena. He's won majors. He's won at Cologne. He's won at Katowice. He's won everything that he possibly can win. But he needs you guys, I would assume, to win one more, one more big trophy before he can say he's won it all. Last year, it was Kadian taking it away from him. And I guess a lot of the people in the crowd love that. But this time around, it's Apex standing in his way. So you bet this crowd right here, they're ready for Kerrigan. Hey, yo, where's the energy at for Carrigan, you guys cheering for him? There we go, that's what we like to hear when we are almost ready to be getting this grand final underway. So let's welcome FaZe and Vitality into the arena. Royal Arena. The time has come. Listen to the echoes of the champions past. For the fallen, the sound of heartache. Legends have come to grace the stage. Only the worthy have held the trophy high. Eight challengers arrived in Copenhagen. Banners raised to answer the call. 
With every victory comes heartbreak. From every struggle comes resilience. In the face of adversity, overcome. Two remain in this fight for this. Now is where it counts for the love of the game. Apex, surely he wouldn't right down, sprays the oh, it's a no! It's an triple! Broke it trying to clutch with only four HP. The fact that the lead is low. Oh! Wear your colors with pride. This game is yours. Copenhagen, make some noise. the last major in CSGO and being on top of the world, things got shaken up. They were forced to rebuild pieces of the team, but the buzz from these bees never went silent. The identity still remains the same. The same passion, belief and focus as before. Victory has always been the goal and doing it on the first event with a new addition to the team, that would be bloody marvelous, especially with a Brit on the lineup. There has been no easy match, a lot of lessons to be learned, a lot of adjustments to make, but there is nothing more they can do. Everything must be put into action now. Is it time to put the crown on Vitality's heads? Spinks! Sharp, agile, effective, striking at just the right time. Zai Wu! One with the game and back into the code. Counter-Strike is his matrix. Apex! His passion is raw, his emotions can run high, but his focus is unwavering. Flames! Once the spark has been ignited within him, you can't put him out. Mezzi! Making the move for glory and now he has his chance. to beat. It all rides on this game. What they have shown us, what they have given us, can only be described as legendary. And now they are one step away from placing the Royal Arena crown on their heads. Brokey! The Latvian laser who won't crumble to the pressure. Rain! Whatever it takes, whatever is needed, the architect delivers. Carrigan! The genius on the server keeping his team one step ahead. Twist! The magic man of Counter-Strike. Can he pull another rabbit out of the hat today? Rops! 
He has the answers the team needs and he knows how to get it done. This is Fearless minds climb soonest into crowns and FaZe have looked fierce every single step of the way. And we all heard that roar when Carrigan walked out on stage. If there's anywhere he wants to keep the streak alive and lift a trophy at that, it's here in Copenhagen. It's actually sort of mind-blowing that no matter where Carrigan plays, he's at home. But he's actually at home. Yeah. That's the double effect. I mean, he's got the crowd on their feet. He knows how to play with them. He's already weaponized them and they've always been in a face cam. That ain't going to be different tonight. I loved it. I absolutely love it. Because as you said, it, Kerrigan, great at playing with the crowd. Apex, great at playing the villain. He's doing that all over the place as well. He loves to be hated, and I'm sure this crowd will give him one for it. And these are two teams that know the heartbreak of finishing second place here. We're talking about FaZe last year, Vitality the year before. But for the Vitality camp, I, I, I do want to get nerdy for a second. Where on earth are we going with this Vertigo pick? Where are we going to be seeing, you know, the setup of Vitality? Because we haven't seen this iteration, as Jacob was saying actually playing this particular map. We literally have no tape. We have no idea how Vitality is going to play Vertigo. We can only assume that there's going to be just a position for position change. You're going to leave Flames on the B side, have Sphinx towards mid, and then Zaiwu is going to be Maisie, of course, and his teammate mm. Apex on the A side. That's, that's all I can imagine. Mm. But imagine what it takes to pull up a map like this that you have never played an official to kickstart a grand final here in Copenhagen. I mean, listen, let's put it this way. FaZe are massively favored. Vitality have to put something incredible off the hat. Maybe it starts with a Vertigo shenanigan. It's a very ballsy pick coming out of Vitality. There's no doubt about it. You're saying there's no tape on Vitality. That's true, and that's a bit of an issue for FaZe Clan as well, because I know Kerrigan, he loves to dive into his opponents. He loves to find tendencies. He loves to try to exploit that, but he's going into the dark as well. So yeah, I'm not going to try to make the case that it's an advantage for Vitality to pull out this Vertigo for the first time ever, but it's not easy for FaZe either. And I'm hoping that Sphinx is going to be having a hot start coming into this grand final, because we're talking about a guy that back in the group stage of things, he was joint uh, top rated in mm. terms of him, Zywu and Electronic all posting a 1.38 rating. Yesterday, um, it was a little bit quiet from him. Nobody's questioning the level that Sphinx can put to the, to the server. The question is, do you have the mental resilience, do you have the mental sure. backbone to put it forth when you're on the stage? Mm. And in that regard, I think it was extremely important for him to have this third map in the semi-final, to have this moment where everything clicks and then you can look at your teammate and feel like, hell, I've done my job, I've done my part. You're not just carrying me, I'm not just a group stage player, I'm ready to put my best on the server. This was very meaningful to him because consider the, just the experience factor for half a second here. I saw Apex on that stage tell Flamesy when to start walking because he's been on the stage and he knows when to start walking, he knows the music. He told Flamesy, wait a minute, now you walk. That's in itself, that's the experience. They've been here, but not everybody on the Vitality side has. And that's a learning curve. It is a learning curve, and it's something they learn by doing. The only way you get to learn a match is that's by being on this stage. I'm not worried at all on Sphinx. I'm not worried for one second. What I saw during the major in Paris where the pressure was at its highest for Vitality, at home turf, they had to win that major. That was the one declared goal they had for the entire season. Sphinx rode to the occasion. As you said, third map yesterday as well, dominating play coming out of Sphinx. He's needed today for them to win, without a doubt, but I'm not worried for him. So what are the win conditions when we're looking on the side of FaZe? Because I feel like we could pull out basically any name and go, hey, yeah, they have the opportunity, they have the ability to be showing up, particularly when it comes to these big stages, right? These are big game players. Well, it's kind of interesting to actually, I believe FaZe is going to start on a CT side of Vertigo, and that in itself is strange. I think yep. we see teams usually go for the T side, be a bit more aggressive. Maybe they're just pulling the bluff. They're calling the bluff out of Vitality. They're saying, you guys, you don't have to play for it. You don't have the game plan for it. We're going to be fine. But I think for Rops to play as Rops has done is going to be a win condition. We cannot have a moderate performance the way we've seen it before. He's going to have to prove or rather deliver more than he has, I'm confident he will. I will put Rain under the spotlight. Rain is a player that can define games, that can decide games. We don't often put him up there at the same pedigree as Rups or Twist for that matter, but we've seen Rain be MVP at Majors before. We've seen MVP performances coming out of Rain left, right, and center. He's going to be aggressive, especially on Vertigo. He's going to take the fight. He's going to put it to Vitality. So keep an eye on Rain. Well, we've got our maps, we've got our teams, and we certainly have a crowd. So it is time to get this grand final in Copenhagen underway. Royal Arena, for many years you have given us fantastic moments. You have been a crowd with amazing energy. How are you feeling today?
You guys cheer for every kill, every moment in the game, everything that we love about this beautiful game. And right now, we have one hell of a grand final ahead of us. What are you guys thinking about FaZe? And I know there's some Vitality fans in here. The booze still come. Well, guys, for one last time, Royal Arena, Counter-Strike fans around the world, join me as it's time to bring the For the fourth and final time, we bring you a grand final to the Royal Arena. Denmark, it's time to make your country proud. Get loud! Let's get wild. Inside the server, outside the server. Royal Arena, Rops Holds, looking to give you the show. Kerrigan says seven map pool. I'll believe it when I see it. Brokey and Rops, they're gonna hold off at the beginning of this one, there was a good amount of support for that mid hold. Player back by elevator, so still layers even if Vitality want to come at this, but they're going to have to do it man down. I saw so much talk out of Kerrigan right before that game started. We have no idea if the prep ran this deep, right? Coming right into Vertigo is a big question. Vitality would never make a pick like this without some crazy anti-strat, and they must expect that phase would have no idea it would come through. They have to. You know, if I only had a six map pool, I'd be telling everybody seven maps. But, but that's a veto of champions. You know, that's something that you can only do when you're one of these elite teams to throw a curveball like this. You know it's going to be well prepared. This could speak volumes about x coming back into the lineup for Vitality. No Zonic to work with, big shoes to fill. Meanwhile, Vitality have just fallen silent ever since that first clash towards mid. A little skin shown, twists, falls back, but no panic. And I don't expect to see panic throughout this match. The experience on either side. Twist just can't quite get that headshot. Apex, interestingly, double kill back for him. His fresh mags come out, but he can't get anything over with the two. Toppled by his counterpart in Kerrigan. It is phase winning pistol once more. Yeah, that's uh, one step closer for Kerrigan. It's always going to feel like that. Map lead, round lead, whatever. Kerrigan's story on the line here. Actually, this is just the perfect final from the perspective of Vitality or FaZe for FaZe and CS2, but for Vitality's year as the team to win the only major this year. The team to come out of that as the best team of the year up until FaZe showed up as soon as a new game dropped. Yeah, right, because a FaZe that wasn't showing up towards the tail end of CSGO. Yeah, the way that, uh, I think Manny put it was, was great. You know, it was a team that wasn't, they weren't finished, but they were out of energy, right? They were uninspired for a while. Like, they always made games competitive. They always made for exciting finals. They didn't win as many tournaments as some of the teams that were dominating throughout 23, G2, Vitality. But they still always were a threat. Yep. But now they're inspired, energetic, straight up champions, undefeated, still. <laughs> so far in CS2, unreal. You'd expect to see something like that at the beginning of CSGO or the beginning of a new game because everything's so new. But with CS2 and the amount of people who are still good, there's clearly a direct transfer of skill from one game to the other, right? I mean, it's not like too much has changed. But the fact that they can be this dominant is so crazy. And I say that, but on a round with almost nothing, Vitality have already come up with two kills. Now, luckily for FaZe, there's not this immediate follow-through out of Vitality. They just pause for a second, get their hands on that M4, putting it in the hands of the young man, Flames. A few seconds still left. Another peek off of Kerrigan. Looking to dance with Zywu, but you gotta be cautious with that pistol in hand. Even if it's a Glock, it's Zywu we're talking about. And sure enough, right there, half the health gone. A single headshot, but nothing further. Sphinx will trade, what? and so will Flames. That M4 inches closer. What, there, no, there was no investment at all. Look at the amount of money they have left over, and they're in a two-on-one. FaZe were the embodiment of force by wins versus complexity yesterday. FaZe took it from their opponent time and time again. And now, just like this, we see a crack in FaZe's armor. A shot to the back of Twist, and he looks to disengage. I mean, he feels pinned. Wow. He's done. Vitality will come in with bare bones and pick up a second round win. That's a massive show of strength. That is so ridiculous. I mean, wait. 
the investment right there? When's the, last, when's the last time that happened to FaZe in the last few months? We didn't have a single SMG, no Galil's bot, no armor. No armor, right? A P250 maybe for Spinks? Holy. Now, FaZe coming into this are the favorites by the numbers. Anybody who put money on the game, of course, you're going to bet on the team that hasn't lost before, right? That makes perfect sense. But as we've seen Vitality power up in this tournament, in sort of the infancy of CS2, get comfortable as they were in CSGO, I don't think people would be surprised if they were one of the teams that could beat FaZe and end the streak. Looking back, it might seem like, oh, it was only a matter of time. We might be witnessing that right now. We'll have to see. Sphinx catching twists. Turned the wrong way. This is the buy-up. FaZe working with more than what Vitality had. And, well, Kerrigan can't manage more than just the one. Still enough to soften up this bomb site. And tidbits of utility to be thrown forward too. Low health on half of them. And Brokey lucky to be alive now. As Apex pulls off the site, those smoke grenades are gonna just be all that Vitality really need. Oh. Or so it seems. Flames will catch it through the side of the smoke and look to just continue this fight. But he's got to be careful because his position continues to be given away. The peak on the side of it, not going to stop him, and he will clear both. So Vitality convert, but it's still a good test from FaZe. It was, yeah, it was a good test from FaZe. And yeah, again, we're going to learn about how ready and how comfortable they are here on Vertigo. This is something that they've created for themselves, right? Seven map pool. They also That also means that people can take them anywhere. Their band could change all the time. I wonder if we look back on this. You know what I'll say? Most of the time in a video like this, there's a little bit of egg on the face of the team that took a risk. The team that starts to pick into Vertigo when Vertigo first comes out, the team that picks Ancient first, usually they're the ones who get trashed. It's usually the team that's already the favorite, that have a history of winning, that end up winning again. So that's why it's so... That's why we talked about it so much. Coming into this first map. Couple hand cannons for FaZe. Vitality coming into this map with a very tempered pace, right? Feels like if you're gonna take a swing at the current Kings, don't miss off the start. Saw that insane back and forth between FaZe and Complexity yesterday. Nine force by rounds back and forth. And well, right now, FaZe aren't getting that from Vitality. Vitality won't give them this early lead. No response just yet. And it's fair to expect Kerrigan to die with just the P250. Vitality hit the pause momentarily, throw up that wall of smokes, and Brokey just peels away from it, so nobody's sitting in a pocket to really deal an issue to Vitality. It's just all fine. Yeah, they win the space. There's no way to fight into that, so okay. Even with just a USP, it's worth falling back, and maybe they can get a kill later. Boost comes up, ring goes down. And there won't be any type of eco back. Saiwu so makes sure he puts everybody down. Fundamental gameplay says on the A site, you get to the corner of the top of the ramp. You get control of that around the minute mark. You have your smokes ready. Okay. Yeah, you can jump and shoot in this game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently. That's why Zawu loves this game, he said. Get top ramp control, minute left. Wall smokes on the A site. And, and if it's at that point and you haven't lost any players, you have a massive advantage. So that's what the T's are going to try to constantly repeat. Now, FaZe, they're smarter than to try those really risky re-aggressions on the ramp where they slide out. They're going to do that once in a while, but most of the time they are going to take the fight to the bottom of it. Because they understand that Vitality know what to do with the space. And here it is already. Three-pronged attack. Ooh, bit messy from Zywu. Doesn't quite finish his kill. Rain will pick up one. Oh, he got away. Damn. Manages to escape, surprisingly. Apex's nade is great for damage, so that's going to be a three wounded for FaZe. They know probably about two. Blind over the you, sandbags. You can see they're actually pretending to not be afraid of it. Apex peaks. Oh, oh, oh interesting. Double kill off the short play. One of the players who was already so low in rain, and that half health of Brokey that he'd softened up with his nade. And Apex has been having an actual hell of a tournament. Oh. Fourth Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Keep going. Fourth-rated player for them, right? It's just Mezzi still trying to find his form with this lineup. 
biggest game of Messi's career, as properly said by the analysts. Yeah. And honestly, it's not an event that right now he'll be remembered for. Yeah. His grand finals when Messi comes alive shows the potential that earned him this spot. I mean, huge shoes to fill for both the coach and replacing Magisk. Especially in the hearts of this arena. Mm -hmm. but we get another creep and crawl out of Vitality, a slow play. Guys, are Vitality still a little Danish? <laughs> Just a little, huh? You can claim them. We, came, we claim Americans all the time, so... Just a little. <laughs> You know, if it wasn't for Magus, would they even have a major? Would they even have a major? No Magus, no major. Molly's come through the site. And we're talking about a no utility retake for FaZe. We're talking about a no kill half so far for Twists. But they'll face Sight and they'll see nothing because Vitality are just again appropriately leaning back, giving tons of space over. No duels, no, no, no freebies for FaZe to try and flex this retake. And yes. with no kits either, they're going to call it quits. This Ooh. is a 4-1 early lead for Vitality and a map pick that is looking wonderful so far in the series. That's very impressive. That's very impressive. Uh, and uh, it's been a great tournament for IGLs overall. Whether it was Boomich on Cloud9, did some amazing things as both, he, he kind of came in as a Naphany, as somebody who was Naphany before Naphany even existed, really. Just to come back and show that he could still play at this level. He was one of the guys who shot Zaiwu in the back, flanked him as he fell back out of a position, who's outplaying the best players on the other side of the server and made Cloud9 look like they could make it to this Grand Final. Got close, in fact. Then you have Kerrigan, who has also been pretty damn good 1v4 yesterday versus Complexity. Apex, as you just pointed out, has been fragging, and JT, JT is the number one out of all of them. An unreal uptick comparatively. So it has been a tournament of fragging IGLs. Maybe they really are more than dead weight. That's what I'm talking about. You know you love Counter-Strike. Two. Who doesn't? <laughs> In uh, Maui's interview with Magisk, that was, and uh, Kirby. So much interesting insight into IGLs and what they bring. And, oh wait, hold on. No, okay, yes. Robs, that's a quick one. All Execution, right. oh. make it a double. He's going home with that. Unscathed. Not even a scrape on the knee. 100 HP for Rops, and he's out with two on a rifle. Yeah, he's trying to strike the fire starter. Get himself into a round. Get FaZe closer to this early start from Vitality. To do it with a bunch of bodies alive as well. That's what they're banking on. We've seen oh. this before. Vitality responding with the B ramp hit after they lose a couple players. It's the strap from the pistol. Robs just tucked along wall, will die to Zaiwu. Flames efficient trade frags, and he is off to the races. An incredible start for the young man. Okay, one on two situation. Can plant the bomb. Let's see how much space they give him. They might have to respect this. Flames, eat your heart out. You've got a full minute left over. This could be the different difference between domination and destruction here for FaZe. If they could pick this back up and pull back this half. But he's got close to an even chance of being able to change those odds. At the very start of this event, Apex goes on record as saying, we will not replace Magisk, so the young players have to step up. Flamesy, under the magnifying glass now, at the 25 second mark, he is on the opposite side of the map. And well, FaZe have just found out. So he's gonna have to lean back, bank on this AK, try to hit those headshots. He could have played passive, and he still can. Options open with a flash to work with. CTs have the kit on Kerrigan, so his hands will be busy as this retake comes out. Will the trades be good? Will they be needed? He tucks in. And as he sits back, he hears that first tap. Kerrigan, like we said, hands busy all the way, all the way, all the way for oh. Kerrigan. Oh. He will clutch and kill. Wow, the stick out in the open. They cover the ramp. It was planted for both, so we thought, okay, they're probably going to tap it and try to push. That's a fair call to make. There's a part of him that wanted to go back there in the CT spawn. And he went for the standard play. It was still a 1v2. And they're almost lucky to get a bomb plant considering they started this round out 5v3. But I think there was a world where he wins that. Stick just in time there for Kerrigan. Pros do not fake. Wow. 
Fly back has an MP9 on Twist, and it's a faster pace. We haven't seen this Ooh. kind of tempo. Flangsy comes around, and with the pressure off the flashbang, Baze, it's a one-off round potentially queued up. Yeah, that's a round one. 1v1. One but a sketchy road ahead. If they suddenly they get reset. They forgot about this. This one comes down to timing. Brokey strikes a single Ooh, frag. Nice denial out of Flamesy. I mean, his headshots are there. The trade frags are good. Did the same thing back to the B site, but Rain has that intuition to check for the mid flank and Sphinx's lurk will get punished. Yeah, it comes in early. That could have been the round done, obviously, if he gets that kill, but now it becomes a lot more tricky here for Vitality. As they try to group back up, it's an initial peek from Apex that can't even be traded. But that little delay gives Flames a chance to come back. Yeah. Three kills on Flames again, and he needs another double to ace. He chases the elevator kill, that's oh. four. Flames trying to set FaZe on fire, and he's gone. Another chance to just eject out of this bomb site and try to clutch. Lost it in the last one, but he's gone. He is out of there. And as his bomb goes down, it is a very quick approach for Robs on 45 HP. Oh! But his head, and that is two failed clutches out of flame. Wow. The aim is there, the close is not. He was nearly the ember that erupted, and instead, he's extinguished. That was so close from Flamesy, but man, you gotta feel for him. He's the guy who got four kills in that round, plus it turned into another clutch from him. Sphinx could have, again, won the round right away, but if he had waited in that situation in a four on three, yeah, he was on a pretty fast timing, but if the attack came in at least a little bit up the ramp, they don't check the flank, then they have a fair trade at the guys coming up the ramp to fight, plus Sphinx to come in later. That feels like more of a lock, but good on Rain for checking his flank. There was no one there in mid, they were worried about it, and they didn't get tunnel vision. And that's something that you can always count on phase for. So I think even if they get told instructions, they're still going to keep in their mind an inventory of options that can take place. And they're, they're five fingers on one hand. Sorry, taken. <laughs> that was number one on the things of list that he loves, right? Yep. Zaiwu, what can't you live with? He was asked. Yeah. Girlfriend, Counter-Strike, and oh. Mango Bubble Team. Not even water. What is this guy? Molly and a smoke exchange towards the B site. As much as we can sit here and sing Flames' as praise, 15 Ooh. and 4, it's Rops, 10 and 5. Cooling off his opposition, Zaiwu. Easy opening pick. A little peek out of rain that gets punished. You know, we saw Apex's spray get a little far away from it, kind of sloppy, let the players move around top ramp, but you put Zywoo on the big green scoped up, and no movement comes for free. 5v4 is not enough, though. We've seen Vitality get to a good position early round here in these last couple. Phase no, they can escape. Start boosting their economy if they pick up a decent round win, and they have found options to get active on the map. Aggressive push here out of Robs, just trying to find his victim as Kerrigan has to lean back. Apex comes around the corner. Oh, and Kerrigan, he can't react to it. Apex tries to go one further, and he will get away with a second frag. Whoa. Dragging in-game leaders, folks. And they caught the flank. So Robs, well, sorry, Robs got the kill, but now they know where he is. Easy for them to turn attention back. Sphinx can just anchor this push, and it's just far too daunting for Robs to try to get this going. Damn. We saw a single player alive for back-to-back -back round wins out of phase, mm -hmm. and now they've lost the next one with two standing, if they're lucky. There's a chance Vitality can come clear out these players, and then we're talking phase with real issues. This is a moment where, like, just to compare it to another team, when I talk about Heroic and Cadian, where they would make an effort to hunt down the remaining players the and board. absolutely wipe, wipe the, the money clean. That's not Vitality style. It's more think about our own money first, play very fundamentally sound Counter-Strike and keep an advantage, never give it away, keep all their utility into the next round and try to win again from just a slightly more dominant position. So those two guns could matter here for FaZe. It's actually their only lifeline now after winning the last two rounds in a 1v1. So it looks like the 5v4 is finally add up. I mean, the early and mid rounds is all vitality. Mm -hmm. In closing, of course, players are going to pull out some clutches, deny some clutches. They can expect that. I think that's where Apex just wants to say, turn up the velocity. Let's end this round before it gets to a nervous point, past the 40 second mark, one or two players alive with lethal nades. 
let's explode on him. It's an element of Apex's game that luckily hasn't gone away. There was a time with Vitality struggles where I would watch Apex and it felt like he had something better to get to. Felt like he needed rounds to end fast and then giving away openings, particularly mm -hmm. on Vertigo, towards short side A ramp. Oh, spamming through the smoke, getting shot Just back, yeah. All the time, taking yeah. risks he didn't need no, to. No, he's so much more responsible now. Yes. And we're talking about that evolution in one year, you know? And that's Apex, who was a top 20 player in 2018 as an entry fragger, one of the best players in the world as an individual, had to drop off, learn how to IGL, come back, and is now both an elite IGL and a very reliable individual player. Particularly at this event. Putting his frags up as... There's the peak out of flames. He gets the better of the B site. We haven't seen early success at a B site. It's been ramp hit, ramp hit, sometimes mid lurk. And now with that instant kill, I mean, those two rifles that Twist and Rops are able to save, they're nowhere to be found. I, I need to know the conversation around picking Vertigo, right? Because we look at Mezzi's stats on this map, he doesn't even have a good time. Like, even thinking about his maps on Fnatic, and just looking at his stats, I would say he would not say this is one of his, and he's zero and six right now, so. Yeah, just like Twist. Doesn't even like the map, maybe. So whose idea was it? How did they come to this? Obviously, that's something that couldn't be spoiled before the match began. Afterwards, would love to know. So the two guns will just get grandfathered into the next round and... Oh, you brought up Twist. Yeah, true. Yeah, sorry, I hate to do that to you. Yeah, I mean, you are also Canadian, by the mm -hmm. way. But That's true. Yeah. I always knew the French didn't see themselves as one of us. Man, I can't believe we are nine rounds into this game and Flames is sitting at 16 and 4. I mean, he's gotten entry frags. He's gotten yeah. an entire collection of trade frags already. Oh, yeah. He could have put two clutches to his name within these 16 frags. Yes. I mean, it, we're talking about just a total takeover of the server from this young gentleman. This is a grand final. That is, this is something that Fame's going to remember for the rest of his career, playing this no well doubt. in a grand final. And when we think about, of course, what Magisk and Dupree had, it was some of the most winningness careers in the world, right? Yeah. The history books were full of their names. Flames has only lifted one trophy in his career mm -hmm. back at Gamers 8 early this year. Yeah. Again, inexperience versus Magisk and Dupree. And on the big stage, the biggest criticism of Flames throughout the start of 2023 with his tenure back on OG was that this kid goes quiet. Instead, he's got the arena oh. silent. Sphinx and Flames combine. I love the third HE. The commitment there, because you can throw two and do 90 damage. If you throw two perfectly, you do 100. But three, you could be a little sloppy and still kill him. So another 5v4. And that's a call out. brokey has been there a couple of times. Oh, that's noise being made. Kerrigan's probably going to die, I think. Why well, I was only waiting out this timing, but yeah, he's... Oh, he's going to miss it, actually. He's going to leave the scope. Kerrigan scoops that up. Oh, wow. I thought for sure he was dead after that drop onto the ramp. This is big for FaZe to bring back this 5v4. And time is against Vitality now under 50 seconds. Sitting on it. He saw the shadow coming, so he kind of oh, jumped the gun. Shot early. Now they're on high alert. So Kerrigan getting a little antsy as he sat there on his own. They heard one above running the rotation into the site. And 35 seconds, still looking composed, yeah. but the sands of time starting to fall through. It's a pack of players on ramp. And that ever-present lurk out of Sphinx, which catches twists for his seventh death with no kills. And then Sphinx can even take his sweet time. He'll compromise the back line that is on A. Eventually, Rain's got to try to get out of there. And this is where Sphinx is best served, right? Getting to this point, but not going farther. Oh, and oh, Rob's tries for flank the flanker. Yeah, but a second before Rain gets caught. He's also got to walk. He's also got to walk, and there's no way to call that out. So Sphinx, domineering presence with the one kill. I don't think he cared about getting anything else. He knew that, that he was just going to bleed the time out the clock. And Vitality, that was, that was great. Shadow's working in their favor, both inside of mid and right there against FaZe on that flank lower. Yeah, it goes both ways. Now, you got to be careful down there. In general, that's not a great place to hold from. Even if we go back to CSGO, when you take bottom ramp control as a CT, you don't want to leave people down there because that big box, people try to stand on top of it. There's no other angles you have to clear, so it's very easy to fight against you. But for Kerrigan, this is a new situation. He just killed Robson at, or Saiwu at an interesting timing, so he thought, all right, maybe if I die here, even if it's a little later, I could take a risk. But 
it'll be so late that if Ian and I get one kill, Rain will do the rest of the work. There won't be enough time for the exact. But Vitality are sort of just in time at every step of the way. And they approach pretty carefully. They didn't just start running right after that frag. Miss flick out of... No, oh, no it isn't. Not a miss. <laughs> oh my god. All right, bending bullets. Just trying to stop Flames' terror in this first half. So I was going to be looking for sweet revenge versus Kerrigan. Nearly drawing back that five versus four advantage out of the hands of Vitality last round, but I mean, FaZe, it's a pistol win and it's two 1v1s. Mm -hmm. That is what makes up this three round half so far from them. This is a, a very interesting spot for FaZe. Like, look at the map for them. It's just like a brand new complexion at the moment and a lot of it has to do with ROPS. Trying to peer over smoke, won't get a glance at anything. This consistency in Sphinx's top mid lurk, though, Rops is on high alert for it. May Wait. have just seen a sliver, oh. but as he tries to chase it, Sphinx gets back into the corner. Oh, so this works badly against FaZe, right? They're actually starting to regroup towards the other side of the map. Those two mid players are going to be locking horns. And as Rops is preoccupied with bodies over on A, this B site is so prime for the taking. They're going slowly. They're, they're, oh no, another punish out of Zaiwu, and now they know. That phase are so scared of this coming in, but look at them. They're actually still on the ramp. They really believe there has to be someone back here. Reigns at least got a spot to try and hold, but he too falls with nothing. And while Brokey gets flashed off the angle, it's just too many members of Vitality and too tightly knit. The pack and the push from Vitality is unstoppable. Zywu's gonna get tagged up and Rops will kill one at the very least. Man. It's 12th round next. It's money on the line. I mean, this AK could end up being important but nothing's more important than getting some damn round wins and Robs will flicks up and kills it. Hold on. Look how far away Sphinx is now. Of course, Robs doesn't know. 1v4. We saw it from Rain. We saw it from Brokey. And we could damn well see it right here from Robs. One tap and the peek out of Sphinx. He's got the cover from Green. Robs oh. can't end it this time. Oh. Not versus Vitality. Sphinx could have actually given that away. I mean, it, he was so far. From the B site, Rops on the flank did something nearly incredible right there with those two kills. All right, let's see it then. Oh, yes. under five seconds, you defuse the ball. Village. Meanwhile, blood spills inside this B site. Dude, that was a weird round. Like, it seemed like there was a tacit understanding from Vitality that they knew they were up. Pays were flanking. They were coming to reclare a ramp. They were totally scared about B, but they never wanted to take it. So, there kept becoming these opportunities for them nice to get flash. back into this. Yeah, Rain oh. sets up Kerrigan wonderfully. So, Kerrigan and Zai were going back and forth. But we've seen the response that comes out of Vitality when they lose that A hit. It's the B attack again. Man, I love FaZe's comfort here to try to push down B at the same time as A, even though they got what they wanted. They're looking for the 5v3. This could be a big one for Rops. We haven't seen a player in this position. It gets scary for him, though. He could get spammed. Oh, he at least gets burned out, dropped to 23, but he escapes. At least around the corner, he's got two teammates to keep him standing. Leaning on their shoulders. Wow. Flames takes off the heads. Goes back for second <laughs> servings and just disengages. That is a 20 kill half from Flames at least. Rain will slide forward and clear Apex off the corner into the 3v3 as FaZe continue to just try and get something. A hope, a chance, <laughs> and there's Mezzi. His first two kills of this map. Finally a little impact from the Brit. Brokey tax to clutch yet again. And you can see the odds. So incredibly to Vitality's favor. They decided to take Inferno out of this series, but maybe Vertigo will be the bane of their existence. Brokey looking for an entry, looking for a jump. And as he gets into it, Sphinx will waste no time. This is a Vitality that's not playing games. They are making a sprint for the crown. What's going on CS Money fans? We're about to have some fun with the Ecos play. And it's here at the Blast Premier Full Finals where I'm expecting these guys to make themselves a cosplay of a CS skin. 
amongst all this stuff on the table. Whoever goes first gets the most picks of stuff. Whoever goes last, unlucky, you're left over with the scraps. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> Okay, first up is you, Maui. What are we going for? So I'm gonna be the Empress AK. Yes, okay. Uh, we've got a crown already here. This is a perfect red for it. What are we going for here, We're going for the monkey business. Love bananas. Always last. Pimp, what do you see on this table of the way you think, I want to make this skin? We are time restricted right now, James. No, I don't believe that. Take well, your I time. am time restricted. Why? I don't want to be here anymore. So oh, what wow. I'm going to do is I'm going to speed run this. Okay, we're going to put that on because it's just like the butt of the gun or the hilt of the gun. I don't know. I'd like to get you involved with this, James. I'd like you to blow up this banana whilst I do some artwork. We're going to put this on. This is the crown. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. Like pinch it. I think a lot of people will resonate with what I'm doing. I, I think it's diamonds, technically, that are on the Empress. We're working with what we've got. I'm gonna stick these onto the shoulders. I'm gonna put on this shirt. Oh, oh. Ooh, maybe one of these. Right, I'll try to put paint. Why is the brown coming on? Oh, the end part. Damn, I haven't said what I'm doing yet, right? No, I don't know what this is. This is a beautiful skin. Well. I think I'm gonna use all that paint. Um, there is a little circle at the bottom of the handle which mm -hmm. says five seven on it. We're gonna tape this to myself. I think we're gonna have glue. Pretty sure that everyone out there has opened quite a few of these. Where are you gonna put the banana? I'm gonna tape it on. <laughs> I'm terrified this is gonna get on my sweater. Pose, yep. We're happy with that? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Um I'm done. That is it. That is all your effort you're putting into this. A sandy. A cheap sandy. <laughs> So now we have our three designs for the skins here. Creativity, looks, and effort put into it. Effort and creativity, zero for you, Pimp. But looks, because you look so good where you're wearing your shirt, we'll give you an eight for that. Failure is your middle name, so... Move on. Try it. Creativity, I'll give you a seven. What? Yeah, yeah I think that's fair. Effort, you're only getting a three. The look is very creative, so I'll give you seven on that. 17, I'll take it. Yeah. You, the crown just fits you so well. So As it does. We'll say a seven for that. For the look and the feel, I think we deserve an eight. Effort that you put into it. All right, I'll give you five more on top then. Okay. He did bribe me a little bit. Thank you so much. Maui's the winner overall here. These guys did their best. They put some effort in for sure. But you guys at home, I know you can do better. Use the hashtag eCosplay and show me if you can make a sick skin and maybe make yourself into better than any of these three bugs. You can win yourself a very expensive skin. Go check it out. Good luck. Show me what you got. We jump back to the server with Twists still sitting on zero frags throughout this map. Ooh. This is an unexpected turn of events out of phase, but... It's maybe, also an unexpected map. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe so because we find ourselves on Vertigo. Their confidence in all seven pools has been tested this evening to start this series. But if we look at the match streak that FaZe are on at the moment, yeah. they have lost a map in the majority of those matches. Ten of those matches within the streak always feature FaZe going to a third. Mm. Now, a beating of this level, a whooping 9-3 half to kick off Vertigo, this could be a whole other test of the mental. And, and you could say that this is a, a curveball, but FaZe are supposed to be a seven map team. So they claim. Oh, that's a good player to get down low. Oh, through the wood. Whoa, a bunch he came of damage. back to help wow. kills. Two more for Flames. How does he manage to get himself into every fight? And then Mezzi yeah. given a chance to lock it down. That's a full house on the B site. Whoa. Just a slaughter of FaZe on the approach. Dude, this is going to be a career best map for Flamesy. No doubt. 22 and 6. Unreal. This Look at is this. stepping on the gas right now. That's unreal. He was down to 3 health before that happened. You know, Apex is going to pick him up after the map's over. Man, and we started this out round 2 after Phase 1 the pistol with Vitality winning with a buy. It's very similar to this. It's actually astounding to pull that off on T-side Vertigo. What the hell? So having to concede this one, giving themselves a singular chance to keep Vitality off of 12 rounds with the buy that'll come in the next. Could be bolstered by a bomb plant. We saw Vitality pull it off with basically Glocks, but those nades find their home. Rain blown apart. Pressure goes down the ramp to confirm there's nothing else. Mezzi could be tested. And again, a bomb plant here is a slight win for FaZe. But he leans back, allows them to get ever closer. Gets his first few kills in the final round of the first half. 
more than doubles it in the following pistol, and Mezzi is just going to go ahead to rip two go players on. off the push. There's another one on the box, and he's dead. This is Vitality to 11, wow. and FaZe still in shambles. There's so many interesting storylines, first half of the year, second half of the year. Players, IGLs, who are both playing well, who have done a lot and evolved um, star players who are getting back into the comfort zone. Rob becoming the best player in CS2. And Spinks as well, who has just continued on in his form. He has been completely consistent throughout the year, ever since Rio took place. I am Rio, I should say. And uh, has never left Zaiwu's side since then. And he is, like, Robs and Spinks are the best examples of, of traditional lurkers, a classic in their roles. But Spinks is even more of a purist than Robs is in terms of how hard his lurks are every single round. And that style of play, people thought was going to disappear after early days get right era into happy into some players who are known for it doing it every round but they've actually brought it back in a modern day of cs when demos are being watched like demos are being parsed you know and it, by the dozens at the same time to figure out what kind of rotations you make he's still pulling that off today coaches analysts assistant analysts yeah so many eyes on every single one of your moves inside the server, and those moves could be coming to a quick end. Remember, the one gun round phase have to work with, and it's going to need to be Kerrigan to at least get some pressure off A. But he can't manage that second frag. Apex pulls back with the M4, Ooh. and he lays down lead, lays down the law. Vitality will not fumble inside sight. Apex oh. will not be bested, will not be moved, and Brokey the next oh. to falter. God damn. 12 3 from oh. Vitality. We could sit here and praise FaZe and their ability to come back map after map. Yeah. This is the biggest test that their streak has seen. Well, at least they won't have to stew in it. This map could be over soon. And they could talk about how they, oh, they didn't expect the veto. It's fine. We're going to move on to the next map. But uh, this is a feather in the cap of Vitality and for Apex as the captain to see himself playing well as well as seeing one of his young guns play this well in a grand final in front of the biggest crowd so far that he's played. He'll be a proud, proud man. Final chance for Neo to get in. The last time FaZe as an organization won a trophy here in the Royal Arena, Neo was inside the server. That's nuts. Trying to tap into that legacy here. I think Cold Zero was the IGL, but we later found out it was Nico. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Respect for supporting them when they're down. That's when they need it the most. The triple Galil play. And the energy they've kept all the, all the way through CS2 is... We're only X number of rounds down. They've only got nine. It's the one of the biggest comebacks that they have to make. But I think one foot in front of the other is the strat. I really, you know, this is one of the teams we're not going to write off in this situation. We could just sing Vitality's praises because goddamn, what a start to the day. But I don't think they're going to be any less focused just because they're on 12th. Just the perfect moment for Flames to put forth an astronomical amount of kills. Nade early as well towards middle, just a warning sign of the defense that is in position. Spinks, well, doesn't even get a chance to shoot because Zywu just rocks him. And then Spinks will pull off Brokey. Mezzi over towards B. This wow. is a cataclysmic failure wow. on the behalf of FaZe. A map that we don't know them for, but a map that they will want to forget as fast as possible. Vitality have shown up tonight, and Vitality will find themselves one map from hoisting a trophy in the Royal Arena. Don't go far. The Grand Finals starts next. And we thought this was a risk to pick Vertigo. I thought this was a curveball, a shenanigan. It turns out Vitality have proved mastery on this D side. So much in control with the rhythm, the mid round, the calls. If it weren't for a couple of clutches, this was beautiful from Vitality. That was a bit of a surprise. You know, the pick in itself coming into this matchup surprised us a little bit. First time we ever get to see them played with Messi on the lineup. But as you said, the tenacity coming out from Vitality, the control, the pacing, the calling from Apex as well. And then of course, some individual performances that we're gonna highlight throughout this segment. 
this map had everything Vitality <laughs> needed to be the perfect start inside Royal Arena. And sometimes in a match like this, you need a good start. You need something to kickstart that fire within yourself. And this is what happened in round two. We we're talking about a Vitality who merely update pistols, not even Kevlar on site. And still, it's about to work out for them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You look at the round, round two, and you see the buy coming into it. You'd think to yourself that this is a perfect opportunity for FaZe Clan to get off to a good start, but they wanted it differently. And it spares out of control. From round yes. two, you're seeing right now into the meta, we're looking at a Vitality that just straight up dominates the following rounds, straight up dominates the T side. You spoke about Apex calling. It was absolutely beautiful. You see Twist in this position. There's only so much he can do left by himself. And at this point, honestly, I didn't think it would be Vitality just controlling the T side. But as you can see in the round distribution, that was the case. These were already the first signs of a couple complications that FaZe had on the defense. But they played the way Flames played. The way FaZe played, rather. Very aggressive, very in your face. But they opened gaps. They opened duels. And you know who loved to take these goddamn duels? Flames. What an incredible way to kickstart the grand final to have a 23 plus map kill here in Copenhagen. This was fantastic from Flames. That is one of the most impactful t sides Vertigo I've ever seen anyone play. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. Sure, you may say that the game wasn't that close and this clutch, he could technically have won a well, but apart from that, he played a picture-perfect first half. You said it. He was willing to fight constantly. He was willing to go for the duels constantly. He was willing to create all the space needed and honestly speaking, he was the only one needed for Vitality. He was single-handedly demanding respect on the server, single-handedly dictating rounds after round after round after round. Oh my God. Some of the best I've ever seen from Flames. Look at all of these entries he was finding on B. And you mentioned Clutch, Jacob, and I think we should take a second to consider. He missed the mark. Two clutches yes. almost back to back. We're talking about a one versus two where Kerrigan pulls along the full defuse and a one versus one against Robs where he sort of mismanages the angles, mismanages the timing. And this would have been enough to crush down a young spirit. Many other players would have went back to the shelter after losing clutches like that, but not Flames. All that momentum that he built on at the beginning of this game came shining through and he just poured it on them. If you're Apex, you must love it, right? They came into this tournament, they came into the fact they lost Magic and he said something along the lines of, someone else will have to step it up a bit. We cannot replace Magic. You can't replace one of the best players in his role ever. Messi's gonna do his absolute best, but a player that stepped it up and helped out the man on your screen right here was definitely Flamesy. Taking more responsibility, yes. dictating the game, coming in and playing the best he's ever played on a big stage. I absolutely love to see. And we have to say from an individual standpoint as well, which is always going to be the way in for FaZe, not a whole lot of people stepped up. It was mainly, merely the Robs show here. Yeah. Robs were here, Robs had a couple of moments, but he's shown he had a few movements in the map, a few incursions as well, which we know he's good at. But this was about it. It was really only Robs. You're telling me Vitality would win 13 to 3 like this without even breaking a sweat and we haven't mentioned Saivu at all? He wasn't even even. Sure, Rob's put on a bit of a fight and, and tried his absolute best, but it speaks volumes that we cannot highlight anyone else from the side of face right. in this game. No one showed up. No one from the side of face showed up and that's what we've been praising them for. Surely they're not playing the most clinical Counter-Strike. They're not playing the best of the best Counter-Strike team composition-wise, but we always pray them for having the individuals that will always show up, whether it being Rups, Twist, Brokey for that matter. None of them did this game. I mean, Vitality did a superb job at avoiding Rups. I think this is what it was about for them, to not give this guy the ability to multi-kill you. They went around him, they forced him to move. It just wasn't enough of phase, right? It wasn't enough. There was, there was nothing they could do about it. Nothing they could do about it. And it scares me a little bit. When you're looking at Vitality, you're looking at a Sai Wu. We haven't mentioned his name. They're still dominating the game. And you guess what happened yesterday on Nuke for Face Clan? Well, they lost to Complexity. So this match is all of a sudden up in the air. But both teams have shown weaknesses in Copenhagen on Nuke. But now it's time to regather your strength. It's time for us to gather our strength as well. We're going to take a quick three minute break. And when we come back, we dive back into Nuke, the second map of this grand final here at Blast for Final.
happening fast on the map of Vertigo, speedrunning us straight on into Nuke. And this is where things get uh, a little bit complicated because sure, it's the bigger phase coming into things and you look at their win record recently and it looks pretty damn good. But I want to remind you of the game versus complexity yesterday, Machu. Has that set any alarm bells off in your head for phase, anything you want to see them improving coming into it this time? I think both the Nuke against complexity and this Vertigo against Vitality have shown me a side of phase to which we were not accustomed to for quite a while now, which is to phase to just roll over mm. and basically get blasted out of the server. That worries me a tad for FaZe. We know they have the resilience, we know they have the backbone to bounce back, they've done it on multiple occasions, but no, I don't think we should be too happy for them. It's a complicated position to be in and reaction is needed. Yeah, I think the reason why I'm worried is the, the fashion they lost Nuke yesterday to complexity. The first eight rounds was back-to-back -back team switching rounds. No one could win two in a row. It was force buy after force buy after force buy, and that is unlike FaZe Clan. You look at a guy like Kerrigan, yeah, maybe it happens once, maybe it happens twice in a game, but she has another three, four, or five times what she did, so the fashion they were losing in yesterday, the fashion they couldn't control that game at any point against complexity, that's a little bit worrisome for me because Vitality is a better team, on paper at least. And you mentioned Vitality, and let me make, let me make it very clear. Complacency is going to be their biggest enemy when it comes to this map too. You've just had the easiest of time on sure. map one, and I will insist on this. Flames' performance has lifted any kind of pressure on anybody's shoulders. Yes. Because there is no need to be strong mentally when you have a young rookie like that who pops off and gets 23 kills. But that's where it gets dangerous. What if the game gets messy? What if it gets tough? What if Zaiwu has to show up? What if Spinks has to show up? That curse, that responsibility is still on everybody. Do not think for a second that Flame is going to give you that performance again. Everyone's got to be ready. No, I agree with you and, and I fully agree with you because it was only Flames he's showing up but you just gave me the answer. What if Flames is not showing up? Well, then you got Sphinx, one of the best rifles out there. Then you got Saivu, arguably the best player the past two yeah. years. So there's still a lot of strings to play off if you're Vitality. If I'm face right now, I would be a little bit worried. I, I, I agree with what you're saying, right? It's the fashion they've been losing in that shows a different side of face we haven't seen the past month in Counter-Strike 2. So I'm not saying they can't claim their way back to it because we've seen it time and time again. The second you count them out, that's when they come back. But I'm worried, I'm gonna be honest. I wanna raise you, you know, the CT start from Vitality. That's the side that they've chosen to start on coming yes. into FaZe's pick. Um, and that's where, I feel like there's obviously going to be still areas of uncomfort because Mezzi is slotting in position position for where Maddox used to play. And that's a very important area of the map to be holding down. And it's a very systematical issue that they have because we're not only just pointing at Mezzi and saying, you're not doing enough, which you could argue player for player, of course, isn't contributing as much as Majisk was. But the problem is how coherent the defense is compared to the rotations that you have to put through. We've seen Vitality time and time again be completely lost when people go down secret. The yes. B side rotation yes. is messy as hell. It's disgusting to watch. I really hope that they had conversations about, guys, what are our protocols when this player, player A, has to go down, player B has to take his spot. It's like a chess game. They have been outmatched by opponents time and time again. This is the moment to prove to me and to everybody that you learn from these mistakes. If I'm a viewer at home, I'm looking towards Messi on ramp. He's going to be tested a lot by Kerrigan. That must be part of the game plan. Sure. I'm also looking towards Apex because he's the guy that is supposed to help him a little bit with the rotation going lower bomb side. We saw Saivu being caught off a couple of times in the game in this tournament. We saw Apex doing the same thing. And Messi is not feeling comfortable just yet. He's not the difference maker on the server he used to be in Fnatic. He's still being integrated. So if you're face clan, apply pressure. See if you can break them straight off the bat on that CT side towards ramp to watch the lower bomb side. And that's something that we know Carrigan is going to be pulling out, particularly yes. on that T side, right? He is not afraid to be switching up the pace and trying to catch you off guard if you're on the defense. Yeah, definitely, because he knows that whenever they can get a couple of trades and slow down the pace, he's got players who are very comfortable in these areas of game. Talk about Robs and the late lurk that he can have against the likes of Messi on ramp. Talk about Rain and the space that he will allow himself to take outside. If Vitality get pushed to the late round three versus three, I will give FaZe the edge. I think they're better equipped to deal with it. So what Vitality need, and what we haven't seen so far on Nuke, is multi-kills. You need multi-kills to put you in a position where you just have to checkmate your opponent. You just have to get defensive positions and close the rounds. If you one for one, and you've been stressed out, I think FaZe, they can definitely push us to a third. They can. They can push us to a third. But I will say there's also a bit of weaknesses within the face cam. We spoke about the performance here on, on Nuke yesterday against Complexity. More so the individuals not showing up. That's an issue to me. We know Kerrigan and Twist are the two players defending the inner bomb side. If you're Vitality, yeah. where do you want to go look out for? Kerrigan not known to be the player who can shut that down by himself. Twist you can normally rely on. He had a, an abysmal game on Vertigo. So if I'm sorry, if I'm Vitality right now, if I'm Apex, I'm looking towards that thinking that's a weakling. That's something we got to mm -hmm. test. That's something we're going to see. If 
Twist is still having a rough one. Otherwise, that could be it, right? So we rely a lot on the individuals in Face Clan. They gotta step up. I love that you say that. I still believe it's a little bit of a coin flip. If you're in Apex's mind right now and you're Game plan is to bomb rush that A side, hoping that Twist isn't activated, isn't online, and he turns out on you with a multi kill on first there we round. Go. You might have just given him basically the key to your hotel room. You, you're giving him the key to the castle. He's back in the game. So you have to be sure that you want to tease the dragon. If he wakes up, you're in trouble. Well, gentlemen, it is time to continue the action of this grand final. Potentially a chance of Vitality to take this one into and put an end to that phase streak. And Carrigan's dreams of lifting a trophy on home soil. It is time to get into Nuke. Second map set to begin, that's right. We've got Nuke up next, we've got FaZe's win streak on the line. We've got Kerrigan's hopes and dreams of hosting a trophy here inside the Royal Arena one last time. We saw Heroic do it last year, but what we just witnessed on Vertigo was a total masterclass from Vitality. It felt like FaZe finally have their hands full. It's been an absolute pleasure, Copenhagen, to call these matches here in the Royal Arena, but this is Blast's last time in this venue. I know what you have in store for us. I know that you can get rowdy. So Copenhagen, let me hear you roar! It's a great life to be a CS caster. It's a dream come true. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful with crowds like this. And a map like Nuke coming in with a team like FaZe to defend against Vitality. Sphinx close. Ooh, Brokey instant. Single bullet dead. Up in the rafters, Apex and Flames combining on the site. These dual Berettas won't find anything further. And Rops is able to just flick one up to take man advantage FaZe. And they hear that. They heard that. Brokey's on high alert. Yeah, that was loud. But, but you I know mean, what's important? He got up. And what do you do about this? He has no, he has oh. no gun out, but Brokey doesn't take the chance. He's just throwing a wrench in the works. You see the panic out of Mezzi. But he's, he's handing the info over. And he ran that, he's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, so this is confirmed for Mezzi. The same way that Mezzi gave info over to Brokey, Brokey gave it right back to Zywu. Now Zywu's got options. That nade doesn't quite find its mark. Man advantage, four phase on a difficult T side versus a team that just cleaned them up. I don't think they know. Zywu close. Brokey shoots. And then Zywu is able to strike him down, looking for more. Oh. He's going to slay both on the bomb site. Fight towards main. Rops will make the difference. We've got Mezzi to drop. A lot of pressure for a player who's been struggling to get any kills, let alone a very critical clutch. Oh! What? But a flick out of Mezzi! <laughs> <laughs> on the jump spot. There's no way. Versus Rops of all people. That's a lizard flick. That is an ancestral part of the UK brain that just snaps to the head. <laughs> That's absolutely disgusting. Elizabeth would have been proud. <laughs> Zywu tries his damnedest with the two... Oh! What? what? Woo! On the way down, yeah. crash and burn. Versus Rops, you know he's going to jump spot. That's so perfectly every time. That was his one chance. 10 seconds to defuse. As he goes down a hero for that one. Zaiwu started out, though, with those two frags on that big flank. And he was so close to death with Brokey coming up right behind him on that ladder as well. And Mezzi coming in to replace Majisk inside of the ramp. Now, I actually think that this is one of the positions where I, I sort of wondered if Vitality could improve on the ramp. Magis sometimes committed very heavily towards fights. And this map on CT side was incredible for Vitality overall. So there's still big shoes to fill, but that's to say that Mezzi maybe could add something, his own flavor if he's feeling comfortable enough. Quick scramble though. Kerrigan's made a ton of space. And then he even dodges the single oh. core peak. Look at the way he's gotten up into control. While Twist serves up the distraction from ramp, Zywu's now got his hands full. Oh. But he'll flick over. He'll kill oh. them all. A tap out of the USP that to make sure Face stay down. Such a good slip through from Zywu to get to the back site. Knowing that control door was open, he could have risked fighting Kerrigan. But think about that. The inventory of control right there. He lets control get taken because he knows Mezzi is up inside control ready to fight. He knows he's going to have fights versus ramp first. And he could have stuck in the door and played it very safe, but he committed properly. That's a great move. 
Netherlands. Messi and Zaiwu complimenting each other once again. The English and the French still have a chance, Connor. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, bridge that gap. Yeah. It's an uphill battle, but mm. we're trying. Apex spotting a little contact outer. At least that. Mm. It's not horrendous. Yeah, that's it's actually, still not ideal. Yeah, there's a nice tell for them with the one smoke first, knowing they're going to get close to it. Wait till it's prim and proper. Throw the second one and cross. So they could chip down a touch, but the map control is great. And Mezzi, I knew they would be trying to attack him because we saw a bad map from yes. him on ramp. A weak link. Yes. Apex activates from the back of Garage. He'll make sure Kerrigan's out of this one. So double man advantage for Vitality, but they do have Mezzi in the open, toying with him off the double door. Where's the split? Where's the help? It doesn't come. Brains then cleaned out by Zaiwu, who's toppled by Twist on the backside. Twist has to have a better map than he did on yeah. Vertigo. That was atrocious. And he gets off the bomb site pretty quick. They both split, change positions, looking to take it down into an even fight, but that's not gonna happen. Oh, could have been two on two. It's Van Dalken up next. Twist versus everyone. He's just wiggled his way out of the bomb site. They've completely lost track of him for the time being. He knows there's one still up towards ramp, but where and when does he get a chance to strike? It's an easy kill to Apex, but he oh. can't strike. Spinks as the swing comes through, and Vitality's 3-0 oh. start is strong. And they immediately fan out to the defuse. They kill Twist at the same time. There was a chance it could have got stuck anyway, but that could have been a round one for Twist. And I think you're right. He needed it, but Vertigo was not a great showing. Already looking a lot better, though, on Nuke. And uh, Vertigo, we, again, we don't know. Until after, until after the match is over, how much that really caught Faze off guard. But we can see, I think, by the numbers that it clearly did very much. But uh, if we're talking about reliable traders, it's definitely Spinks. He's got to be number one. Um, Zywoo playing great so far in the final as well. Outshone a little bit um, by the fact that Flamesy, of course, I mean, he was shining the brightest. There was no way to a have a bigger nope. flame than that. And, ooh, okay. <laughs> Maybe he'd be jeebies with headshots like that. Okay. That's a really big find. Um, okay, otherwise, Apex trying to cross secret fast. And yeah, yeah, that's a, you know, a big tell in, in the setup. But neither, FaZe weren't ready to attack off that, and Vitality are not totally compromised to defend this, except we see they are underplaying Upper right now. Ooh, Molly on Sphinx. That's going to force him up, but good cover out of Brokey. Making sure man advantage doesn't slip away with ease. Flamesy taken off of the rooftops. Chance for Zaiwu to at least claw back they're, Sing. They're still coming at them outside. This is the best chance to fight back, and he will find a way to. But he loses so much health. Meanwhile, Rops has been able to slither down to the B site, so a ton of real estate still for FaZe to work with. They've got the bigger picture. This probably is going to get respected, surely. I mean, these guys have been the dynamic duo, but... They're far away now, and Zaiwu's so low, so I guess just happy to fight his way out. Flamesy went so incredibly above and beyond on that first map that we didn't need to lean on Zaiwu. The desk mentioned Sphinx could pick up slack, and already out of the gate. This time, we're getting Zaiwu up there. Mm -hmm. Gunning for an MVP performance. Of course, Sphinx has been the player that's been hot on his heels. Sphinx is the reason Vitality have looked so good throughout this fall finals. Flamesy drops a bomb out of nowhere in that last map, and suddenly this is a real beast. The phase will answer early. Now they can't have what was done to them like yesterday. Nine rounds back and forth versus Complexity made this map look like a pain point for FaZe. They were never in it, didn't even look capable of stopping the North Americans, mm -hmm. let alone Vitality. But a lot of that hinged on economy, back and forth, and limitations outside of individual levels. Avoid that, they will improve their score from last night. A popular map from FaZe to try to run it down on Nuke over and over again. And Rain is the focus when it comes to outside. A lot on CT and oh, there's Flames and Mezzi going down. That's right, they turn the steam up all the way. And we've got Kerrigan back here actually Wait, he's, uh, he's separated from his teammates right now, and guess what he has on his back? Um, maybe that all-important bomb. Mm. So this is going to be a little sketchy. Feels like Kerrigan's kind of on his own mission, but he can also just sit there and wait and allow for his teammates to be freed up. You don't need to plant if they're all dead, and at this point, they essentially are. Spinks, he's caught. 
Yeah, to this. Measly six health for Apex, who's been found out and stranded towards ramp, cleared. Oh. Kerrigan's issue, not a problem. Yeah, that, that maybe gave him more chances to try to fight back into it because um, they were wondering, why are they fighting us upstairs? They pretty much won the round already. Just let us save. But now they wipe out all exits, too. Just another Kerrigan master plan, of course. But these are moments where Mezzi has to turn up, and you can't die holding the ramp like that. You can do damage and fall off. You can do no damage and fall off, but you can't die without your kill. That's the worst case situation. How much damage can Zywu truly do with just that one M4? It's cool to see Vitality come in with some kind of an investment, but they flub the initial boost, and oh. that delay in the boost, I mean, maybe that would have been a fair fight. But Wolverine just doing work from okay. the top of that silo. Yeah. Not the first round, he's found opening kills. Yeah. Apex included twice. And we look back on Antwerp at what I think is maybe one of the best nuke performances of all time from Rain. See ya. T side, CT side. It's a feast shot off. It is about Rain fighting outside, controlling at T side. And on the CT side, roaming alone. It still boggles my mind that since the inception of FaZe Clan in CSGO, we have had Rain sitting on this roster. Feels like yeah. things change in Counter-Strike so quickly, but if one thing remains the same, it's Rain. FaZe Rain. Yeah. FaZe Rain. I was one of the people who absolutely doubted him. In 2020, things were looking bleak. And then the pull back all the way to Antwerp, and as soon as he got back to land, exactly. so was Rain. Yeah, it felt like the online era could have been the end of a few of these players. You know, somebody like Olaf, who's been playing just as long, comes forward. Lack of motivation, just doesn't feel the same in a fizzle out. Not Rain, though. Flush is saying he didn't know what tournament he was playing in sometimes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rain still has MVPs in his back pocket. We get guns back up, Vitality. Trying to respond to this streak of phase rounds early on. 50% of the way through this first half. This defense certainly needs more. Not just in round wins, but at this point, utility. We're down to a single smoke, two flashes oh. for the defense. And just this entire bomb site blanketed in fire. Yeah, that's working. Look, they, they said dance. <laughs> Flames is jumping around. Molly's everywhere. Down to 25 HP. Bargain basics. Low util. Oh, and the outside smokes at 110. That is tough to have the stomach. We could see that apex position ready to catch a lurk. Mezzi here to try to do some damage outside. But the cross is open for now. He can... Oh. Whoa. And they, they actually did try to catch this. They have three people ready, though, to fight this specific duel. Mezzi knows now, maybe, they could be coming my direction. And yep. that's the bomb, but... Rain managed to get down secret, but... Are, are, are they maybe going to go upper? Options open at 40 seconds. It looks like they're, they're trying to get a kill first. Finally, they'll drop. They can't ignore the amount of map control that Rain has taken, even though spotted. Flames leads on low health. Looking to be traded. Rain going to make sure they... Oh. Down. No chance! It's going to take Apex on the Fomus to answer. Looks like cover for the bomb at the 20-second mark. Off the line, Brokey bullet sailing over top. But Rops, he has been waiting and waiting, and he will peek to mm. kill Mezzi on the approach. Cuts off one end of this potential retake split. Apex has to wait, and it's not even a real chance for Zywu to come through with this. So taking their time, slowly but surely. And I thought when Apex was deep on Gouage, not shooting at main, that maybe Rain being heard underneath him could have fueled Vitality to a rock-solid B-hold. Not the case. Yeah. It's Rain in control. I wonder if there's some redundancy there. We had Apex behind the smokes in a liege waiting for someone to push through into Big Garage. But we also had Spinks, who was the one who got the kill from somebody who lurked through the smoke. Could Apex have used that opportunity to go and try to double up with Mezzi? In that rotation, that's where they needed the most help, and we're seeing that phase arc trying to get to him. Whether or not it's in the beginning of round or later. Now, Kerrigan calls in a, a very complicated round here, right? It starts with upper pressure in the mollies, into the outside smokes, into the ramp walk, with lurks everywhere. So it's a very hard one to follow. But I think they did get what they, what they were searching for, and that was confusing the CTs. And weakening, weakening the ramp, ultimately, was the, was the goal. And 
Money's just been very bad here for Vitality, so down 4-3 on two guns. Rain's been very successful in cracking heads off Silo, but... Oh, there oh, it is are again! You Dude, what the hell? How accurate is the AK from that distance? It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Depends if Rain's holding it or not. That is so insane. Looking for another. Yeah, why not? He's on a tear with these bursts. Meanwhile, we get a crossover towards Red. We've got a lot of CTs here to stop it. Even if it's just the Deagle of Sphinx, it sets up Apex perfectly. Little flick shot missed out of Brokey. Rain's gonna keep on gunning him down. And as another member comes up from that smoke, he fights and he gets shot right back. Watson and Rain for all five. Okay. Wow, maybe we get a classic performance, grand final performance out of Rain. Kerrigan wears the Batman mask, but when they need him, Rain's also a superhero. Face saying this absolutely will not end in two as they pick up five straight. Copying and pasting this position top silo. Look who's below. This time it's Kerrigan up top. Apex on the retreat with the pressure bottom silo. He's got to make sure that he doesn't expose himself to Kerrigan. This was a play that they used to do with Magisk. Now using Apex up front. It works. Sphinx able to push through Hut. There's an answer set up by Vitality. It's not just Apex trying to fill Magisk's shoes, but layers, and those layers take to the top. They can't, know. Oh. That boy. timing is insane. What can Sphinx get up to from here? Wait, what? But I mean, yeah, okay, he has the, I mean, where would you rather be? Inside of the A site? We're sitting up on T roof doing absolutely nothing. Oh, there was just no one here watching for the hut exit. There's an op that's now useless, basically, into this round, and a chance actually for FaZe to crush even in the exits. Sphinx found an unbelievable timing, but maybe he was better off going upstairs. How could you predict that, however? Even then, he sees a player out on garage, can't dude, do anything about it. Dude, Rain's a, just gonna lean back. That's the crazy thing about FaZe, right? Like, they could have been going outside late, coming back into lobby late like that. There's no way for Sphinx to figure out what's coming up next. Yeah, so, I mean, They're just bringing you a new round every time. Single kill inside a hut from Sphinx to Vitality feels like an amazing setup. They think they have the wool pulled over the eyes of FaZe, but instead... FaZe just creep into the A-site, plant bomb, and close it. Keeping the pressure as high as possible on Vitality. Again, Vitality are not the first team to take a map off of FaZe in CS2. The yeah. majority of their best of threes go to that third decider. They like to get beat up a little bit before they win. Yeah, I mean... They, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kinda relates. It's just the nature of Vertigo that really, I think, put fear in the oh hearts of FaZe fans. But again, it's Vertigo of all maps. If, if, if there's any map in the world that FaZe are supposed to get blow out, blown out on... Mm. And who are, who are you to question the resilience of FaZe? Take in answers. He's moving. Adaptation out of Zywoo, but a response in the form of Brokey. Up close, Brokey's off, shines bright, twists Ooh. deep with the headshot. And that's gonna keep twists positive. Something he certainly wasn't across the first. Oh, and it's like clockwork here. Smokes fade out, man. Advantage held on to by FaZe as they, they're on fire. They, they, they take this pressure outside. They pull Mezzi back out of the ramp. They look to maybe attack upper, but they keep options wide open. Can drop secret. Impossible situation to synthesize for Vitality. And then they fall and they die. Their rotator now inside of the ramp. They know he's almost always alone. And Flames as the second last player looking to do anything, happy to take a 50-50 engagement, ends up getting destroyed. That is Vitality trying to answer the phase outer control. Winning on one front, losing on another. They don't get the sequence out of Zaiwu. I don't know if there's a flash as he's crossing red, but Brokey's way ahead of it. Gets a much deeper angle after he takes Rain up top. That's a consolation prize. Rain, FaZe can afford to try that one more time, see if it works, because they've already got the value they looked for. If Vitality let it happen again, shame on them. If they get the kill, well, we'll trade it back. We can go on to our next level. And, uh, wow, FaZe, what a comeback. After three rounds, seven straight. 
That has got to feel good. These days, you can never tell what's going to happen map to map. No, of course. I like to think MR12 makes things a little spicy. Yeah. Yeah, FaZe didn't put up that comeback, but it's always possible. But they're not a one-note team in that regard. They don't need to have a bad start and come back. They can also straight up dominate the game from the beginning as well. It's a team that's uh, seen it all. They've been in every situation. Yeah. But we're seeing Flamesy die now in pedestrian manners. Inside of Mini, we're seeing Mezzi's rotations get pressure. But th there's never been a double up inside of the ramp. You better believe we flip switch over sides. We get FaZe playing the ramp. They're going to have Broki ready to fight with Flamesy at the... Or sorry, ready to fight with Rops and the ramp at the right times. They're getting away with way too much. I think that Apex, as the as the second floater outside, sometimes primarily, has to be the one to reinforce all these different positions when he thinks he sees fit. It's going to be him and Zaiwu, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we see Zaiwu be the adaptation. Yeah. Close out to the red root box just last round. Good for him, one kill. Out of spawn again with guns. Trying to put up some kind of a defense. What does the T-Sai have in store? Sometimes the best way to deal with a problem is to run headfirst into it. You know, if this happened to phase over and over again, you better believe they would be double pushing the ramp. No doubt in my mind. Getting the trophy control yes. and then forgetting about yes. it. Yes. We haven't seen that once from Vitality. Just looking a little stunned at the moment, but listen, this will help. Apex as far back as possible. Oh no, it's an assist. It's Zaiwu up from heaven, in fact, that gets the kill. And they'll tether nicely. From heaven and hell, we get two engagements versus phase. Here comes the reinforcements. Kind of right on time. Now, will they keep it going, however? They're 5v3. They could get complacent and still win. He's getting a little rowdy outside, pushing through those smoke grenades, thinking they're going to catch the defense off. This would be such a phase moment if they won this round. Well, we know they love a 1v4. Yeah. The destroyers of North America. 3v5 is what it would take to keep this streak going within Nuke. This T-side still on fire. Two rounds left to unfold. And Apex, well, it's going to be the first one, but it's just so costly for twists in that duel. Down to 11 HP means now they need something else from Rops and Brokey. More pressure on those two's shoulders. Speaking of pressure, time now starts to add that little extra edge to phase. Your option's limited, but with this smoke, there's an uncertainty for Mezzi, and we said maybe he would get targeted as this map went on. Maybe his underperformances could be an issue for the defense. He will sit behind that smoke with no information. Uh -oh. Flamesy reveals himself with just the SMG. Brokey's now going to be too busy, and Vitality will lock this down. Yes, sir. Okay. Zywu comes through. Three kills and the assist. He is the difference maker to get at least one more for the defense. Yeah, the spearhead, and he comes in as a closer as well. All points in the round. He had that barrel down the next of phase, defending his teammates at each choke point in the mix every single step of the way. And uh, he's somebody I haven't worried about so far in this map. It's pretty much the new guy. It's been sort of the rotations. I wonder if Apex could do more to call. He's got a lot more young blood in here, but if Mezzi needs assistance too, it's on him to ask for it. And he asked for an op actually, so <laughs> that's a... Uh, Let's that, see it. that does take the edge off the rotation. You double up on the CD side of Nuke, and then you need to rotate less. Flame's going to slide in. Was in the exact same position just last round to close it off the mm. nade. He gets nothing. Twists, heads up, wins the duel. Zaiwu trying to find his, but the fire keeps him back. He'll be out of this hold if there is one outside for Vitality. A one-off round, not looking likely as Zywu and Apex hold it yet again. We get a slip out from Squeaky with an empty oh. weapon. Sphinx still adds a kill to the tally, but Twist is in the middle of what's remaining of Vitality. And Mezzi with that AWP up in heaven is just going to try to inch out. Twist missed the first one, but he at least has the whole picture clearly in his mind. He's ah. got the bomb to boot. Fall back covered. They don't know which way he's going to go. 
And it's for that reason that he's been cut off on one end, but with the heaven on fire, Mezzi cannot press out. So Twist has created this chance for himself to pull off the clutch. Oh. But Zywu's had enough, sits him down, and Vitality CT side truly alive. A little bit of an uptick, a response in the face of a phase streak, and their own T side up next. Oh, okay, this one will be interesting. Who is your 2023 player of the year? I'll start with you, Shush. I mean, obviously, Robs has been playing for me. <laughs> I was going to say, this, I think yeah. this guy I mean, it, gets my vote. It's quite obvious. Yeah. yeah. Which but think usually is a, an all player, so it's quite interesting. It's that, a that's rifle, kind of so. what I was going with the question earlier, yeah, Zeg. It feels like riflers are getting a lot more of the conversation in terms of the star players right now. Do you think that's because of the kind of swinging mechanic or the fact the AWP has been nerfed, like, or a mixture of the two? Like, is there anything or any insight you think as to why that might be? I don't think there's one specific thing. It's definitely just everything in, in which adds up to it. I think, like, the map design, first of all, and, like, the new grenades, smoke grenades, and you, there's, like, a lot of flashes which were set in CSGO, which were, you know, getting offers off the angles, are now, like, removed. 2023, who's the best player this year? I think the best rifle for me, Robson, best player, I think, Sibyl. Yeah, solid answers. That's what everyone's saying. For me, it's Robs, I think. Robs, I think, like, in CS2, I think that's hands down. It's difficult to yeah. say maybe the whole year because FaZe had a very downward period after mm -hmm. about three or four months towards into CSGO, so I think it's it's... Definitely not a lock in, but CS2 for me, Rob's for yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely killing it right now. This year? Yeah. Overall? Yeah. Both games? Both games. I mean, Saibu hasn't played much of CS2 yet, but I mean, no. I still have to say Saibu. You like Saibu, don't you? Just CSGO and won the major and stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Good answer. Blame F. Yeah, I think it's easy. It has to be Saibu, even That's though, cool. like, Robs is playing good right now and I would everything. say if it's just CS2, we would say Robs. Yeah, right? maybe, but it's too short of, like, Saibu exactly. hasn't played those tournaments. I think there's yeah. like eight maps or four yeah. maps or something so in CS2. you cannot Can't count tell. it in. I think Saibu for sure has been the best player of the week. Like, I don't think think it's close. Saibu for sure. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean... It's a good lad, isn't he? It's pretty, yeah, pretty he's, decent. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, hasn't had a bad, bad run either. Yeah, honestly, don't really have a clue. Like, I guess, are we talking CS2 or just CSGO? Hmm, I'm gonna, if it was a game show, I would say just 2023 20, full stop, so both, mm. it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I would say probably Saibu as well, actually. In CS2, you probably, maybe, you could, maybe the argument of Robs would be up there, but it's yeah, like exactly, if it's CS, yeah. if it's yeah. CSGO, but it's then also such a list, yeah. small, small sample yeah. size, and they've been winning, right? So, yeah. and I don't think um, you guys have been in a lot of the tournaments. No. So, I mean, it's hard yeah. to say. So yeah, it's hard to be up there. Just like, it is I woo, but like, it's difficult to say. Yes, that, that's yeah. what we come up with there. Not the hottest take, but we'll take it. <laughs> And so it seems like FaZe do have fight in them after all. Vertigo potentially an anomaly in this series. Vitality's younger guns looking a little more nervous here on map two. Yeah. There's a historic win streak on the line with FaZe. There's a chance for Kerrigan to lift a trophy on home soil to add himself to the name of Danes that have done it in the Royal Arena. It's a lot of pressure for these players in the server. And with second half set up, FaZe's two-round lead on the CT side looks to be leading us to Mirage. Yeah, they could be very thin. Looks can be deceiving. Absolutely. And even though Kerrigan was one in, is one and eight after the end of that half, his value was in the calling. Those T-sided rounds were comprehensive, they were thorough, and they put the pressure on Vitality to make those kills as easy as possible. And now Apex will switch over to the T side as the captain of Vitality to try to apply it in the same way. And Flamesy, as the opener, came out of Vertigo looking hot. Needs to continue on with that. Kerrigan gushed. Oh! But Rops is even further back and ready to help out. That could prime Sphinx perfectly. He finishes the little health left on Kerrigan. Yeah, that's big. That's first rotation down. And there was a second player there who was shooting outside, of course. Twist has responsibility right now. And it feels like he knows he needs to maybe get a little more. Can't just sit within sight and hope to stop it. But will his ambition cost him? He comes around the corner and Sphinx is able to react. Oh. That's two T's confirmed in lobby. They have the bigger picture phase. 
But do they have the chance? As he comes oh. up, bends, Sphinx slaps Brokey down and Rops. It's a single shot to get it back. But the bomb is recoverable. Rops opens the door. Position now known. Sphinx, these two lurkers. Just tucks in. Sphinx goes quiet. 30 seconds. Two of the strongest clutchers this year could come down to a headshot. Not worried about the HP. But I mean, what do you do? How do you do it with the door closed? With a barrier in place between the two. This is a massive call out. They sit and they wait, and Spinks doesn't want to wait any longer. Spinks knows he has to make a move. He wants that extra bit of time just in case. And guess what? Rops makes the wrong move. Oh my god. And Spinks will quietly put the bomb down. Rops thought after this amount of time, it must have been the case that he left. But he it wasn't still, true. Still just fly up this ladder and rip a headshot off of Spinks. Hell, hit him in the chest. Oh. 24 HP. But he came out so fast. Does he think he missed the timing? Plus with a smoke on sight, more insecurity. Will the early door close? Make a difference. Rops was the one that shut it in his face. He then tries to play it the other way around. Rops silently getting ever closer, but he's not working with that kit. It would Ooh. be 10 seconds, and Spinks is not going to buy into this. Spinks is going to double it back. Time is of the essence. And now Spinks knows that he goes for the kill. And Rops, you may find your wow. frag, but it's Vitality with the pistol. That was a majestically played round out of Spinks. That's absolutely beautiful. Playing it with the knowledge in mind that he doesn't have a kit. In that 1v1, out mind gaming, his counterpart on phase in ROPS. Sometimes counter strikes all out war, and then other rounds like that, a beautiful game of chess. Yeah, that was chess, absolutely. And what could be a tournament winning pistol round. We'll find out. It's Vitality who are up a map. Phase have to go against it. Look at this round from beginning to end out of Sphinx. And this tournament, man. What a massive performance from him from beginning to what looks like the end. I mean, he is Zaiwu's right-hand man, nipping his heels in the stats department. That's a great dink. I don't know. Where does that come from? What was that? He was just spamming in front of me through the smoke. Oh, it's the M4. The this one is, M4. It's Apex luck. You get a nade out on ramp. Oh, no, Kerrigan. Oh, that's a massive. I mean, he's playing committed inside of the ramp. They don't see anything else right now. Trying to get Util out, looking to use that 5.7, so and that doesn't even get a shot off. There's two options that happen, other than the CT's mass rotator ready to get downstairs, but normally the way they do that is by staying on the ramp. That's the easiest way to get down and fan out into dark and cross over towards clock. So Vitality know they've won a very important kill and piece of map control in a round like this. This is actually like a re reassess, don't blunder type of situation, more so than what are they doing now? They weren't talking to me. Nope. <laughs> and this is going to be a quiet close, it seems, as they finally are correct. The window is blown open, but no one control side all the smokes that they need. And the plant can safely go down. FaZe just hoping that it ended up being a gamble back upstairs, but I think that it's hard to, it's hard to trick Vitality in that situation. Taking ramp with that frag at that tempo. I think everything made perfect sense to them. Nothing you can do about stopping this one. And phase. Well, that lead vanishes now as Vitality tie up. But there's still. They do this on T side. I mean, that would be something special. Now we're talking about Rain on CT side. His autonomy inside of Yard as a CT player. His kills will matter a lot. We saw what he did on T side already. That half of the job done. Twist having a better map than he did before. Kerrigan's calls have been super sound. I think in terms of IGLing so far this map, Kerrigan's the one I'm looking at. Apex, I think, has more to prove. And Flames has a chance to show on T side now. After coming off a, a weak CT side. If he can end on a high note, it's one thing to do the first map of the Grand Finals. But he's looking for a series victory, a tournament victory. I mean, I would expect nothing less from Twist as well. That's the beauty of the FaZe Clan, is that each of these individuals could start slow, still have an impact in the series. That's what makes their undying nature believable every time. And Rain will continue to just tap back from Garage. He did good damage last round, didn't catch his kill. 
don't know how no one died right there, but... Well, that's the one really good gun. Changing hands now to a high HP player. Chuck it over to Twist, see what he can do instead. The shades of Vertigo and Vitality's approach, just grouping up in these silent mid-rounds. And it's when they pounce as a pack that it does look really good. It's what tore through FaZe's defense in the first map. This defense meant to be better. Not really equipped for it. But again, Vitality just wait. They let FaZe stew in this pressure. With incendiaries over the top, things get a little wild. CT's position revealed as fire finds feet. No sh damage off the shotgun, but the 5-7 will find it. Kerrigan serving up a distraction for Twist to go oh. through, and it's a brokey jumping shoddy. This defense, with bare bones weapons, looks to hold. Mezzi given a chance to stamp his name on a round. Oh. That Nova changes hands oh. twice. That Nova takes heads off shoulders. Yo, that's a nightmare Nova rotation right there. Vitality just getting up close, right? It's it's the beast that is hitting an A-site versus these kinds of half buys. Shotguns yeah. on hut, pistols behind boxes, and an M4 perfectly placed to support up from heaven. And two pairs of eyes layered on top of each other, just as you pointed out. It's looking the, down at Squeaky, waiting for that bust. Yeah, just, it's the distractions up front, and it's twist to close kills above. Right back in the lead, our phase. Vitality's still very well equipped. Ooh, and again, Rain is just pumping out damage outside, but he's gonna have to be careful. No one died last time. This time he takes no damage back, 10 HP for Apex. There's a lot of players out here for both Ooh. these teams. That's a ton of damage, though. Now Sphinx is down to 13. Mezzi gets hit through him. Flames is trying to find something off Mini, but no chance. He at least keeps CTs back far enough oh, that that's not only does he pick up this headshot, he's got teammates in position to jump. Yeah, that's, that's Ropstad, actually, of course. That's a player who goes on to ramp, so now they know the rotation is down to one downstairs. Oh, one goes Kerrigan. down the... Oh, he's got to deliver this. This angle can be good, but it can make you pay as well. Oh, first one's clean. It's his fourth of the map. And is it enough to have them stutter? They stall out. They hold for a second. And again, Vitality, happy to play with the clock. But they're going to have to play off those with health. Zywoo Flamesy. Apex and Spinks barely standing. Oh, Kerrigan, he tries to push in. And it's that opening right there that could prime Vitality to tie this game again. Yeah, and Rain takes his first kill um, on top of Flamesy, finally, at mini. They clear out B-site, no resistance, nothing here to Dude. stop them. Vitality Bro can go ahead and plant. Brokey's literally saving. He's already back in They've the corner of his spawn, yeah. Vitality find their opening. It's, again, a lot of posturing, a lot of bodies, but more so Vitality just getting into secret. Dude. And Kerrigan, he's not even given a chance at a multi-spray. If yeah. two players come around that corner, maybe he gets them. But, I mean, Vitality, perfectly stopped. Yeah, that looks so nervous right there. I mean, I, I like that, like, Kerrigan goes for the re-aggression when he feels like it's time. Rain stays outside to try to finish off his food and flames the up top on Mini. And they stick around to try to maintain control of outside. I think we saw more fear out of Vitality in that sense. But the fact that Vitality can withstand that pressure and fight back and come away with a win, and someone like Flamesy can stay alive for that long and come up with two kills, I think that's a really good sign for them. But uh, all that really tells me is this game's going to be extremely close. Not so much that Vitality are suddenly going to take this away. Faze still have more to show. Lots of money left over. Brokey still on that op. It's this one. It's this one that's... This one, when you take Rops out in this position, you go downstairs, right? You know that he's out of place, and that it's probably Brokey opping the ramp. They can't be double pushing it, and they already saw rain. So that's where Faze's hand is kind of forced. And Rops takes a very good peek. Flames is just better. So they use the information perfectly with Apex at the helm and they turn it into a victory, but they've still got to go through a whole new buy. And this time, got the double up. Slight adaptation in the hands of Rops. Flames did such a good job off main last round. Every single CT was just getting peppered by him. Pressure all over the place until that clinical headshot shines through. And what a contrast. Again, we're swinging with two offs Oh my phase, god, that's so risky to do mid-round. They must have had some kind of read right there. With nobody else as well. Yeah, they, he, he must have... I don't know exactly. He felt super confident, clearly, to make that happen. Maybe... Yeah, could have been something from a demo. Seeing them peel back, and now Kerrigan takes another peek. 
And that's a lot of information that Vitality are getting without a death. They're still trying to make moves, but Broki exposes. Oh. Spinks catching not just the kill through door, but then the player that's maybe supposed to cover. Kerrigan's gonna try to draw it back with a frag. He will. And it's a softened up Sphinx. But just like the round prior, pressure downstairs. Can Rops really stop it with the off? Not by missing first shot. He may not even get a chance at a second. But he'll pop the smoke to create ambiguity. Oh. Which side does he peek? He wants to take a risk, but he knows they're gonna take over. Control side, 20 HP. He's stuck. Oh, the flash is perfect to get him off the angle. No help. Final nail, Zaiwu. And uh, that's too expensive to try to forfeit, but he's given it up one way or the other, it seems like. Oh, Rob's on the sidearm, Spinks takes him down, and that's a massive round for Vitality. Maniac and Pimp pre-game as well, just discussing the possibility of Flamesy going absent in map two. That's something that we've seen in the past, and sure enough, this is not Vertigo in terms of his performance. Yeah. Spinks oh, puts man. up a huge round here, because he catches the back of Brokey, and Twist, anticipating a T-side peak, wasn't ready for someone to be stagnant in the corner. Yeah. It's Spinks positioning, crisp aim, and a 3K on top of this to put Vitality back up. His consistency is almost unparalleled. Like, in his role right now, he's just... He's so reliable every single time. And it looks like a great shot from Zaiwu outside, but it's the risk that if Rain knew they were back there in that position, he would have never jumped up. So he must have had some kind of idea that they were going to fall back. He could call him out if that were the case. But he could have all he could have also done that walking up to the blue box, getting flashed in front of it or doing it in a more safe way. Like from up there, he would have had to jump down and push all the way around. And that would have taken forever, right? Even if he saw no one back there. But sometimes, if you don't have the info, you still have to play for it. Or play like you know what the move is going to be. Whoa, this one could be for 10 here for Vitality. Not a single rifle available to FaZe. It's going to take one of those heroics, right? One of those miraculous moments that we know FaZe for. Something that starts like this. With Rob's solo kill on ramp, it looked good. But then we get the immediate push from Kerrigan. He just ran through lobby as if it was going to be completely open. Yeah. No care in the world. And it costs him, as Rops then falls right after because it's Vitality moving as a pack. The newer roster, with Mezzi sprinkled in, another rough game from him, but it doesn't matter because Vitality move as a unit. And that unit's about to just bombard this B-site. But what they don't know is FaZe is here. Not one, but two. From the corner, Brokey dies. Then the peak out of the Deagle in the back site. He does snap up to finish Mezzi, and he tries his damnedest to get to the solo door, but Vitality are going to have none of this. Vitality mm. will take their tent. Wow. They are not I, making I, mistakes. I thought, they would, I thought they would get nervous and lose this game. After the first half, I thought for like sure. It. This speaks to leadership of Apex. I want to hammer that home. I 100% believe there's no way he got his troops together, got them out of that first half mentally. Flamesy, Mezzi told him, we can do this on T-side. Zaiwu continues to deliver. Sphinx continues to deliver. He just worries about the other two and himself. And they put up three great rounds now in a row. Of course, it was the half out of phase. Just trying to make that magic happen. But the sparks aren't quite there within this second half. And time is running out if you were FaZe. We saw, we saw how good Rain was on the T side. Going up top, clipping wings outside. He is instrumental. Could have a moment queued up here. But again, when there's one, you get the entire hive. Swarm after swarm, Vitality taking over sites, but then also at moments just sitting here silent. And self-doubt creeps into the minds on a quiet night. Oh, they, they use that info again. That helps. But hey, material for a position. Brokey gets a kill. Rops hears this. And Rain's also trying to piece together some information. They know that there's players crawling outside. Oh. Mezzi on the close smoke picks up a huge kill. But and remember, this has at least been heard. It's a distraction though, isn't it? Apex is waiting and waiting. <gasps> he looks away, but turns back in time. Oh, another Will massive. Will not let Kerrigan slip out of here. It's another massive win for him over Kerrigan inside the lobby. Kerrigan thinking he could get away with something fancy. Brokey will find the trade at least. Apex not able to escape the hive. Rops deep, finds his. And that's man advantage back for FaZe. Rops will even hold back.
Spinks. Okay, the desperation's here, and so is Flames. Lost clutches on Vertigo back to back. It's the one thing that he could not do in the first map of this series I don't was know. close a clutch. And guess what? Time will decide that he can't do it again. Wow, you gotta give it up to FaZe, man. The fact that they kept the pressure on no matter what, uh -huh. that looked completely lost. Just leaning back, even I, losing Rain on Secret. Uh, yeah, when they lost the Rain on Secret, you think, no way. And they could have gone downstairs, but they did not. They were not cohesive. Just after accrediting Apex for keeping the troops together in these last three rounds, here they got confused, fell into the trap. But again, it's because FaZe are so good at cultivating chaotic situations and staying on top of every single detail. And again, Kerrigan, thorough but not strict. His individuals are allowed to make decisions for themselves. He proved that's the best way to play CS. And that's why FaZe are so sustainable, so scary for such long periods of time. Yeah, but a round loss right now. I would snap FaZe in half. We see the limitations already come out. Forward spots. And again, vitality creep. Robs was huge in hell last round. Holding back, making sure Sphinx couldn't get out with that bomb. Just delayed long enough for the clutch to not even have a possibility. He's hefting himself down, but oh. the moment he pops up, oh, Rob. Mezzi adds one to the tally. And you see the immediate pounce come out of Vitality. FaZe are frantic to put up some kind of a defense to not get reset. Rain will make sure he brings one down with him. But as the fire pops, Kerrigan comes out, twists, burns to the hands of Zaiwu. Oh, what a big risk. Man Hurry advantage. Up. And Zaiwu's gonna lay down smoke, makes it harder for the CTs. They just disrespect no. the utility. They try it again, and it doesn't work on either front. There's no tunnel vision. They dropped the smokes down, but they still watched him. They had three pairs of eyes. That instant headshot over towards the ramp. Rob's dying, b site crumbles, Twist and Rain can't get enough, and Vitality 2 away. Wow, the dink is just not enough right there. He needed to be able to slink away. The same standard was held to Mezzi. If you die in the ramp, that could be too much. Even if ramp is open, that'll, even if ramp is completely open and no one's playing there, that will actually burn time off the clock. They don't have info, they don't have that kill. But when you kill the ramp player, then your options are wide open. You see the name in the kill feed and you know the setup now. That's too much. That's Rops' nightmare. That's FaZe's nightmare. And that's Vitality getting one step closer to closing out this whole damn tournament. We've seen double op setups. We've seen entire groups of phase players outside. We've seen Rain try to do it on his own. We've seen the variation in phase that we've come to praise. We see them get wild on that Molotov towards double. If Twist could have just gotten out of the flame, I, I, I can maybe... totally understand why they indulged in pushing one after another right there. There actually is a world where they 2K completely ruin the setup and then a flank comes in from the vent or wherever and does the rest of it. Rain was the one who took the best risk inside of control room, but then Kerrigan twists. Two players betting on black and both coming up with nothing. They gambled for that one. They lost. That last round, an embodiment of trying to create the chaos so you can thrive in the carnage that comes after. But instead, it's a timidness out of Brokey as he goes for the save and FaZe are going broke. Oh, every marble on this right now. Brokey has the op in hand, nobody else. Earlier this okay, event, Rops at least has an AUG. When, when Twist nearly lost the game with FaZe, he said, man, I almost kind of thought our streak was over. But we continue to fight with fire in our bellies. And so they'll need to defend it again here in Grand Finals. Bro, Brokey, but guess what? Brokey. Sphinx sees you coming. He, he pre-cleared this. Not gonna happen, bud. Brokey hits the deck, but trade's right there. Okay. There's layers on this defense, and honestly, MP9 exchange for AWP, let's see it. Twist has put forward great AWP frags in the past. Let's even transfer his skills from Anubis, because that's where he really showed off. Deep range out of ROPS, holds the line to just deter Vitality from getting ever closer to this ramp. Last round it came for free, this time seems close. They tried to dry swing it because they saw the AWP on upper. But now they see the second best gun of the round in ROPS is also a scope. A great weapon to have at ramp. Twist ever patient. Vitality limited. They haven't had any control outside, so it makes sense. Go ahead, try to swing your split. I love that he catches him on the third piece of utility. Mm -hmm. Smoke, flash, no problem. Molotov is where Twist draws the line. But the AWP starts to get away from him. Oh! Sticks it in the belly of Four rounds, none consecutive. This is 
is where face thrive. Yeah, that's right. One round game. Like magic, an op, an aug, and the next best gun being a Falmus after this 5v4, and twist. Recovery. Oh, the recovery, the quick scoop of the op as well on top of the trade with the MP9. The trades are there. With that opening kill, Brokey getting caught without yep. realizing that he'd let somebody get into the corner. Yep. No, no, that's that, all twist right there. That could have been it for sure. That was such a sneaky move from Spinks. He sometimes does get there into the back right of Hut, but when Brokey went to check on it initially, already missed the timing. Then when he came back, he was definitely dead. An apex. He's trying to conjure up a plan. Frantically. Yep. As timeouts start to run dry. As Pressure is on. Run out. Full buy for both teams. Vitality looking for tournament point. Phase looking to tie. Initial Molly's outer. We're gonna get a deep position from Rain. Contrast that to when he climbs up on blue box, gives away opening kill. Who plays safer? Or who runs a risk that could very well pay off? Little clash on the squeaky door. No deaths yet, but you know you want to get out of there. Single bullet could have finished the job. Oh, Sphinx from instrumental to near non-existent. Mm. Kerrigan got so much damage on that, but couldn't finish him off. A couple of times coming into the lobby, getting outflanked, caught by Apex, actually, not even Sphinx. Vitality will shift to a new gear after getting shoved out of their own lobby. Oh, we were talking about a pretty broke Vitality here, actually. I didn't even realize that. Sphinx is now on this deagle. Oh no, this is real. This is FaZe with a very real chance of cracking the cache. That means there's only exactly enough utility needed for the game plan. Let's see if they can stick to it. Every piece important. Each and every step of the way, coupled with a nade. And there goes a very crucial flash to main. They're gonna test Kerrigan, and Flamesy picks it up. Right oh! the triple! It's deep from Grage, he lays down the law! And Apex! Oh! Oh! Brokey! No entry allowed! That passive position from Rain. Not clambering over boxes, not looking for fights, but letting Vitality make their move. Oh, after that, they got the 5v4 and Rain all in one breath. Puts the spray down in the full house for Brokey here with the last kill. Man, that last shot's electric. And that was Apex's final plan. I'm sure he wasn't even counting on the fact that they now have to full eco to defend against Matt Point. Saiwu, the hero AK of the round. Come on. He can't be this good. They told me he was done in CS2. Oh. And yet highest rated player of the event coming into his own 21 frags on the map. He's already picked his fight. It's only a matter of time. We're gonna watch this shape up in the next few seconds. We've seen a contrast in Rops' results from getting blinded by a 5-7 and losing the B site to posting frags if he can hold down there. This time he's gonna play upper. Take a bit of a glance deep, but he didn't see the cross. And remember, there is a gun in there. There's only one Zaiwu. But believe it or not, sometimes one is all you need. No matter where they go, though, the approach met by Smoke, perfectly timed first on ramp and then a second down on Squeaky. Yeah. Vitality are just kind of being pushed back and forth. Yeah, but sometimes you don't want to block the exec, especially versus the stack site. Rops is alone here. And he wins the fight. Critically, that AK goes down. And you'd think without Zywu, without armor, it's got to be impossible. You can try to rush that bomb site, uh -oh. take a plant, but Brokey gets overwhelmed. That's the op. That's the bottom of heaven. That's Kerrigan now rotating in. Door swung open. They heard it. 20 seconds. They're trying to piece together the picture. To steal the 12th round like this? I mean, that's taking a page out of FaZe's book. Kerrigan leans back and Apex has found the safe plant. Now they need a retake! Oh. But Messi, quiet across this event, hits a critical headshot. A two versus four, but there's not even a kit. No. And Rain's going down with nothing! Why did they block them? Connor, they blocked them from going back upstairs.
They could have just walked out squeaky, and all of a sudden, phase inside that bomb they site. Just, just they rip flesh from bone. They Instead, Vitality on the brink of taking 12. Vitality will have one opportunity to steal away phase's win. They sent them back to Rops by himself when they had two people upstairs. Yeah, they get to show off that they called out their positions, but they didn't even have a stack ready for the site, the part of the map that was going to be open. Insanity. And he, that's without Zywoo. And that's without Zywoo. And that's without Brokey in support there. They weren't trying to funnel into the correct location. And they suffer the trade. We've already seen Rops die one for one. Glock or even down less. The yeah. Mezzi posted on the Kerrigan angle. Apex also slithering through slight sight around the... Rafters pulling down behind Silo, just perfectly placing bomb. Everything falls into place wonderfully for Vitality. And after having his dreams crushed by his countrymen last year, Kerrigan, with a mere pistol, will face back-to-back -back heartbreaks in the Royal Arena. Oh, and that's almost looked tragic for Vitality. But now what have we got? They're the in a king five. position. The spam is fantastic. The turn back around, excellent. Apex continuing in this event to add frags, but Brokey's back sight, and he will not play timid. He forces his way out, and they go down. That streak is over, and you have a new CS2 Grand Champion. Oh, they did it. They ended the series for FaZe. Through all the consistency with the new guys. Messi coming up with a trophy. This is not a vitality that leans on years of experience. This is not a vitality leaning on the core of Dupree, Magisk, and Zonic. These are not legends, these are newcomers. And those newcomers have just stopped phase in their tracks when they felt so incredibly invincible. The greatest achievement of UK CS in the last 10 years of Counter-Strike. Flames a second trophy, Spinks and him side by side, and an unquestionable performance from Zywoo, who on map one didn't have to do it himself, but on this second map proved the haters wrong. Doesn't matter what version of this game, Zywoo's here to stay. He's not going anywhere. You can see the jubilation. Just pure ecstasy for this lineup. Apex proving it again, saying they couldn't replace Magisk while they have. And they've done so successfully in the face of the crowd without a Danish player here in the Royal Arena. Success for the new, a test to the new coach, Ekstaz, who has come back after a tumultuous couple of years, proving so much and stealing a Royal Arena away from Kerrigan. For the second time in a row. For the second time, he falls at the final hurdle. And so, the Golden Gates of the Royal Arena open yet again. In the Grand Finals, they've slain the final Dane. They drop FaZe on their heads, rising to the occasion to put a historic run to its end. A major return to form. A new force to be reckoned with. The Blast Fall Finals champions. Behold, Team Fighter! Team Vitality have done it against all odds and with a new team here. x let me start with you. You just come back, you add a new player in, and you lift a trophy. Did you always believe this was possible? Yeah, as I said before the tournament, I think we, we could win the trophy or maybe finish last and we, de we decided to take the first option. So I'm really proud of the guy today. Mezzi. First ever trophy. What can you say? Uh, I mean, uh, 
I mean, it's uh, yeah, for the king. <laughs> nah, um, pretty speechless. I think uh, two weeks in the team, and uh, this is how they do it at Vitality. So uh, it's a good welcome in at least. And looking at this fight, you come to your first event with the team. There's little practice. It's been some tough games for sure. But what did these guys tell you when you got to this stage? I think it's just the the fight from everyone in the, in this uh, in this team that's kept us going in all these games. Winning the first map in a lot of these best of threes and just coming back to fight, it's, uh, it's insane. The mentality that we have is uh, something that we're going to keep forever. Now, Dan, you said you wanted to prove the Danes that they made a mistake here, right? That's what we saw in the interview. Have you done it? Not yet, not yet. We have, we have a long, long run to do. I'm just so proud of the boys. I mean, what we've done here, I didn't expect to win the tournament before coming here. But the grind we made all together, practice, individual, was insane. And yeah, I mean, uh, I love it and uh, I'm just speechless and it's just good to win finally in Copenhagen after losing two years ago. And I want to ask you, Dan, you have to add a new player into a team, right? There's a lot that changes with it. And for you guys, even position changes as well. What did it take from you as the leader? How did you try and piece this all together? For me, what I tried to do is put William in the best condition. It's not easy for him to fit uh, magic swords. Um, so he wasn't playing too much of an anchor before and everything, so it's not easy. So I tried to help him as much as possible while the other made their job as usual, I would say. I'm a lot of credit for Charles also this tournament. He stepped up massively. That's what I said on Nashville TV, that when you lose Magisk, he takes a lot of space in the team, but someone had to do it as well, and this tournament it was Charles, so prop to him. And yeah, ju just really happy. Finally, uh, we win here in Copenhagen. Uh, and guys, who said Zao wasn't good on CS2 for fuck's sake? <laughs> Copenhagen and the Royal Arena. Give it up for your champions, Team Vitality! Vitality victorious and crowned the kings here in Copenhagen. We're talking about the first event where Mezzi was brought into the mix. The first event where Xtaz returned to his former squad and they take home the gold. And what a poetic way to get it done, Machu. We're talking about their backs being pushed against the wall on that map of Nuke. Some miracle rounds pulled out the bag and Vitality now taking home finally the trophy from Copenhagen. Vitality started a streak for FaZe Clan so they could end it in Copenhagen. That's what this was all about. Vitality showing heart and an incredible character to win rounds that up until that point, only FaZe could win. Who else but FaZe could win a round in a full eco to put you on 12 with augmented pistols. Vitality put it out the hat and that is the moment where you know, you understand, you're looking at champions who are ready to take these risks in the moment that matters the most. You are indeed looking at champions, Matthew, and I think Apex said it pretty well on the stage. Who on earth thought that Saivu wasn't a great Counter-Strike 2 player? Just because we're changing the game a little bit, just because the maps looks a little bit different, of course, one of the greatest players to ever touch our goddamn game is showing up in the final, and he did it in style. The impact he had on Nuke right here, sure, it was a team, from Vitality showing up all together. We can't forget about Flame C's first map as well, a Definitely. dominant performance. But when push comes to shove, second map new, guess who shows up? It's your wonderful Saibu. And of course, we have to be relying on him being such an instrumental player. And I think you put it perfectly, Jacob. The style, the impact that he was able to deliver, game changing for Vitality in the final moments of that second map. You gotta understand, even though he was the best in CSGO, there was no guarantee that would transfer to CS2. We didn't know some players out there are struggling. We don't really know what's gonna happen with Nico, Simple is taking a, a few months off. We didn't know he was going to provide that kind of level. And the first few signs we saw in Sydney were worrying. They were concerning. And then the question becomes, how do you react? How do you deal with this, Saiwu? Do you think we're going to give you the same level of scrutiny? No, we are not. You are the chosen one. You are someone we are going to analyze every single mistakes, every single moment you don't deliver that star level performance. We're going to be there to step on you. And he answered the most beautiful way. He's had reference maps throughout this series. You're looking at the playoff and in each and every game of the goddamn playoff, he's had a moment where only Zywoo can do what Zywoo does. And that makes me happy. It makes me insanely happy to watch, Matthew. Another thing that makes me insanely happy, apart from that cam flipping all over, <laughs> would of course be our wonderful Apex. One thing is the personality that he brings to our game, but as a raw in-game leader, 
we have to start the conversation up there with him being, if not the best, then one of the best. He was able to bring in Messi into this lineup. He was able to integrate Sphinx into the lineup. He's been able to integrate Flamesy into his lineup, and he's continuing to win trophies. Sure, it's mitigated. Sure, it's easier when you have Cyber on your team. That's a big help to it. But as a raw in-game leader, I think Apex has made the case the past couple of years that he's up there with the very best in the world. There's no doubt about it in my mind. All the success he's had in the last few years is quite impressive, I have to be honest with you. He said it himself in an interview, he was here two years ago, and that trophy just got swept away by Na'Vi. Oh. At the time, he did not have the weapons to answer back. He did not have the players, he did not have the pedigree beside him to stop Na'Vi. But today, with that team, he showcases the improvement as an IGL, the story, the path that he's been on, and it's great to witness. They give shoutouts to Flamesy. I think it's only fair we do so. We have to. We talked about the departure of Majisk and how mm. it was impossible to find a player who was going to deliver exactly what he did. So what do you need? Other players to step up. And Flamesy with this massive map one, I mean, it's heroic from him. Absolutely heroic. Absolutely incredible. And we're talking about Flamesy only posting his second trophy in that cabinet. It's really been, you know, a coming of age, I would say, for Flamesy this year, having to integrate into Vitality, where we were worried exactly how he would be fitting in. But man, he's been showing up in buckets and spades alongside the rest of Vitality. So props to him for really giving it his all, particularly uh, on that first map of Vertigo. Yeah, without a doubt. That first map, that's one that's, that's going down to history for, for Flamesy at the very least. He's going to feel very good about that tonight when he's having a drink celebrating the trophy. Fact of the matter is that he's maturing as well within Vitality. Because you're right, when he was brought in, we had question marks. He's replacing a very prominent player in Dupree that's won five majors, that's been around for a long, long time. The pressure on Flamesy's shoulders right. were big. It was heavy, a big responsibility. But for my money, for my concern so far, he's done tremendously well, and he's only getting better. And what's incredible is that with the arrival of Messi, in our minds, we're kind of forgetting yeah. how fresh Flamesy is at yeah. that very level. Yeah. He went from OG, he was put into Vitality, pretty much thrust into the water. Come on, Seeker Swim, boy. And he actually rolls up. That's quite incredible. We're talking about losing Dupree and Majisk, two of the most experienced players out there, and Vitality still find a way to win. That in itself speaks of the structure of that team as well. Just think about it if you're X Taz right at this very moment, right? Because we're talking about when they came second place here in Copenhagen. That was one of the final events that sparked, you know, hey, Vitality's going to go international. We're going to go away from this French roster. He comes back first event. He's able to lift the trophy that evaded him two years ago, Jacob. I've said it many times. I think he was hard done by back then. I think Extas has always been a great coach. I think Apex even said it. He didn't necessarily want to lose Extas, but in order to make the international roster happen, to bring in Sonic, to bring in the Danes, he had to let go of him. So it's beautiful. It's romance that he's now back on Vitality, doing together with Apex again. As I said to you in the green room as well, the first time I saw Sonic stand behind Vitality, it didn't quite feel real. I, I was always associating Extas with the Vitality coach, and now seeing him back lifting a trophy, to me, that's great. We always talk about how the quality of the relationship between the IGL and the coach is a golden goose or golden egg, rather. That's how they refer to it, HLTV out there, rereading the website. And this has never been so true in Vitality. I think the quality of the link that is between Extas and Apex is vital. And it is ever so important because Apex has been tasked with challenges along his path. And now I think he, he has a little bit of known, someone that he knows, that he's worked with in the past, that can help him integrate Messi, can help him stay on top of things because he said it. The road is just at the very beginning right now. This is a trophy, it's great, everyone is happy but there is a major coming out in this very arena in a few months. Can I get patriotic for a second? British CS Ooh, is finally right, back, baby! It, huh? UK CS is on the map. I told you it was coming, and it was a mezzy to do it. The biggest achievement that we've had in the British scene in any kind of Counter-Strike history, right? <laughs> and he takes the trophy in his first ever event, and he was even saying, you know, coming into this, yeah, maybe there's a chance. I believe in the pieces around me, and he does it. It's just a magical moment. I mean, we can take the temperature on it, right? I think for this tournament in itself, it wasn't like Messi was standing out for Vitality, but he had to earn his spot to even be invited into that group of people. Imagine you're Messi. Imagine you're playing in Fnatic and you've done so well for yourself that Vitality, the major winners, are considering bringing you in instead of Magix. That's to me the story right here. Sure, as an individual, as Apex said, they have to integrate him. There's a long way to go before you feel comfortable playing the anchor roles, but he earned mm. that spot by being fantastic in Fnatic, and I'm sure we're going to see more of Messi in Vitality. And I'm right there with you. We can't really say that he was spectacular, but I will say, in spite of having rough moments, we have been on his POV, on his camera, and he's hit very impactful 
back full yes, shot yes. in yes. moments where the game was on a knife edge. And not everybody is capable of hitting these shots while having a hard game. And that in itself, that speaks volume to Messi and I want to give him props for that. Surely elation on the side of Vitality, finally able to lift a trophy here in Copenhagen. But unfortunately for the side of Faye's heartbreak, as they do miss out on yet another trophy here and the streak does come to an end. So let's get a few exit words courtesy of Carrigan. Faze will finish here for the full finals in second place. Carrigan, as always, thank you very much for joining me. I know it's tough and I'm, I saw you on the camera afterwards. For you, the Royal Arena almost feels like a curse. I want to see what it feels like in your mind right now. Like, how do you explain the feeling you're going through? I mean, it depends on how you look at it, right? Um, I knew at some point we we're going to lose. Uh, obviously, that's uh, part of the game. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, I wanted to win here in Royal Arena. It's just part of the game, right? Uh, I'm going to go back and, and look at what we can improve on. Um, I think last year we were very close to come back and we were close to come back as well. But uh, that round's going to haunt me a bit. But to be honest, Face Clan have won a lot of ridiculous rounds as well during uh, our tournament runs. So, yeah, obviously pretty sad. But, but like I said, my mentality is this, this tournament is like every other tournament. Um, but obviously winning here in Copenhagen would also mean a lot to me. But for now, it is part of the game. Was there an extra amount of pressure coming into this grand final? Did you feel it any different to yourself? Not really, uh, particularly. I feel like we have so been good at handling pressure, whatever. Uh, so I couldn't feel an addition to, to pressure of what we normally are. I think when you are face clan and you are playing with a win streak, you're always pressured to win, uh, right? Expectations are to win. If you're not winning trophies uh, within three months, everybody's calling for everyone's head in the team, right? Exactly. So um, I'm used to the pressure, but the, the problem I had before this game was already I knew the beat was going to be a little bit awkward. Uh, on the same time, and not enough information for us to kind of realize what they're doing. And they had a great game plan and um, they won the right rounds to kind of like make us uh, on the back foot all the time. Can you talk me through that veto process as well? Because I'm mean, guessing you assumed that Vertigo could be an option they pick into it with what you banned out, right? And obviously you guys have been willing to fight on it, but did you expect them to be maybe less prepared on it? Where was your mind at when you were looking at it? There was two ways I could look at it. I, I could uh, not ban Inferno and, and choose con to control the veto and no one they would pick Inferno. Uh, it's no... Uh, secret that the practice of us haven't much, been much lately since we've been traveling so much. So Inferno was a map we haven't really practiced so much uh, lately. Um, so it's like been a month since we played an official as well. So we chose to go with Vertigo. We never knew if they're going to pick Overpass, Vertigo, Mirage, right? So, uh, and we played Vertigo here early in the tournament and felt good. So um, I just think uh, we gave them too much space. And, and when we tried to catch up with them, they had a good game plan and moved good. And, and yeah, uh, we had a chance in the end to kind of break them mid, uh, mid of the CT half, but they managed to, to stay alive and, and kind of kill the momentum we were building up. And I know I spoke to you about this in Shanghai. You said you want to keep this roster together, but it's not always your choice. Was this the last time we see this phase together? Uh, I don't think I'm the right person to ask. We have to wait and see, right? We, we don't know much. And I've tried to talk about it all the time that we are just trying to do our best, what's run for us, to win here, see what happens. Um, that's just part of being a part of eSport. You never really know what's happening. Yeah, of course, unfortunate for FaZe Clan to be coming in second place for the second year in a row. But we do need to flip the script to talk about our Maersk MVP. It couldn't be any other man other than Zaru. First of all, congratulations. It must feel pretty damn good to lift the trophy here, right? Uh, yeah, he was... Uh, every game was really tough to play anyway. So, yeah, he, I'm really proud for my team because even I'm, I'm, a, I'm a MVP of this game, I mean, of this tournament. But we play an amazing game together. We never give up. We, I could feel the mood. As well, of inside of the team was kind of perfect. Even we, we were down behind the, the enemy. I could feel every, everything was perfect for our, for our side, so it was really good to play. You always say this every single time we get you yeah. up here for MVP conversations, which is a damn lot, Zara. You're always saying, yeah, it was good, but my teammates as well. It's a team game. It's How a team can game. you that's stay so humble, that. man? It's that's why, that's why I said that, because I cannot be 1v5 every round. So <laughs> I need to have some teammates behind me. That's why we managed to win this tournament and also have good I mean, good players and good round individually. So I have to pressure my my teammates. I mean, of course, it's a team game. It's not yeah. always going to be you, but there is an immense amount of pressure on your shoulders. And people looked at you after Sydney and they said, ah, oh, what is going on with Zai Wu? You know, is he really up there? Did you feel a special volunteer, a special motivation to just shut them all up? Did you let the game come to you? Because this right here, that's the Zai Wu I know and love. That's the one I like. Actually, after Sydney, yes, I have so many good because I want that to prove to everyone, like, it's just the beginning of CS2 and uh, because I, I heard a lot of people saying, like, the new game is a bit bad or the op is going to be hard to play, but I, I just want to prove to anyone, if you just walk out, you have to just, because they won't, 
the hope is not gonna be back like CSGO. So you need to, to find new thing to do, new peak, maybe new thing to do with your team with about the hope. So when you manage to think like this with your team, with uh, with yeah, with everything behind it, you can do everything you want. That's why after Cine, I was like playing a lot of AC, playing, trying to think about what can I do with my op more maybe. So that was my thing after Cine. And that, that's the thing for me, Saivu, right? A lot of people were speaking, a lot of people were speculating. Were you ever in doubt that you'd come back to the level? Was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, hmm, maybe the op is too hard in CS2? Actually, uh, not really. I, I know yeah. what I'm cap capable of, so I'm not scared about what people are saying on me on Twitter or anything. Actually, I'm not going on Twitter. That's why maybe go. it's helping <laughs> me. That's why it's helping me to... That's healthy, yeah. Yeah, that's really healthy. When I see other people watching, I'm like, mm, ah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not for me, it's not for me. But yeah, I'm just... Actually, I love this game. I love CS2 playing it. And more I play this game, more I feel really good. So When we looked at your team with Mezzi coming in so shortly, yeah. we thought they are not ready. The game plan cannot be ready. Was that something that you guys felt that you needed to give 150% you needed to give more of your own heart into the game because you can only do with what you have. It's, it's been a pretty short stint yeah. for this roster. Now actually with Maisie, obviously we don't have a lot of practice because we have like one week and a half. And, but be, before that we have the same core. We have still four players in the same roster. So we mm. wasn't scared about only changing one player. We knew what the team is can, can do for the future. So actually before coming in this tournament, we knew if we are Playing our level, if you are just playing like Vatality do, like for the next six months, you can you can do everything, kind of. I know we had to celebrate you and, and your MVP, but speaking about Messi, I think we should also speak a bit about Apex. The fact of the matter is that he's been able to, to find all the success yeah. with you. Can you try to describe the relationship you have with Apex and, and how much does he help you to become the, the best of Saibu? I mean, since five years. Five years, I guess. Yeah, a long time. Huh? Yeah, a long time. Pff, I start to be old as well. But <laughs> imagine. No, but he's helping me kind of every day because even on this call, he's trying always to put me in good situation. And even when he's dead, he's, he's speaking a lot. He's trying to to help everyone. Even he's dead, he's not dead. He's, he's trying to help. He team. never shuts up. He's never shut up. <laughs> like you say, he's never shut up. And that's just, I think, his big point because you can say like he's a uh, big mouth, he's speaking a lot, but sometimes he's for the good way. And I think unique kind of this guy, in the, not in your team, but if, you, if, if everyone is quiet like, uh, like we do, I think it's going to be possible. So we need some Apex in, in, in your life to, to be good. Kind of. We all need a bit of Apex, huh? Yeah, Zairu, <laughs> a final two questions from me. Um, I first of all just wanted to ask, we saw you in this very situation back in 2021 yep. with a completely different vitality, right? It's when you guys were all the French core together. Um, did you get any kind of memories coming back here, thinking about how much has changed in the vitality camp over the past few years? Actually, it was funny because we were talking with uh, Xtaz about like we left us like in 2021 into the final. So why not we came back in the final? So we were like, we need to win this one for for the memories, for the for him as well. So obviously we have a lot of memory in Copenhagen because it's always the pleasure to play in front of this crowd, in front of the Danish crowd. So obviously it's, it's always. It's always giving goosebumps when every, every time I play in. So yeah, it's always a pleasure. And one final one, I'm going to be super cliche. Anything you want to say to the fans out there that have been supporting you, obviously coming into CS2 is a camera right there for you. Say anything you want. Thank you, guys. No, I want to thank everyone to support us, Fight IT, our team, our our staff, because I think without you, without, uh, yeah, we, we are not not anything, but you're helping us to, to be alive, to be uh, having smile every day, to every, every time you see us in the hotel, we want to like share with you. So it's always a pleasure to see you and thank you guys for everything. Un petit mot pour la communauté française, vite fait. Bien on sûr. a le droit, un petit mot. Bien sûr, comme, comme, la, comme la dernière fois. Non, ben toujours les Golden Hornets, vous êtes toujours derrière nous. On sait que vous êtes toujours là pour nous. Depuis le Major Paris, de toute façon, on le sait. Vous êtes toujours chaud bouillant et euh, vous êtes toujours derrière nous. On va toujours supporter avec vous et merci beaucoup pour tout. Matthew, thank you so, so much for joining us. Congratulations once again. Winners much. here in Copenhagen and, of course, our Merck MVP. I'll let you go off and celebrate with the team. Thank you. Sure yeah, you, wanna, we, you got a fun night ahead yeah, of you, thank yeah? you. I will get some drinks. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. I absolutely love checking in with Zyro. Always ever the humble man, but giving us so much insight as well. And talking about that relationship with Apex, they've been together for such a long time and you can see how synergized they are. Lars even talked about it, right? right? The importance of that team chemistry between the players on Vitality. Oh, definitely. And I think it's really simple and it could be tricky to look at Zaiwu and say, whoever is going to be next to this guy is going to be winning because he is a chosen one. He is a genius of the game. I'm not here to debate that, but I think we would be remiss to underestimate the work of those next to him mm. to help him get the best out of what is 
undeniably an incredible potential and Apex has been with him in the pro scene in CSGO almost since day one when, Vi when Vitality got hold of Zaiwu, Apex has been by his side to tell me listen you you can do things better than I could ever in my life but you better damn get the best out of your incredible potential and Apex has been doing that now for years. Well Vitality victorious here in Copenhagen and we can take a look at the bracket to see exactly how this whole weekend went down we had some incredible Ooh. games some incredible results unfortunately for Face Clan once again finding themselves in that second place and you could see those I emotional moments the emotional footage coming out of Carrigan great that we got some words from him courtesy of Banks but this one's got a sting a little extra hard Jake. yeah especially because everything was made up for him to win right they came in with a win streak they were playing good counter strike and everything was written in the stars for Kerrigan this time around it was last year as well all to be fair mm -hmm. right yeah last time it was Kadian this time around it's Apex it, it is a bit of a cursed place but I'm sure Kerrigan will have plenty of more opportunities maybe even in a couple of months at the major yeah listen we'll uh, we'll hold our breath for what's going to happen to Face Clan, but I think we can be very thankful for what they've given to the CS2 community already. Their play style, the DNA, how they approach games is something that gets everyone on the edge of their seat, gives everyone a truck ton of emotions, such quality from coast to coast in the roster. It, it falls short here, it's a second place, but we really have to respect this very short scene already on CS2. Well, Matthew, don't start holding your breath just yet, because I do need one more thing from you. It's our CS Money Play of the Day. Sadly, no broadcast tomorrow. Very sad about that. But you can go over to the Blast Premier Instagram and check out the results over there. So get your votes in. Uh, what have we got upcoming as our first play that viewers at home could be choosing from today, well, if Matthew? I, uh, if I talk very slowly, I will see a chicken. <laughs> there you have it, an actual chicken. He's called Sir Henning, if my vision <laughs> does not betray me right there. And he had a little bit of a spy move here in Tin Denmark as well, and he brought some of his friends to the action. And yeah. he was the reason that the Dream Team won, I think, actually. I did hear that from Alexi himself. Maybe he's going to bring them onto, onto the Na'Vi side. Maybe, maybe next time. Technical error. There was no technical error for Flamesy. He showed up massively on Vertigo, having one of the best performances he's ever had. And he crowned it with a beautiful round right here in the early stages of the game. Very impactful coming in from Flamesy right here. He can be super proud of that clip. Beautiful first map. I'm sure he won't forget that anytime soon. And finally, yes. our third option, we have Rain with the amount of entry kills that he found on Nuke. He was unplayable. Starts with Zaiwu, adds Apex on top. There's a little bit of Spinks on the side and just another kill in the smoke. He was pristine on this map of Nuke. Flames, Rain, you tried, but I'm both in the chicken all the way. Most impactful play of the okay. entire tournament, actually, Based. I think. I think we Sir Henning, huh? Down. Yeah. Sir Henning. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for, for, for joining me. This has been an absolute pleasure to be bringing you the Blast Ball Finals 2023. Congratulations once again to Vitality. Shout out to wonderful production, as always. And uh, I think we'll be seeing you in Abu Dhabi in just under a month. So see you there.